What is up, nerds and nerdettes? How's it going today? Ah, I wish Twitch Prime would auto resub. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. I always forget to re up my Twitch Prime sub because of that. I appreciate your streaming. Super educational and helpful. Thank you so much, Rick. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right. Uh, what are we going to do today? I don't know. Uh, we need to write a memory manager uh, for virtual memory and physical memory for the kernel. We need to get the allocator up and running. Uh, and... Uh, we probably want to make this NUMA aware. So part of the allocator process is going to be determining which memory belongs to which uh, nodes on the machine. Um, and that's something that we're going to want to add support for. So I might need to run that on physical hardware that has multiple NUMA nodes to actually verify that's working. Um, I also want to move the identity map today. So I would like to, uh, I'd like to unmap memory and... Uh, unmap the identity map that I have now and then move the physical memory window to some other location in memory so we don't have null mapped in in the kernel. Uh, that's just a good precaution to have. Um, even Rust will still kind of use nulls uh, with null um, non options. And there's a chance that of, over some FFI boundary I end up de uh, derefing a null. Um, it's pretty unlikely, but if it happens right now, it'll just kind of silently fail. Uh, and that could be very confusing and quite an issue. So we'll want to we'll want to figure that one out pretty quick here. So um, we have kernel printing work. Actually, uh, I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the issue tracker and we're gonna bang out all the issues we have. Um, once you let that backlog start to build up, it it's hard to ever recover. So we're gonna go. Uh, I added a couple issues yesterday. Uh, make page table mappings undo during failures. Um, this is basically if a memory mapping failed, um, let's say we're mapping in 50 pages. If we fail on the 35th page, we should undo the pages that we mapped in uh, during that execution phase. That's something that I think would be pretty good for us to do. Um, and we also will need this for the virtual memory uh, free side of things where we can free arbitrary virtual memory. So we'll have to do that. Then we'll also have to uh, set permissions according to the PE section requirements. Let's do this one first. It's really straightforward. Uh, we're going to need to parse out the section requirements of the PE. Um, and that should be relatively easy. So we're going to go look up where that is. Uh, PE header characteristics. I spelled that wrong, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I did spell it wrong. So we'll try and figure out what this is. Saw something about code caves and spilling. Where was that at? Um, yeah, let me find the structures. There we go. I think this is in. Oh, well, that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> we go into here image file header, and we might have to, yeah, we have the, uh, actually, we just care about the section. Yeah, sorry, section header. So we're interested in the characteristics here. And I think the only thing that we care about is, um, I think we only care about these. The execute, read, and write bits. So we're gonna see, we're gonna extract these bits in our PE uh, parser, and then we'll uh, we'll get these used, and we'll map in these sections uh, using RWX, and we'll pretty print uh, the mappings that we end up performing on this file. So we'll go into shared uh, PE parser source, and I need to turn on music because it's really weird just hearing myself. Um. Oh, hell yeah. Now we're jamming. Okay. So we're going to want to parse the sections here. And we have a uh, sections right here. And this is going to return. We're going to have this take bool, bool, bool. 
um, read, write, execute for each section in the PE file. Perfect. That's going to break a lot of stuff. That's fine. So function in the PE parser 131. Uh, here, we're going to just set everything to false for now, which is not true. But we're just going to hack that in quickly. And let's just make sure we can get source main building. In this case, these are the permissions. We ignore all the permissions. And in this case, we also ignore all the permissions. Because we don't use the permissions uh, for the bootloader. Everything's RWX anyways. We don't have control over things like that. OK. Now we've made it to the bootloader side of things. So we're going to extract from that, uh, from this structure, we're going to extract the fields that we care about. So we'll do const. And I'm guessing it's a U32. Looks to be something like that. Uh, execute read and write. Read and write. Beautiful. OK, so then down here, we just need to grab the um, let characteristics. This is a U32. Uh, this is going to be a U32 from le bytes, uh, bytes offset plus ox. Let's see. Um, raw offset. So we want to go raw offset plus, which was at 18 hex. So we want to add 4, 8, 9, 10, A, B, C. Uh, so we should be C off of the raw data. So that should be at uh, 14 plus C. This is actually 20 off plus ox24 and yeah that matches up because this is 28 oh that doesn't match up then oh yeah i need to add an extra four so this makes sense because this should be the last part of the section header the 28 byte structure so get to the section characteristics and this will be uh get the virtual and raw sizes and offsets. OK, so this is going to be read. Um, and this is image SEN mem read. If this is not equal to 0, and this will have write and execute. And there's our RWX permissions. Um, we got to try into OK that. Perfect. Now we're failing in the bootloader main. That makes sense, because this, we don't have the read, write, execute. Read, write, execute. And then here we have the permissions. Read, write, execute. OK. And then here we're just going to print these characters. And we'll say if read r else space write execute rwx. And now everything should boot, and we'll be able to see the permissions of those sections in theory. Um, reboot. And here we go. We have this area is mapped readable and executable. This area is mapped read only. This area is mapped uh, read write. And this area is mapped uh, read. <laughs> so we'll say uh, um, permissions. We'll just do this. Clean up that message just as a smidge. And here we go. There we go. Permissions are x. And I'm going to do dashes, I think, instead of spaces. Uh, and we'll say perms. 
Okay. There we go. Rx, R dash dash, Rw, R dash dash. Sweet. <laughs> How easy was that? Done. Fucking done. Let's uh, let's test to make sure that works. Um, oh, I mean the kernel works, so that's a good sign. Uh, but let's write to. Let's just write to here and see what happens. Um, once we get into the kernel side of things, we'll do a uh, core pointer write volatile, and we'll write a. Um, oops. I thought I had the address in my clipboard. I guess not. I don't know if I control C that. I actually have no idea how I copy out of here. Control C, let's see. Not in that clipboard, not in that clipboard. It's in that one. Fucking hate how there are a billion clipboards. Really annoying. Uh, as me E64, we're gonna write a zero. So this is just going to write to, uh, we know that that memory is valid. And we'll do a read volatile from that as well. And we'll bind it to a let dash print red print wrote. Okay, and we should see the read. Yep, red, and then we're failing. So it means we're able to read that memory, but we cannot write to it. So I think it's safe to say that our permissions are working. And here we go, we're back. Sweet, so that is complete. <laughs> okay, and we'll uh, we'll close this issue. Um, get status. Get commit am. Added pe permissions, uh, and use them during uh, kernel loading in the bootloader. And this is uh, number two. Fixes number two. Get push. And I think GitHub has nice integration for all those messages where that will just... Wow. Wow. Interesting. If you just have number two, it automatically closes it. How cool is that? So, yep, close that in this. And that's what was added. Fuck yeah. We're writing code, guys. And by the way, if you, you want to check out the code, uh, you can check out uh, chocolate milk on GitHub. Okay, I have no clue what is happening. Uh, so creating and segregating a memory for RWX operations in the host machine uh, that the hypervisor will run on. So in this case, we are changing the permissions of the kernel. So previously, the entire kernel, the data section, the RO data sections, um, and everything about that process was marked as read writable executable, which was very relaxed. You could do almost any operation on any memory in the kernel. And the PE file tells us that this area in memory should be marked readable and executable. That's going to be the text section. This should be read-only. This should be read-write. And this should be read-only. And basically what we're doing is we're making sure that we restrict everything uh, to specifically what is required. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's effectively what we did there. Yeah, no problem. If you ever have questions, feel free to ask them. I realize a lot of this stuff can be confusing. Sometimes I don't know how verbose to be when I'm talking about things. And no question is too dumb here. Um, the, worst, the worst way to learn is to pretend like you already know things, right? So let's... Uh, do, 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 do. I should update my Twitter and tell people that I'm live. I'm not very good at this whole uh, streamer life thing. I'm actually really close to getting partnered with Twitch, which is pretty fucking crazy, man. <laughs> We're actually probably gonna get partnered. If I don't stream at these ungodly hours where half the world is asleep, it, it like picks up at like four in the morning here. It's pretty crazy. Um, so I'm gonna say uh, this, I'm gonna say live now. Okay, sweet, I've tweeted that out. All right, so that's one issue already closed. That leaves us with one other issue, which is make 
page table mappings undo during failures. Um, and I'm going to make one other issue because I like making issues. Uh, we're going to say um, kernel should not have an ident identity mapped. Um, kernel should not have an identity mapped uh, address space. Currently, we map in the first four gigabytes of physical memory directly into the uh, kernel's address space at zero to four uh, gigabytes. Uh, kernel's virtual address space, zero to four gigabytes. This means that the null page is mapped in and other low addresses in general can be clobbered. This, this can lead to some unsound code. So we're going to move the all of physical memory to a specific, specific location. So we'll find some magic address. We'll put all of physical memory there. And then at that point, we will be able to, um, we could maybe fault that in. Oh, we don't have interrupt handlers yet. OK. Now. This is where things can be relatively difficult because when we transition uh, from, let me close some of these things. Won't need the print macro. Boot args uh, we might use, but we'll reopen some of these things if we need them. Um, page table, we're gonna be working on page table in a second, so I'll leave that open. So when we transition execution to the kernel, we do that through uh, bootloader source um, assembly routines. And the way that tr that transition is done is here, we set up a page table based on the page table that we created here. So we create the page table, we map in the kernel, and we create that identity map. And then we hand that page table off to all cores that are booted, and they use that for the kernel. Now. In this trampoline, remember, we're still running in the bootloader at this, at this stage. This is the end of the bootloader. This is where we jump into the kernel. But due to the fact that we are executing the, um, yeah, due to the fact that we're executing the, uh, how do I want to describe this? Since we're still executing in the bootloader, this actually needs to be identity mapped. Right here, we're going to enable paging. So this next instruction is actually now in the page table that we just established, the CR3. And the problem with that is since we're still running the bootloader code, remember the address space just changed. Here, everything is identity mapped. We do this move CR0, which enables paging, which makes CR3 take effect. And so this instruction actually will get fetched out of virtual memory. Up until that point, everything was in physical memory, and thus these are all physical addresses. PC, our EIP, is pointing to physical addresses, which are required to be decoded. Now, the problem is, if I don't have an identity map in our page table, this instruction will actually fail, because we will try and access something that's not mapped in. So it's important that for this trampoline phase, we have to have we have to have the um, this what I call trampoline code. It has to be present in both physical memory and in virtual memory at the same address. It's kind of weird. There's no way that we can atomically change CR3 and jump at the same time, which means that we have to uh, we we have to like have both things mapped in at the same time. It's really really weird. And I hate that it exists because it makes things very confusing. Um, so we could potentially keep the identity map. That is something we could do. But um, every core that comes through here, unless we can get creative, but I don't think we can, technically we could make a 32-bit paging model. And we could potentially transition temporarily through that 32-bit virtual address space and then transition to 64-bit address space. Um, but that's kind of a lot of effort, and it doesn't gain us much. Um, 
Will a colonel span toggled flags in a protected space? Um... What do you mean by that? The kernel and the stacks and everything for all the cores will all be in the same virtual address space. They'll all be using the same CR3. So glad you're streaming Rust. Other streams are not as interesting. I'm glad there's interest in Rust. It's a fun language. Bunch of other fun languages out there too, but Rust definitely seems to be one of the top ones for me. Yeah, enable that paging. Enable write protect. How do we make that work? I I really don't like physical memory being identity mapped. It's it's just a pet peeve of mine because it's a little it's a little risky for the biznu. So <sighs> I could make a trampoline address space. I could make another CR3 that we switch into. Yep, that's the trick. I think. I think. I think this is gonna be the play. Streaming Haskell right now, watching a code on Russ on another laptop. <laughs> nice since I'd like to know more about Russ. I've actually never, mm, I don't think I've programmed in Haskell. I'm sure at some point I maybe like tried it, but I don't think I've ever like written more than a hundred lines of code, which I would say is a small amount of code. Okay, so we need to pass in another argument. Uh, so here's here's basically the issue. Does everyone understand kind of kind of what's going on here? I'll open up a, a GIMP, and we'll uh, we'll we'll draw it using my brilliant diagramming skills. So what we have here is. What we have here is we are running, this is physical memory. This is, this is great. Uh, so this is, whoop, that's a big font. Uh, we'll go 32. And then here we can say uh, physical memory. So we have physical memory here. And we have our bootloader, which let's say lives in this area in memory. It's a little bit more complex than that, but we're just gonna say that this is the uh, bootloader. And this is currently mapped at, uh, we'll go to a slightly smaller font, uh, and we'll say this is OX7C00, which is true. That is where our bootloader is. So our bootloader is currently at 7C00, ugh. Got to click on just the right spot. It's at 7000 in physical memory. Now we create a kernel virtual memory, uh, virtual memory. So we create a kernel virtual memory map, and this kernel virtual memory map uh, ideally doesn't have the physical memory mapped in at zero, like we do in the uh, in protected mode. In protected mode, we actually don't have paging enabled at all. So in kernel virtual memory, we'll have this, and then we'll have, we'll just do this. This is some great diagramming. So this is the kernel. This is stack number one. And we'll have to zoom in so I can get that pixel right. Stack. Oop, that did a actual copy of the pixels. Uh, stack number two. And technically there's small little gaps between this memory, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, and then stack dot dot dot. So we will allocate new stacks as cores come online. And this is in virtual memory. We have no physical memory mapped in anywhere in this address space. Now what I would like to do is I would like to make it such that um, such that somewhere in here is physical memory. At some just magic, magic address, uh, physmem is right here. So the problem is, when we're executing the bootloader, we actually have to switch to this 
uh, page table. You have to switch to this memory model. And to do that, we actually have to have the bootloader, uh, and let's draw a dotted line. Oh, there we go. We have to have the bootloader also mapped at the same location because when we switch the address space, we're still executing code in the physical address space. So this sh uh, boot, right? But the problem is this boot address is very low. 7C00 is a very low address and I do not like that at all. So what I, would, what I think I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to make a trampoline address space. And I think this should work. Well, it definitely should work. I don't know why I'm saying I think. I, I know for sure this will work. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll grab this and we'll extend this. Uh, oh, and we selected, there we go. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, fizzmem here. And we'll say small uh, fizzmem here because this memory map is gonna be temporary for the trampoline. We wanna use as little resources on this table as possible. If we end up allocating all physical memory in here, uh, we're gonna end up kind of allocating way too much and having this page table be relatively large when we don't want that. So get rid of that. And we'll just draw the line across here. I really need to learn hotkeys. Okay. So this is going to be enough memory mapped in such that the bootloader is mapped in. But we're also going to map in, basically we're gonna map like one meg, um, one meg of physical memory in both sections. And that's basically all, all the real mode uh, code that we'll potentially be using, I think. So we'll grab this. I don't know why that's making a pixel copy I really don't. Uh, duplicate layer. Okay. So we'll have like the first meg of memory mapped in here. We'll have the first meg of memory mapped in uh, at the location that we'll have in kernel virtual memory. And that means that we'll be able to continue execution of our bootloader in this address space because it will be the same, we'll be at the same addresses here. Um, so we'll execute our bootloader here, and then we'll jump to here, and then we'll switch to the final kernel CR3. And this will not have the bootloader mapped in at all, so we'll put an X through this. And this means the kernel will be mapped in, the stacks will be sparsely mapped in, and physical memory will be at some sparsely mapped in location. So all this is doing is it gives us a temporary page table that we'll use for long mode for like literally like five instructions. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna set up this page table and that's where we're gonna use one meg only. Um, I think that should be safe because we shouldn't access anything except for the stack, which is mapped at 7C00 and below. And we shouldn't map in anything past the bootloader. Um, in fact, we can be more specific and not use one meg because uh, this is the stack. We'll be using the stack in this trampoline and then we'll also be using um, we'll also be using the, the bootloader code. So I think I might actually pass through the size of the bootloader to the, uh, from the stage zero to the bootloader. So the bootloader knows how big the bootloader is. Um, and that will allow it to not map in one meg, but specifically what is required for the bootloader to work. So yeah, and uh, we'll execute and then this page table will be really small. We'll have to use, I don't know, we'll maybe use like 32K of RAM to create this table. But I like that a lot because it means we never have the kernel virtual memory have physical memory. We never have null mapped in. It literally never happens. In, in the kernel, regardless of if it's the first instruction of the kernel or not, we'll never have null mapped in, um, unless we map it in ourselves. But uh, it won't be passed to us with null mapped in like it is now, because I really don't like that. So I think this is going to be the model we're going to use. To do this, we're going to make a trampoline page table. And this is going to be... Um, we're going to have to put this in a shared boot arg source. 
<laughs> five instructions. Yeah, it's gonna be a little weird. This is the um, trampoline page table to be used during the um, paging transition from the bootloader to the kernel. This will have zero to uh, bootloader end uh, mapped in, identity mapped, as well as zero to bootloader end mapped in at the address that the linear physical map will be present in the uh, kernel page tables. This allows us to temporarily temp or fuck. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can't spell it. Yeah, something, something like that. Somewhere in that ballpark. That's how you spell it, I think. Uh, <laughs> this allows us to temporarily uh, have both the kernels physical memory view and an identity physical ah, IOI. Thank you. Oh, I love you. Thanks, Pawn Muncher. <laughs> Jabated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this allows us to temporarily have both the kernel's memory view and, the and an identity mapped memory view such that the bootloader, um, such that the page table can be switched while executing in the low memory uh, physical addresses of the bootloader, and then we can jump to the kernel physical mapping. It's a pretty long description, but it's a relatively complex um, scenario, so I think it's important to do that. So we'll call this the trampoline page table. Woo! <laughs> I, I try to history see after doing git pushes, because I always up arrow that shit. Uh, trampoline page table, that is missing in the bootloader. That is some fine commenting there. Thanks, I, I'm glad you appreciate it. Commenting is really important to me. I forgot how to do this correctly in Vim, so we're just doing this. Oh, the multiple cursors. Let me let me fucking try it. Let me see. I need to I need to practice it. Uh, I do a block, a visual block, which I can do with a uh... fuck. Control V. Uh, fuck. So I can I can set up the visual block and then fuck I forget the thing. There's like one key I hit and then that sets my cursor to all of them and then I can type something in. Ah, uh, I really need to get better at that. Okay. Trampoline page table uh, and we're gonna set that up quickly here. Um, oh yeah, and we need to pass in the size of the bootloader to the bootloader. And this is going to be a uh, bootloader uh, size. Oops, we'll actually say bootloader end. And this will be a pointer to the end of, yeah, the bootloader space, I think. L space. So this L. Wait, is oh that's an I. Cause if I do I I'm I'm super confused. Uh oh it's shift I. It's capital I, isn't it? And then escape. Yeah, yeah. It's just cap I. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for all the follows, everyone. We did we did it, Reddit. We figured it out. A uh, bootloader end. This is the, um, we're gonna say uh, bootloader end. Uh, this is one byte past the end of the bootloader. Uh, okay, so that's literally like after everything. 
And let's take a look here. So we will go into our stage zero. Uh, bootloader source stage zero. Um, and yeah, this will have an bootloader end, uh, a marker for the end of the bootloader. Okay, and that's the end of the bootloader. And then we'll map in zero to the bootloader end. Technically, we could go like a little bit shorter, but that'll just map in everything from the null page uh, or the, the zero physical address to bootloader end uh, in that in two different locations in that table. So let's uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we want to pass this as an argument. So I think we just push it, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll push. Uh, D word bootloader end, which will just be the address. Perfect. Uh, cargo run clean, cargo run. Oh, so many follows. Hell yeah, everyone. We're actually, uh, if we, I think if we average like 90 viewers this stream, I think we're gonna be eligible for partner. I have to do two more streams, but the average view count has to be at least 75. And we're at like 66 right now for the past uh, like month of streams or whatever their window is. So pretty fucking crazy, man. Unreal. I never would have thought that I'd have 100 viewers. It's just, it's just nuts, man. I was happy before when I'd have 20. Like if I had a stream and I had 20 viewers, I was like, holy shit, today, Today's a good day to be streaming. Everyone's watching me. And now if I see 20, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, audio is good here. Yeah, let me know if my audio is peaking or doing anything. Um, but I think so far it's been pretty good. This is so bitchin'. Oh man, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard this is so bitchin' in so long. Such a fun phrase. Okay, so we're gonna say uh, bootloader, whoop, bootloader end at this, and we're just gonna put this. Uh, we'll put another print message here. Bootloader. We'll say uh, chocolate milk bootloader initialized as starting. I maybe should put an emoji in there. There we go. Uh, bootloader end at C810. Uh, Perfect. Gorgeous. Uh, we'll open up a stream term here just so we can have Python so we can do some hex on the side. We're going to do OX uh, hex, actually, OXC810 uh, float this as uh, er, divided by 4096. So we're gonna have to map in. We're gonna have to map in twelve pages, and that will all fit in the first page directory. So the allocation cost of this is going to be. We have to map in thirteen pages, uh, in terms of the. Oh. We actually only have to use four pages to describe this. We have to make the PML4 entry, or the PML4 table, the top level table, second level table, third level table, and fourth level table, which are all 4K. So this is actually going to cost uh, 16 kilobytes to have this trampoline, which is a pretty low cost to avoid really convoluted, like once I get into the kernel, I unmap things, but then I can't really unmap it because other cores have to be able to boot through it. So this is only going to waste 16K of memory, which I would say is very minor. Okay, so now we're going to say um, create and, uh, oh yeah, we'll make another table. So this is going to be create, uh, create a, what do we want to call this? Um, create the uh, trampoline page table, and we'll call this the trampoline table and fail to create the trampoline page table and then we'll say for physical address in zero dot dot equal uh zero dot dot because it's not inclusive bootloader end 
dot step by 4096. We're going to put a raw mapping in the trampoline table. And we're going to say, wait, what are those permissions? Oh, pattern three. And then these are not permissions. Yeah, never mind. Uh, so we're gonna actually going to do it as, that's going to be, um, uh, we're going to do trampoline map raw, physical memory at this physical address, page 4K. And then this is the entry. This is the raw page table entry. It's executable and read writable. Um, this three is basically page present or page. Uh, you know what? Let's make that more clear. You guys gotta. You guys gotta make sure I'm using constants here. So I'll say um, page right or page present. So the physical address and then present, uh, and that, and then this will go to the bootloader end. So we're gonna map all of that stuff in. So skillin, yeah. Meta Construct, how are you doing, man? I mostly lurk, uh, but this is by far my favorite stream on Twitch. Oh my god, that makes me so happy to hear. That is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What did we call these uh, page table things? We have page, oops. We're gonna have, mm, on the wrong window, okay. Uh, page present. Page right and page NX. We're not using page NX yet, but we will. And I like to do this. When I overflow, I just make a new, I start a new uh, import section for that. Uh, page NX not used and a semicolon on here and we're fine and dandy here. Uh, 103. So this is complaining. We're gonna say uh, this as a U64 and now this uh, iterator is over U64s. And then this is the trampoline table. So we're gonna map in at the same address of the physical address we're mapping, so 0, 4K, so on and so forth, we're making a 4K mapping that is marked as writable and present. And then this is just causing us to create tables while we're traversing. So if the table does not exist, an intermediate table, we create the table and fill it in with zeros. This will cause us to not allow us to overwrite an existing mapping that'll prevent us from somehow like fucking this up. In fact, if we had like step by one here, it would complain. I would actually complain because the vert adder isn't aligned. And then false here is I think saying that we don't need to invalidate the page table mapping uh, when we create that entry. Okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do, uh, so we're gonna create a mapping where physical uh, virtual address is equal to the physical address. And now, we're going to create a mapping where virtual address is equal to patter plus uh, fizz window base. Okay. And this is gonna be uh, const fizz window base. And you know what? We're gonna put this in the shared boot arg stuff. This is the pub const u64. And we're gonna put these in here too, because might as well give the kernel the ability to know where these things are. Uh, so that means we're gonna pull those in from boot args. Uh, fizz window base, kernel stack size, and kernel stack pad. And now those are shared. Uh, we'll just do this, I think. We're gonna stylize this a little different. Use boot args this. And we're gonna say kernel fizz window base. Okay, so this is going to be a kernel. We're gonna have to mark these as public so that we can access them in the other module or the other crate. Uh -huh. With okay, uh, so this is going to be the virtual base in the kernel page tables where uh, physical memory is linearly mapped. 
such that a dereference of this, such, a, such that a dereference of that in kernel mode, uh, in the kernel address space, will be accessing uh, zero in physical memory. Does that make sense? So we got to figure out where we want to put this. Um, I, I think I'm going to put it in the FFF space because we haven't really used that yet. And uh, which means that that must start with an eight. Um, so basically we have eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F that we can put here. And then these can be any, anything. Um, uh, we could put this at cafe. FFFF cafe. Um, this is gonna this is gonna kind of roll around a lot because we're gonna map in a lot of memory here. We're gonna probably map in a terabyte of RAM. Um, so we don't really have a great way to identify all of the. There's not really a great way for me to figure out all physical memory, like the highest physical address that's present. The boot. The E820 tables kind of tell us that information, but I don't know if they're always going to tell me where devices have been mapped. Um, I don't know. We might be able to use the E820. I'm thinking. I'm doing some big brain calculations right now. Anyways, uh, while we think about that, um, fizz window base kernel this. So we're going to take a virtual address that will create by adding the physical address to that location. So now we're going to map that. And we're going to ma map this. Oh, this needs to be executable in this stage as well. Ready for... OK. So this is going to be uh, create the two different physical map windows for the, uh, for the uh, trampoline page table. And here we can say uh, print mapped x to, and we'll go 018x to, here we'll do uh, 08x, should be sufficient here. And we'll say uh, patter to patter. And this is just for a little bit of debugging so we can see what we're actually doing. Here we'll grab this. We'll add that. And this is going to use just a small amount of memory to create this mapping. And here we go. So this is saying that 0 maps to 0, but also cafe maps to 0. 1,000 maps to 1,000, and cafe 1,000 maps to 1,000. So on and so forth. Here, we're already working on page tables. Hell yeah. We actually finished up the page tables yesterday. Well, the page table implementation. Um, we're going to add to it today, because we have to support removing things from the page table, which is a non-zero complexity operation. So that's going to be what we're going to do when we finish this up, is we're going to implement a technique that will allow us to unmap something from physical memory. And when you unmap something from these page tables, you have to look to see if you emptied the page table, that, uh, the level that you're in, so you can also free that page table. So you kind of have to, like, free everything, and then do a pass to see if you no longer have any entries on that page table. It's, it's kind of weird. We'll, uh, we'll talk, that, talk about that in a bit. So that creates all these mappings. And this allows us to execute uh, the exact same thing at cafe and at C000. Fantastic. Simple. OK, so we're going to remove those prints because we don't really need them. And then down here, we're not going to do a 4 gig identity map anymore. We're going we're gonna to do a, right now, we're just going to say a 32 gig linear map of physical memory. And we're going to have 32 gigs here. And then this virtual address is going to be at virtual address uh, of, this is going to be the kernel fizz window base plus the physical address. So now, the page table will only have this window base plus uh, physical address. And then we're going to set these permissions to page write, page present. And then we're also going to add in page NX. 
I think. No, these need to be executable. I would like for them to not be executable, but uh, we are going to need to switch to this CR3. Yeah, we need to be able to switch to this CR3 before jumping, which means we need, yeah, we need it to be executable, unfortunately. So this will be uh, right and present, and NX we won't need now. So that's fine. We could technically limit the amount of RWX memory to only where the uh, bootloader is, but yeah. Anyways, so we're getting panics here. Or we're getting triple faults. This is causing us to reboot, which makes sense because we haven't enlightened the trampoline phase, these assembly routines. We haven't enlightened those yet uh, of this new table that we just created. So we're also going to assert at this stage, we're going to get a lock to the um, boot args trampoline. Uh, we'll call this the tramp table. We're going to assert that the tramp table is also none. And the tramp table set up before kernel uh, page tables, or if that is none, assert that that is none and tramp table is none. And that's making sure that neither of those tables have been created yet. We're going to get down to this stage and we'll say a uh, tramp table is equal to some trampoline table. So now, all the cores have access to that, so we can get the address of it. This is going to map in the stack for the kernel, um, and that's fine because we don't switch to using that stack until after our trampoline. We actually atomically jump to the kernel and switch our stack. Uh, so get the address of the um, trampoline page table, and here we'll say uh, tramp table as ref unwrap table. And yeah, we'll just put that here. Once again, that has to exist in low memory, which it does. So the trampoline table. Yeah, we're going to have to as ref that. Unwrap it, get the table. And then dot zero, because it's a physical address, that'll convert it to a U32. And then at this stage, we will have to return into this tuple the tramp CR3. And then here we'll have the trampoline CR3 as another parameter that we pass to our uh, entry routine. And then here we'll pass in the tramp CR3. Okay, so that's not gonna work yet, of course. Um, so we pass in this extra argument into here. Uh, so we're gonna say that at ESP plus 20, this is going to have the trampoline CR3. Um, and we're going to just grab that right now into ESI. And this will have the trampoline CR3. Looks good. So we're going to grab the trampoline C uh, CR3. We're going to put that into CR3. This should allow us to get to the next phase. Um, and then I'm also going to load up uh, EDI. It doesn't look like I'm using EDI anywhere in here. That's great. So we're going to actually load up EDI. This will have the kernel CR3. I'll say kernel CR3, and this will be at 1C. Okay, so we're going to set up a CR3. We're going to perform this uh, transition, and now we're going to jump to long mode entry, but we're going to have to do an IRET, um, and that's fine. We can set up an IRET frame here. So we're going to push. Um, this is going to be uh, perform a long jump to switch into 64-bit mode, as well as transition into uh, using... Oh, can I IRET queue at this stage? I don't know if I can. I might have to jump here and then do this. We'll set up all the selectors. And then at this point, we're going to um, set up a long jump uh, to switch from the identity memory map to the physical 
or to the linear uh, physical memory map. And to do this, we're going to set up an IRET, which is the only way that in 64-bit that we can do a long jump. Oh, I don't have to do that. I can do a jump. Uh, I can do a jump uh, register here. Um, we're not actually setting. We already set up this segment, so we'll have adder here, and that's a. This is going to be a physical address. So we're going to do um, move rbx, which I don't think we're using. Actually, we can use racks here. We'll use racks, and we'll load up the uh, this address, which we'll want to pass in. We're not doing it yet, but we'll want to pass this in. Uh, where is this? In boot args, this address. So we're going to load this address into racks, and that's going to be the linear uh, base. And then we're going to add to racks. We're going to add address, which is the physical address of this. And then we're going to jump racks. And this is going to cause us to switch from being in our physical memory to our uh, kernel memory state. Uh, and we're still using the stack at this stage. Ooh. Um. Do you think Rust promised to be nearly as fast as C holds true in almost all scenarios? Yeah, I think it's I think it's as fast in every single situation. I don't think there's really any difference between the performance of the two. Unless you contrive a scenario where you intentionally try and pick on uh, where Rust would have a weakness, but you would never write code like that in reality. Okay, so we're currently using... We're, we haven't switched to our new stack yet, which is kind of weird here. Why are we doing a long jump? Oh, that's so we can atomically set up the stack and RIP. Uh, but we can actually load the stack right now. So we're going to switch over to the kernel stack. Um, which is at C. Yep, C, that now has the stack. So at this point, the stack... Uh, oh, we need the parameter. We'll grab the parameter. Uh, parameter. This is this is this is some dangerous stuff. So these are accessing uh, the physical memory. So this is uh, these are some of the last physical accesses, because RIP was pointing to physical memory and RSP was pointing to physical memory identity mapped. We have switched. RIP, so the instruction pointer is no longer pointing to that. And then here, we switch over to our kernel stack. Uh, we sub 28 from that. We push all of this stuff, and then we IRET queue. Um, and in this case, this is RSP. Okay, and yeah. Uh, technically, that RSP might be off a little bit, so we're going to move RBP RSP. And we're just going to cache that. Uh, then we're going to do all these pushes. We'll set up where we want RSP to be. And we'll do an IRET. And then that will cause RSP to be at that location. And then we need to switch um, at this point the stack. And RIP both point to the um, linear physical map rather than the identity physical map. So we can now safely switch to the kernel CR3. And if we didn't get this right, it's going to be a little bit hard to debug. So just be ready for that. We're going to load the, uh, it's an ESI, oh, EDI. And yeah, we don't use that anywhere else. So we're going to load into RDI. That's CR3. So this, in theory, uh, cargo run clean, cargo run. This, in theory, will use the trampoline and then jump into the kernel. And it's not working. 
So now we need to debug where the fault is. So I can put a CLI halt in here. And if it doesn't crash, then the issue is prior to this. Or if it doesn't crash, then the issue is after this. And it looks like that no longer crashes. OK. So now we're going to see if we can switch to this cafe location. Doop. And we're going to see. This will tell us if that is mapped in and is executable. It looks to be, which is a good sign. So then at this point, this is going to see if we were able to do those stack accesses. OK, so we're good at that point. So let's see if we can push to the new stack we just created. And we can. Um, RDI. Whoa. I am using RDI to get the entry point. Oh, thank you. You stomped RDI. I could have just read ch chat. <laughs> You're totally right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just put that into uh, RBP, RDX, EDX. EDX we stomp. Uh, ESP, EBP we're using. EDX, EAX we're using. EBX. We are not using EBX. We're not using RBX. I can just search for BX. And yeah, we use that in a different part of the code base. So here we'll load that into EBX. OK, and then here we'll load up RBX. Woof. So this should work. Um, and then clean, rebuild it. And let's see what we can do here. OK, that's not working. Interesting. I'm going to put a, a CLI halt here. And let's see if that fixes it. So that does. It seems to not like the jump into RIP. I think AX was stomped. AX is fine because I'm not using it. Um, I mean, we're getting to this point. We're able to push to that stack. Well, at this point, I can actually just jump RIP, or uh, jump to uh, the entry point, RDI. I don't need to do the long jump. So here we'll do uh, jump, because we set up the stack. I was doing that so I could atomically switch the stack, uh, but I don't need to do that. Jump into the kernel entry. So we sub RSP. We have a new fresh stack. We sub off the RSP, which is for the calling convention. Um, and then we jump directly to RDI. Let's see what we get here. Oh, you know what? This is working, probably. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually working. It was working this whole time. Uh, the problem is these boot args. Um, these boot args are actually a physical address. So I'm just going to say that's a pointer for now. And then in the core locals, uh, we basically, and then these are going to touch physical memory as well. So. Do you have any supports to any plans to support Risk Five? Not really. This is not. Uh, this isn't really meant to be a fun project. This is meant to be a usable kernel, and there's really no reason to make a Risk Five kernel right now. Unfortunately, there's no hardware that really runs it in a meaningful capacity. Uh, const boot args. Okay. 
so, uh, this is going to be convert the physical boot args pointer into a, uh, into the linear mapping. Okay. Let's pointer to boot args, and then here we're going to say convert the physical boot args pointer into a linear mapping, into the linear mapping, and we'll do this via um, boot args is equal to boot args as u size plus, yeah, we'll say as u64 here, plus the kernel fizz window base, which we'll pull in from boot args. And we're going to pull that in. And then we'll cast that to a const boot args. Honestly, I might just say this is a, a u64. I, I'm going to say this is a fizz adder. Uh, fizz adder. And then here we can uh, ref deref. And that will add that base. Uh, fizz adder. We get that from page table, I think. Correct. And I think that just makes it a little bit more clear that that is a physical address. Okay, and then here we can get the uh, address component. We can add the physical window base, and then we'll cast that into a pointer to boot args, and then we'll dereference that pointer and turn it into a safe uh, Rust pointer. And we're gonna say this is a static fit, um, boot args, just to make sure the typing is very strong there. Okay, so this should work. Maybe. We don't do any prints in here, do we? Uh, print kernel up. This will then crash because this stuff is not in bounds because those are also physical addresses. Um, okay, maybe not. Huh. Oh, release early stack. This has to be fixed as well. Plus, and I might impl something on fizz adder such that I can uh, access physical addresses and it will like do the translation for me. Um. So I think I might do that. Uh, I can't. I can't impl on fizz adder. I don't think it's not gonna let me do that. Yeah, because that's defined outside of the crate. I could implement a trait for that, like a physical address trait, and I think that's what I'm gonna want to do. We're gonna want that for. Yeah. Well, let's just get this working. Here we're going to add the kernel fizz window base, which is from boot args. This is really hacky right now, but that's fine. Uh, we'll put some parens here. Okay, here we go. Really? CPU halt. I guess the first thing we should do is just halt in there and see if this fixes it. Okay, so we are executing kernel code. Now we're going to see if we can get past the release early stack. And we can, so that seems to be fixed up. Let's see if we can get past initializing the boot args. 
and that is failing. And I'm guessing, is one of those going to have a pointer? I don't think they do. Oh, um... Uh, oh, this is a, this is a physical address here. pmem.allocate. Yep, that's a physical address here. Okay. And we'll, we'll make a, like, write phys helper in, like, two seconds here. I just want to make sure... We've thought through, like, all of these basic problems. Okay, so let's see. This should no longer... Yep, that's not crashing anymore. And then we'll fix... We'll get rid of this. This should now print kernel up, and that will show that we have access... Son of a bitch. Uh, CPU, halt. Does this fi fix the loop? It does. So that means print is hitting physical memory too? Uh, or it's getting a bad address there, uh, which I think would be more likely. So I'm going to print... I'm going to print... Uh, oh, I can't print. Um... Oh, GS base. We didn't fix this. Because GS base was fucked. Okay. This should hopefully print kernel up. Okay, it doesn't. It's shit. Oh, and then this address needs to change as well. It's not going to be like this for most allocations. This is just for the very, very early stage where almost everything is a physical address. Okay. Okay. Um. Boot args, that's been converted. Core local pointer. We're just going to convert this right here, right now. Okay, done. And that way, no one has access to... Uh, at this point, we've destroyed any evidence of a physical address. I'm pretty sure it's impossible at this phase to have a physical address. Um, here and here... So we convert the boot args, which is a phys adder. We convert this, which is a physical address because we allocated out of physical memory. And print unreachable. Halt. Oh, I didn't write that file out. Oh, whew. All right, kernel up. Nice. So the issue here is, um, so we basically, we had a physical address passed to us by the bootloader that we've converted to our kernel physical map. When we did a physical allocation, we added the physical base, and that means no one can, at this point, there's not a single physical pointer that exists in this entire code base anymore. Um, obviously the page tables have those, but the page tables will know to convert those. So. Uh, of course, we have these hard-coded physical addresses, which we can now change. And I'm going to make a... Um, um, we're going to start working on MM, I think. Uh, I think so. Sweet, you're back already. Hell yeah, hell yeah I am. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, mod MM. SP kernel source mm. This is where our memory manager is going to be. Uh, boot args. Oh, yeah, we didn't have boot args last time we did this. 
fuck yeah! Now we do core boot args. Dude. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, we can add the um, base here. This is temporary because we're not going to use this uh, physical allocator. But, temporarily, I want this. So, in the memory manager, we will have boot args and then kernel fizz window base. And then here we'll have five. Oops. Uh, here we're gonna add this. And I think we gotta use size that. Perfect. And then free. In this case, we'll actually let pointers equal to a pointer as u64 minus this. And then we'll do a pointer check to add that. Because uh, we're going to subtract off that physical base. And here we can do a, a checked sub. Even though it should never fail. Um, we'll just do it because we can. Okay. Uh, 50. Cannot add u size to option u size. Uh huh. Map x. And then we'll do an x plus the u size. Uh, in a uh, curly brace. Okay. So... Yeah. Um... Yeah, so we might be able to do this now. Extern create alloc. Uh, and we'll do macro use on this. Perfect. And I should be able to do let mute vec... Uh, ASDF is vec o, uh, ox4150, print, uh, we'll print the pointer of it, and we'll print the contents of it, ASFD, ASFD, um, dot as pointer, and then we'll CPU halt, and this will see if we have allocations working, um, CXX frame handler is missing, I think that is the eh handler. Um, so we're going to grab that out of uh, sushi roll, kernel source, core requirements, eh? Nope. Sushi roll, kernel source. I might have put it in main, to be honest. Eh? Nope. MM? Eh? Okay. Uh, where the fuck is that code? I could search for it. I could make some more blind guesses. I think it's time to search. CD sushi roll. RG personality. What? Okay. What? Um, uh, okay, make a fake, uh-huh, I realize this code is not very readable, and that's core rex, uh, we'll open a core, a source core, uh, shared core rex source lib, so that's going to make that. And Rust causes a panic. Uh, this is hacky. Yeah, we can't. Previously, I couldn't actually make that in Rust for some reason. Uh, and we could actually retry that to see if we could no mangle this structure. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can um, create a CXX frame handler 3. Uh, FN SDF. Uh, we'll comment this out temporarily, and I think this causes the Rust compiler to crash. 
Um, oh, frag me. Um, let's see if this works. I typed that right, did I not? Export name is CXX frame handler three. Oh yeah, this um we had issues with uh we had issues with this with another oh maybe I need a puppet. And let me go to this variant. Okay, let's see if I can do it with the global asm. Okay, well that that works. So that'll just cause a crash. It'll never get hit. Um, but if somehow there an unwind started, which it won't happen because we don't have unwinding, um, that's what would get potentially executed. So yeah, the more you know. Okay. So I guess, yeah, yeah, it works. Uh, we got an allocation at cafe, which is where we put our physical memory. Uh, dynamic allocation. So this is the physical address, uh, 4150018. And we filled it in with four ones. So, uh, okay. What about two underscores? I think I tried that. Thought he said, shut she rolls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Wow, well, I can't believe it. What can't you believe? What can't you believe? Okay, um, sweet. So we're going to delete all of this allocation stuff because we don't actually want to allocate out of physical memory. But translation, here we go. So this is where, this is the physmem. Remember, remember... When we implemented our uh, page table library, all of the page table stuff would be accessed via um, via translate. Anytime we use a physical address, we call translate on that, such that we can get a mapping of it. And that means, um, yeah, we translate the VAD. Uh, I'm actually going to double check and make sure. So I'm just going to search for all asterisks. Here we deref byte. Byte came from a slice. The slice was created from a translated address. Okay. Here, I'm dereffing a VAD, but a VAD came from a translated address. Uh, dereffing VAD again, VAD again, VAD again, and that's it. So all derefs in our page table implementation actually use translate to convert the physical address to a virtual address. And that means that we can change this to take the physical address and add um, let's see convert the physical address into a u size uh, that doesn't matter in this case so we're going to say cannot translate for a zero size access and then for this we will um, just take the physical address and we will add in kernel fizz window base as mute u8 and we're actually going to do let's uh, Vatter is equal to this. Um, ooh, I'm going to do this. Patter is equal to, uh, we'll do end is equal to patter dot checked add size. Uh, so this will compute the ending physical address. Subtract one. And now uh, what I can do is I can make this complain if it tries to translate something outside of our map uh, we could have it return none um, so we'll do we'll add a boot arg here and we'll say uh, pub cons kernel identity map size u64 is this and we'll say um, we'll say a terabyte so this is the size of the kernel uh, oops. Uh, size of the kernel physical window in bytes. Okay. So then down here, uh, where I create this, 
whoops, we will use the kernel fizz window size. And we'll go through all the bytes, we'll step by 4K, uh, and create a linear, linear map of physical memory. So now that's programmatically controlled much better than what I was doing before. Here we're going to pull in kernel fizz window size. Just an expression. Haha, <laughs> good job. Glad you're enjoying things. Okay, so... Well, that that's done. Um, now we need to switch over on this side of things. So we're going to add compute the ending physical address. And we're going to say if the end is greater than the kernel fizz window size. If it's equal, actually if it's equal, that's a problem too. So if the end is greater than or equal to, uh, make sure this physical address fits inside our window. Okay. And this will return none. So if the end address, the physical address, plus the size minus one, uh, if that is greater than or equal to, because this is minus one, if it's greater than or equal to the physical window size, then it's out of bounds, and we don't want to create a pointer for it. And then in this case, it is in bounds, so we're going to take the physical address, we're going to add the physical window base to it. So here we're going to say um, convert the physical address into a view, in, uh, into a uh, linear mapping view address. Okay, and then we got to pull in the kernel fizz window size. Uh, 20, checked add, size minus one, patter dot zero, and this is patter dot zero as well. That's going to be the U64. Uh, size, in this case, we'll upcast that to a U64. Okay, so if, it's less, if the size is less than or equal to zero, we don't want to translate it. Otherwise, compute the end, make sure it fits within, uh, within our window, and if it does, and this is unsafe, um, and if it fits in our window, then we take the physical address, we add the base, and we convert it to a mutable pointer of bytes, and this has made sure that it's valid for at least size bytes, and we return that pointer. Okay. Um, MM, we're not using try into. We're not using vert adder yet. We will in a second, I think. Okay, so this should still work. It's identical to the behavior before. Um, okay, that worked. I don't know why that was such a long boot time. Oh, because we're making a one gig map, or a one tera map. Okay, so we'll just uh, decrease that size a wee bit. It's just taking a long time to actually make that mapping. Uh, here we go. Boop. Where did you learn all this stuff? I've just been doing it for a while. Uh, I just kind of learned it as I needed to over just reading Intel manuals, and that's honestly pretty much it is just reading manuals. A lot of intuition as well, because a lot of the stuff starts to become intuitive if you do it enough, and you can kind of guess how certain things were designed. So in this case, this is alloc fizz. We're going to call allocate with the size and the alignment, and we're going to return the physical address um, of what we got back. And that makes sense, because we're returning a fizz adder, and the fizz adder doesn't need to have the base applied to it, because it's not usable as a fizz adder directly. OK, so then we have the global allocator. And here, we want to get access to physical memory. And then we also want to get access to virtual memory, let mute page table is equal to core dot boot args. Um, uh, page table dot lock. So this will get us access to the page table. Um, OK. So now what I want to do is I actually want to create a mapping. So we're going to add. Um, yeah, we're going to say uh, const next free virtual address. 
This is going to be a U60, uh, an atomic U64, and this is going to be an atomic U64, uh, and this is going to be where we start our virtual allocations. So this is going to be the uh, uh, base address for virtual allocations. And we're just going to increment this every time an allocation is performed. So we're going to pull in use core sync atomic atomic u64 and the ordering. And then we're going to pick where we want to put this. And I think I'm going to do, what have, what have we mapped everything to so far? Cafe is where the uh, physical memory window is. Um, oh, yeah, and I want to pass that in there. So let me make a note of that in a second. Um, you know, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Um, to get that, we're going to get, we're going to load into RDX, which we're not using. Okay, we're going to load RDX, and this is going to be a quadward ESP plus OX24. This is going to be the um, uh, physical window address. Okay, and then here we'll grab 24. Oh, and we're going to have to do that here. So we're going to grab the physical window address, uh, and we'll just put that into racks. And this is the physical window address. Okay. Um, and what's going on here? Okay. So this should fail. This should panic. Okay. I, uh, oh yeah, I got to clean it because that file is not included as part of the build artifacts. It's, I need to find a way to indicate that. Actually, uh, rest include bytes. I might be able to spoof it out by saying in include bytes. Um, which are the contents of the file. And I don't think I can restrict it to a smaller size. Hmm. Yeah, I just want to set up a dependency on this file because I will keep making that mistake. Anyways, this doesn't work because we don't pass in that argument yet. Uh, and to fix this, we have to go into the bootloader. We have to add the um, fizz window base, U64. And then here, we'll pass in the uh, kernel fizz window base as an argument. And now this should work, and it does. Okay. So this has now transitioned us to using um, that physical window base. Let's rebuild everything, make sure everything's great, and it should be perfect. Um, so now that'll take the physical window address, and I don't think we have any static addresses or values in here anymore. So that should be pretty much complete. So now we have the physical window base there. The kernel is based wherever the kernel, uh, the PE says. And then the stacks are based. Um, the stacks are based. Uh, we actually set that up here. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to say um, kernel uh, kernel stack base kernel stacks base kernel stacks base. And this way, we kind of have everything all in one nice location for our memory map. It's all going to be in this boot args. Uh, pub const kernel stacks base u64 and the address. And this is going to be the base virtual address to use for kernel uh, stacks. OK, and then this, oops, I'm just going to reorder this to here. And now we can see that so far we have this in use and this in use. And then wherever the PE wanted to load to, we actually don't restrict that. Um, I might want to restrict that, just that 
we can have that as like an argument here, like expected base or something. Um, we'll think about it. Anyways, we need a a location to start the heap. Or the virtual address is not actually a heap in this case. Uh, this is in mm. And here we're going to use uh, use boot args um, kernel uh, vmem base. OK. Uh, and this will be pub const kernel vmem base. And this will be a u64. Um, the base virtual address to use for dynamic virtual allocations. And here we'll just say we need an address, FFFF. I might just do 8,000, the lowest possible address here. That puts us very far away from this. Um, and that's a relatively easy to identify address as well. OK, uh, so now we're not using next free at a virtual address. So we're going to get one. So here we'll do let uh, vatter is equal to the next free vatter checked add uh, let align size. We're going to page align up the size. So we'll get layout.size dot checked add oxffff um and i can't use question mark here i can if i make an impl on global allocator and i think that's what i'm going to do impl global allocator and this is going to be unsafe fn alloc self layout layout and this will just be a version that can return an option such that we can use the question mark syntax. And then this code here, the allocate code, is just going to call uh, self.alloc um, optalloc, I don't know, optalloc layout question, uh, unwrap or core pointer null mute. So basically, we will attempt to allocate. If we cannot allocate, then we will fuck off. Dalloc will do nothing for now. I'm very easily confused. Uh, one of the warnings in the MM, just the result as a, uh, probably, uh, one of them's not use, or one's not, doesn't need to be mute or something. Um, one of those things is just uh, some test code, so we don't care that there's a typo. It's not, it's not really a real thing. Yet, and we're going to delete that code because it's just testing. So here we're going to perform opt alloc. And if it fails, then we'll return none. And that means we can do checked add to add FFFF. And then we can and this with not OXFFF. So this is align a page for kilobyte align up the um, allocation size. And then we're going to do a checked add, or not checked add. Uh, fetch add align size ordering uh, sequentially consistent. So this is going to be gets a unique address for this mapping. And we can do all those operations prior to the lock. We want to have the locks for as short of a duration as we can. So then here, we are ready to create an allocation. So let's take a look. And I think I can actually make map safe uh, because this does not overwrite. And that calls map init. And this calls this. And it does not allow overwriting. So I think I can actually make these safe um, because these don't actually um, that takes fizzmem, which is locked. Virtual virtual address is where you want to put it. 
uh, page type, size, and we don't overwrite, we don't recreate an allocation, and we don't give you access to it, we just map it. So I'm pretty sure we can safely do that. I don't think there's any reason that would be unsafe. Uh, given you have atomic access to the tables, and then here, oh, this, um, this should be true. That invilpig, invilpig on update. Yeah, so we won't update an entry, but we'll invilpig if we do update. Oh, we can't actually update an entry. That makes sense. So we can only create mappings. We can't remove mappings. And yeah, there's no reason that should be unsafe. Um, which is actually really cool. I was thinking about that last night before uh, before sleep. Translate is unsafe. Technically, translate is not unsafe. Um, and the reason translate is not unsafe is because uh, what's unsafe is the use of the pointer, not the creation of the pointer. So we're going to change that. And that just follows more with uh, Rust's design. Um, okay, 139, this is unsafe. So here's where we use it. I guess maybe it should be unsafe because we're, we're saying that we're gonna use it. Yeah, we'll mark it unsafe. Um, cause we are going to use that. We're, we are going to trust that address. Uh, let's go check this out. 137, call to an unsafe function, translate. Yep, we gotta put this in unsafe. To be honest, we can do let bytes is equal to this, and then we can slice it. Uh, here. And that can actually be the end of our unsafe box. Say sliced. Okay, and then map raw 151. This is unsafe. But we're calling it with a safe variant. Okay, uh, unnecessary. This is on bootloader main 135. Yep, because these are no longer unsafe. We have exclusive access to the table. We're only adding things and we're using pointers that are trusted. Um, I guess, yeah, you have to write unsafe code to, to break that. You, you are required to write unsafe code because you have to uh, give a bad pointer. Okay, so align size, this is in MM57. Uh, and in this case, uh, yeah, we're going to use a, we'll convert that to a U64. Okay. So now we haven't returned anything. And now we can do a mapping. And to do a mapping, we just have to call our map routine. Uh, just map. So this is going to be um, map in the memory as read write. So we'll do a at the virtual address. We're going to create an allocation that is read writable, and we're going to use pmem for that. And it's on the page table, and this is the size, which is the align size. So there we go. We're going to create an allocation for that size at that virtual address. And then at this point, we have created a virtual address if that succeeded. 
Um, we have no unwraps or anything in here. Good. Okay. So now we can take the virtual address as a mute u8. And at that point, the allocation has succeeded. Uh, map. What did I miss? PMEM virtual address, page size, align size. True, true, false. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let page table equals uh, page table as mute. And that will unwrap it. Okay, that's not implemented for the lock cell guard. Of course not. So we need to make the like holder, this physical memory structure. And I think we made one. We did. So physical memory is this. Let pmem is equal to physical memory uh, pmem as mute. And then vert address we need to pull in and page type. And we'll get to this in a second. I'll talk through what everything in here did, but I think uh, 68 can't borrow as mutable. Yep, we make a new pmem, we wrap it in that, and then here we go. Let's see. There you go. We just got a virtual allocation. God damn, we're good. God damn, we're good. Thank you for the follow. Hell yeah. Okay, so here's the logic of what happens. When Rust performs an allocation, it calls, uh, you can only use allocations if you have the alloc crate. If you have the alloc crate, it is required that you define a global allocator. This global allocator is an empty structure, um, and it's just made so we can implement the global allocator trait on it, the global alloc trait. And the global alloc trait, so Rust is going to look for this special global uh, that has been marked as the global allocator, and it will then call alloc and dealloc on that structure. And in this case, we're going to call opt alloc, which is just the same as alloc, but it will return an option. So we can use question marks. So the code's just a little bit cleaner. Um, and then if it fails, it will return a null pointer, which is what Rust expects on an allocation failure is a null. So if we failed, we return null. So that allocation is going to go into opt alloc. And optalloc is going to take the size, and it's going to align it up to the nearest 4 kilobyte boundary. So we're going to add FFF to it, and then we're going to mask off that FFF. And this is basically only here, uh, such that um, when we add to this virtual address, that next free virtual address will always contain a, a page-aligned address. And it's not pub, so no one else can access it. So that makes sure that every time we update this, we're always adding something 4K aligned. It started out 4K aligned, which means this will always permanently be a 4K aligned address. At that stage, uh, we then get access to physical memory, and we load it in this marker trait called physical memory. And all that does is that implements the routines that we required in our page table implementation to this physmem trait. And physmem allows the page table code to use either the bootloaders or the kernels or whatever code, whoever is using page tables just says, if you want to access physical memory, please ask me, and I will tell you where you can get access to that. And that allows us here, in this case, when it's walking the page tables and working with physical addresses, um, it goes through us first. And we mediate that information, and we say, oh, you actually have to add this to it. So we perform the conversion. We make sure it's in bounds of our window, and we return it out. And then alloc fizz, in this case, is just a way that we can allocate physical memory with a given size and a given alignment requirement. Um, and that's handled all in page table. So we've wrapped that up, and that just basically says, now we can pass that as an argument, and it knows where to call the functions, what functions it needs to invoke on that type uh, to get the correct behavior. Then what we do is we, um, we get access to the page table. So we need mutable access to the page table, so we get access to the page table. And at this point, we have 
exclusive control between all cores running on the system, we have exclusive access to the page table and to physical memory. And that means we can now map memory. So we go and say, hey, I would like a mapping of memory in this page table using this physical memory allocator at this virtual address using this page size, 4K pages, the size that we want to allocate, and then we say uh, we want this as readable, writable, and not executable. And then finally, if that succeeds, we get here. Uh, allocation success. Uh, Vatter now is valid as read, write for uh, align size bytes. And that's what we do. We return out a pointer to that memory. And we're not doing free yet, but we'll probably want to implement that. Anyways, uh, dalloc. We'll, uh, we're going to put some underscores in these things. Clean these up. Um, boot args. These aren't being used where? Uh, we're not using range here. And five boot args. Not using that. And we have some unreachable code. SFD, that doesn't need to be mute because we're just printing from it. But we'll try it. We'll do ASFD uh, 5 is equal to OX 10. And then we'll print that as hex. We'll do a halt. That's going to bring up other cores, but that's broken right now. So here we go. And there we go. At the 10th offset, or hex 10, I think. Uh, oh, at 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's our 10 in hex that we've wrote to that location. So now we can arbitrarily allocate uh, virtual memory. And the amazing thing about virtual memory is that virtual memory doesn't actually... Um, when you allocate something out of virtual memory, you're not causing any fragmentation. Because the physical memory underneath can be who fucking cares... As long as it's 4K granularity, you can construct a 50 gigabyte mapping using fragmented physical memory because we're just pulling in random pages from all over physical memory and jamming them in to this virtual mapping. So now we can create arbitrary size allocations until we run out of memory. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So I should be able to make a vector. We'll say I want a vector with the capacity to hold, uh, I want to hold 32 gigs of memory in here. And let's see what happens. Um, and this is uh, alloc vec with capacity. Vec. It's the full path to vec. Can't infer type. That's fine. Uh, we'll say alloc vec vec u8. It's a little gross, but whatever. So let's see what happens. Um, let's see. Out of memory. Cool. So it failed to create that allocation, which is fantastic. Um, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So it was unable to allocate 32 gigs, which is fine. Can we do 8 gigs? We should be able to, because I think we gave this VM 10 gigs, and we haven't used that much memory. There you go. We just got a pointer to 10 gigs, or to 8 gigs of memory. So I can do a, um, uh, we can actually initialize it. We'll say, uh, we're going to initialize this to 4.1, and we're going we're gonna to fill in 4 gigs of memory, and then we'll just do a dot, dot, 8. Um, just so we slice that down a bit. Uh, and I think we have to ref that. And this is a close. So this will make 8 gigs. And I like this syntax a little bit more. This will allocate 8 gigs and fill it in with 4.1. Um, oh, equals. No colon. And here we go. Can we allocate 8 gigs of memory? There is nowhere in the address space where there's 8 gigs of contiguous memory, but we are able to make an allocation that holds 8 gigs. And here we can print the length if we really wanted to, or the end pointer. We'll do this. Uh, asfd.as pointer.offset 
asfd.len as uh, i size. So that will create the ending pointer. Apparently, offset is unsafe. Um, we can actually make it safe by doing this. Uh, we'll do asfd.len dot dot as pointer, and that's going to give the address of the end. So we'll be able to see the range that is spanned by this allocation. And here it is. It's this address to this address. is all mapped in one linear blob that we can fill in with whatever we want to do. Is the MMU not optimized in any way for non-fragmented memory? Nope. It'll fragment as much as it as much as it wants, and that's basically how it works in every single um, physical and virtual allocator. If you if you want to. Virtual allocators allow you to delete fragmentation by making a new virtual allocation, effectively. Physical memory can be as fragmented as possible. The only downside of fragmenting physical memory is eventually you will no longer have an ability to allocate a... Um, you'll no longer have an ability to allocate uh, um, large pages. But... Like, eventually, physical memory will get too fragmented that if you ask, hey, I would like to alloc a 2 meg or a 1 gig page, it would just not be able to find it. Uh, it wouldn't be able to find a 1 gig aligned section of physical memory that's unused for a gig. And you have the same problem in Linux and Windows and anything that uses large pages. Large pages are very difficult to get. Uh, I mean, but it's still faster to access unfragmented physical memory through the MMU. Uh... Nope, it's the same performance regardless. This will produce allocations that are, uh, you can access them as fast as you possibly can on x86. Yep. So, all right. All right, so there are a couple things that we can do to uh, speed up our allocators. Um, and one of the, Biggest things that we can do is we can have a free list of, uh, let's actually, I, I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean. So this allocator is really slow. Uh, so let's do, um, let's, it is rdtsc, we're going to have to pull this in. Uh, we'll do cpu rdtsc, and then we'll have let elapsed. CP, uh, is CPU RDTSC minus IT print took cycles to allocate bytes. Okay, elapsed and asfd.len and we'll have to do the this shit. Uh, alloc vec vec u8. So that's actually bytes. And this will tell me how long it took to allocate a certain amount of bytes. Now, we don't have RDTSC yet, so we'll go into CPU source. Uh, oops. Shared CPU source lib. And we're going to steal the read MSR, because that's basically what we need for RDTSC. Uh, read the timestamp counter. We're going to make sure this doesn't split up write MSR from read MSR, because those are kind of related. I like related code being next to each other. Read the timestamp counter, RDTSC. This will do an RDTSC instead. It has no input requirements. And it's the same here. We get the high and low parts as a U64. OK, and we give it the memory clobber, because we use this for uh, a lot of optimizations. And this one does not have to be unsafe. OK. Well, this is unsafe. All right, so now we can see how many cycles it took to perform that allocation. And that allocation is, took 18 cycles. Memory, volatile Intel. Um.
it might be getting pretty smart about that, so we'll just write one byte to it. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now it's actually performing the allocation, and this will be uh, capacity. All right, so now this will show us how long it took to allocate that. So it took uh, 219 uh, million cycles, and this processor is... Uh, this is a 3.2 gigahertz processor, so it basically took us this copy. Dude. Okay, this divided by um, 3200, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and we'll make these float. And yeah, it took about that long in seconds. This is in milliseconds. So it took uh, 68.59 milliseconds to allocate 8 gigs of memory, uh, which is pretty slow. Um, so I'm going to see if I can speed that up quite a bit. Let me see what I can do here. So we have that allocation. Uh, so I'm going to write that down. And we don't have free implemented either yet. Uh, okay. I got a new notebook. Super excited. So we're going to say it took uh, 68.59 millis. And let's see if it's relatively deterministic. That was 2, 219, 489, 256. Pretty damn close. We're in a VM, too, so it's going to be a lot more fuzzy. But, yeah, let's say 68 milliseconds. That's actually on low end. So it took, um, and I'm going to go by cycles. I'm going to say 219 million cycles uh, to allocate 8 gigabooties. OK. And there's a chance that we're bottlenecking a lot on the VM, so we might not be able to see the performance uh, changes from this optimization. But, okay. So memory is allocated through, um, through map init, right? Gigabooties, hell yeah. Uh, let's see, how does malloc work in a modern OS? Will the OS allocate a bunch of memory um, and malloc does its thing inside of this block, so lim still limited by fragmentation, or will it make use of the MMU? So typically an operating system will allocate any allocations larger than about 32 kilobytes is a common size. 32 to like 256 kilobytes is typically a threshold of which if an allocation is larger than that, it will go directly to the MMU. It'll call virtual alloc on Windows, or it will call mmap on Linux to get a new anonymous mapping, which will effectively do what I'm doing now. We basically implemented mmap. We implemented anonymous mmap. However, for sizes smaller than that, it'll do it in its own heap. So early on, it will allocate, it'll reserve, it'll reserve a large amount of memory, maybe a couple few gigs of memory, and then it will commit. So reserving just marks, please don't use this in the page table. Someone wants to be able to use this in the future. That allows room for growth without having to move the whole heap. Because if you were to relocate the heap, any pointers to the heap are no longer valid and you can't fix up pointers. So you will reserve like a gig of memory for the heap and then you will create inside of there, you will slowly grow a heap by adding pages to it as demand increases. And then inside of there, you'll manage the fragmentation. So you make your own like physical address space. And the reason for that is that uh, performing these allocations, uh, allocating and freeing memory like we're doing here by modifying the page tables is a relatively slow operation. If you had eight gigs free in the heap, it could just literally return the pointer. It would have to like check a couple tables to see if memory is available. And if it is available, then it will just return it out. And that's it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I hope that, I hope that uh, uh, explains that. Uh, but yes, effectively, to prevent having to go to the OS to make these expensive operations to modify these page tables, it will 
keep something around forever and then manage it in process. So if you do malloc and free, they won't actually do a syscall unless you exceed the size of a heap and it needs to make a new heap allocation or expand its reservation area. So, so let's see here. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to see if I can make this faster. So currently it's taking about, we said 219 million cycles to allocate, which is about 68 milliseconds. So we're going to see how much faster we can make these allocations. And I'm going to show you a trick. Uh, we are going to make a free list of pages. And this is also going to allow us to make free in uh, very shortly. Um, we're going to go on the core locals. And we're going to have a free list per core. And this is going to be a pointer to the next free allocation, uh, to the next free page, uh, for a kilobyte page. For a kilobyte page, aligned and fixed size. And we're only going to have a free list of pages. We're not going to have a free list of memory because we'll build a heap on top of this. But this is where we're going to actually make the... Um, this is where we're going to hold pages because all of our virtual allocations are built on pages. So we can keep the pages around. Remember, when we go to alloc fizz and do this and grab physical memory from the physical pool, we have to have a global lock to do that, which means we this would not scale with threads at all. Because if we have um, multiple threads running here, they're going to be competing for these resources. So that's something that I don't want to have at all. That's a big problem. So we want to make this so you can allocate uh, in a somewhat threaded way because you will need exclusive access to the memory, uh, to the page table, so it's still not really threaded for this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Anyways, so currently allocfizz goes directly to allocate. And allocate goes to the physical memory, the free list, and uh, the actual ranges of memory that are free to the bytes reported by E820, consumed by the BIOS, and now this is the list of all memory that is free on the system. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to, um, we don't really want to hit this list. Doing these range set operations is relatively expensive. So what we're going to do is every single time someone wants memory, we're going to say if layout.size is equal to 4096 and layout.align is equal to 4096. Otherwise, this um, special case, a four kilobyte um, page was requested. And this is basically all allocations will fall in this bucket. <laughs> Unless we're using large pages, Every single allocation we ever do is going to hit this case. So this is fine if this is slow, because it's never going to happen. But when this happens, and someone wants to allocate from physical memory, not virtual memory, physical memory, they want to allocate a page. The pages are what are used to construct a page table themselves. So if someone wants to make a page table entry, they would make these allocations. And if someone wanted to create a mapping of a page, they would allocate a page here. So pretty much every allocation is going to go through this 4K aligned, 4K size page. In which case, we can have a list. And this list will be, um, we will call this, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, this is core locals, pub, free pages, atomic u size, uh, atomic pointer, this will have a mutable reference to a U size. So we're going to have a linked list. Uh, we're going to, when something is free, when the page is free, we can use the 4K of the page for metadata. And we're going to use that to link to the next free page. And we can actually make this free list atomically safe, uh, such that when someone, wants to alloc when someone wants to grab a page, they will, um, they will read and update this free list, if that makes sense. So, uh, let's see. I think we can do that. 
we should be able to push and pop to a, a linked list atomically because we can we can read the value and then atomically swap it with the next one. Ah, uh, can we? I'm pretty sure we can. Um, let's see. I honestly want to thank you because uh, while I'm gone uh, from it now, I used to be in the script kids scene uh, prior to April 2019. Love these streams because they're the killer of all script kids. <laughs> don't under don't understand half of what uh, you said and is referencing, but I still love it. Absolutely. Okay. Can we do this safely? I think we can add to this list. I think we can if we replace it with a null. We can temporarily fetch out the value. We can add things easily because we can read the previous pointer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we can atomically uh, we can atomically do this. So let's see what we can do here. So uh, free pages that's in core locals. Then here we'll have free pages, which will be a. Uh, that's an atomic pointer to uh, an atomic pointer. Yeah, we're just going to say uh, U size, but it's technically an atomic pointer to an atomic pointer. So let's check out what we can do here. Uh, free pages is going to be uh, um, atomic pointer. And this atomic pointer might not be marked as sync, so we might have to use an atomic U size. So let's just see. Um, uh, atomic pointer. We might have to. Ah, uh, maybe that is sync. Yeah, I think that is sync. Sweet, awesome. Okay. So here's where you have to implement this logic around this atomic pointer. So what we're going to do is uh, check if the free list has any free pages. And here we're going to do let free list is equal to core free pages um, compare and swap. Uh, actually, we can just... Uh, we can uh, exchange that, I'm pretty sure. Let's see what this gives us. I think we just have an exchange. There's compare exchange, swap. Store a pointer in that, returning the previous value. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna swap in for this pointer. Remember, this stuff is local to the core. So it is possible that during an interrupt, someone could be accessing this at the same time, but it's really unlikely, right? If an interrupt came in like during these windows. So here's how we do this. Um, have any programming languages with type system more powerful than Rust caught your attention? Which ones? Nope, not at all. Only Rust. Rust is uh, the only language that I really like beyond C. And I, I have a lot of disagreements with C, but I do like the language. So we're gonna swap in a core pointer null mute. And this needs an ordering. So what we're going to do is uh, replace the current free list with, with a null such that we have exclusive ownership of the free list. And the reason we do this is because um, we don't want to protect this with a lock. Even though we could, because it would be only on a single core, uh, we could... Um, I don't know. I feel like this would be cheaper than a lock, but it's actually really close. It's really close. So, maybe we do just put this in, in a locked structure. So... 
we can do it without locking it by swapping it out with a null pointer and then we have access to it and now we can use the free list ourselves we can insert to it and we can uh, we can pop entries from it and we can push entries to it however if we get interrupted uh, if we get an interrupt at this stage and the interrupt does an allocation at that stage, the interrupt is actually not going to have access to the free list because we're going to null it out. And that will make it appear as if the free list is empty. And then the interrupt will actually go to perform the allocations. That being said, um, we actually would need to block interrupts for this allocation because we're going to have lock. Basically, anywhere we acquire locks, I mean, we can probably just make a rule that interrupts cannot acquire a lock. And I think that's going to be the play. Um, VHDL is an abomination. Yeah, I don't like uh, VHDL. Um, let's see. This gives us exclusive ownership of the free list. That's good. Uh, and this is fine because an allocation, we're not going to be able to fizz alloc inside of a, inside of an interrupt handler yet. We will probably add support for that and then we'll have to add some gating around when we can do that potentially. Okay, so we now have a free list, which is a mutable reference of U sizes, and we exclusively own this free list. So we can say if free list is core pointer null mute, um, if it's not null mute, and then this uh, could not satisfy allocation from free list, allocate directly from the physical memory pool. Okay. So that way, this will do an early return if we do an allocation, and then this fall through. So the free list, we get access to the free list. We replace it with null, which means if this happened on two core, if two threads somehow using the same core structure, uh, one of them would get an empty free list, and then it wouldn't pass this, and it would go directly to here, where it would have to get the lock and, and do all of that fancy stuff. Um, actually, really neat, to be honest. And... Yeah. Okay. Expected use size found a pointer. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a mutable pointer to a mutable pointer of u sizes, technically. So now we can do, uh, we can grab a page. So um, uh, let's see, free list is not empty. So this is gonna be next free is equal to DREF, um, or we can say co uh, core pointer read free list. So this is, uh, free list is not empty, uh, allocate from it. This is going to, um, in this case, um, Yeah, we might actually have to put a lock around that, and I think that will make this a little bit cleaner. I said this is someone that got paid to write the system verilog. System system verilog is a bit better, but far from ideal. Interesting. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna put this in a lock, a lock cell. On a single on a single core, lock cells will actually be pretty cheap. So we'll pull in 
lock cell. So we're gonna in the lock cell. Wow. We haven't used lock cell yet. Okay. Atomic pointer. Yep, we're not using that. This is now just a lock cell. The lock cells are just so cheap. On a single core, since this is a core local thing, locks are so cheap that we might as well use them because it just means we don't play silly games with trying to optimize everything perfectly. Um, it's just it's just the safer bet. So this will be a lock cell new. And this will contain a pointer to a U size. In this case, we'll say core pointer mute uh, null mute. So a null pointer. And honestly, we can have this contain. Eh, we'll have it use pointers. Uh, 42 swap here. Yep. So here we're going to get the free list, and we're going to do this by doing um, core free pages dot lock. So now we have exclusive access to the free list, and we can say if the free list is not null mute, and here we'll say let free list is equal to immutable reference of free list. Um, I guess here we actually want to deref it. That'll give us the contained value. Yeah. So then here, we're going to read that pointer. And this is going to give us a, a u size. So this is going to be um, get the next entry in the free list. We're going to read that entry. Then we're going to. Um, Free list, uh, dear free list is equal to next free as mute u size. Uh, put the uh, next part of next part of the free list back up for use. So basically, we're going to get exclusive access to the free list. If it's null, then the free list is empty. If it is not null, then we're going to read the free list to get the pointer at the start of, so this free list contains pages, right? If it's null, it, it's empty. Otherwise, if there are pages in it, the pages will have, at the first eight bytes of the page, it will have a pointer to the next free, um, the next free page. And this allows us to use that metadata so we don't actually have to use a vector or a dynamically sized type because this is our allocator. We can't, we can't use our allocator in our allocator. So it's required that we kind of bootstrap like this. So in this case, we're going to do core pointer read of the free list. That'll get us the next free entry in the free list. And then we're going to convert that and we're going to put that back in the free list. So we've basically taken out, um, we're going to say, we'll say this is head. It's a linked list, is what it is. Uh, unsafe core pointer read um, free. Uh, actually, head is literally just free list. Uh, gets the head of the free list. Get the next entry in the free list. We'll do head. And then put the next part of the free list back up for use. So we basically pop off the first page from this free list. And we do it uh, protected by locks. OK. Sweet. Now, this is a physical address that we just got. Um, and I might annotate this a little bit. This contains a mute fizz adder. And the address itself is a fizz adder. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that. Uh, and we'll say. Uh, the address of the next free uh, physical page. Um, the address of the first free physical page. The uh, 
free list is linked uh, is a single singly single li sing, singly yeah linked list uh, with pointers to the next page with uh, the physical address of the next page at offset zero in the free pages. Uh, once a zero physical address is encountered, the free list is considered empty. Uh, the free list is considered um, the free list terminates. This means we cannot have uh, physical address zero in our free list, but the bootloader doesn't allow use of the first one megabyte of memory anyways, so this will never be an issue. Singularly? Yeah, that's probably the play. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it like that just because it's like a little goofy. I I sometimes like leaving mistakes and the way that I write things because it makes the text more human. Uh, so if the free list is not equal to fizz adder zero, sweet. Then we will uh, get the head of the free list. That'll give us the physical address. I like strongly typing when I'm doing dereferences, just so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. At this stage, we actually have to read the physical memory. And to do this, we're going to add a function. We're going to add two functions to mm. Pub fn, pub unsafe fn, read fizz. This is going to take a t that is sized and um, we're going to take a physical address is adder and we're going to return a t and we're just going to do a core pointer read patter.0 plus the kernel base um as mute t and there we go so now we have a way of reading physical memory um i'm actually gonna bounds check that ever so slightly, uh, read a physical address containing a type T. This just um, handles the windowing, windowing and performs a core pointer read. Um, this may return none only if the physical address is outside of the window, um, is outside of the window. Okay, so let's, we'll compute this end address like we did here. So we're gonna take the physical address, we're gonna check add with uh, that, and we're gonna say if the end is greater than or equal to the, um, if it's greater than or equal to the kernel, uh, fizz window size, return none, it's out of bounds, great. And then that'll fail if there's uh, overflows on these fields, which is good. So we take a physical address, we add the size. Now the size is a standard, uh, or a core uh, mem size of t. So we're gonna get the size of that type, uh, and then here we'll do a checked sub, because technically that could underflow. So we'll say uh, checked sub one, checked add. So we're gonna take the size of the type, we're gonna subtract one, and if we fail to return one, that will happen for zero size types. Uh, check sub one, that'd fail, and then we add that to the physical address, that would fail if we overflow, which is pretty much impossible. Uh, and the compiler can prove that, so you don't have to worry about it. Then if the end address is outside of the physical window size, then we return none. Otherwise, we add the base to the physical address, we convert it to a pointer of mute t, and we read it. Done. 
And we're going to do the same thing. Uh, write to a physical address containing the type T. In this case, this can actually be a, a size type because we're going to have a reference to, um, we're going to have the type itself. So we can do a size of val, and here we can give it a val here. And now we can do as mute t, and this will be a write of val. And this can return an option if it fails. Uh, and the write fails. OK, this just handles winnowing and performs a core pointer write. So this will be write fizz. We take a physical address and a value. We bound check that value. We say that it can be sized, because that's true. Uh, we're going to do a size of val, which will get the dynamic size of that type. Then we will subtract 1 from that. We will add that to this to get the end. If it's above the window size, we have a problem. Otherwise, we'll cast it and we'll write to it. Um, oh, write requires sized. So whatever, we'll just do this. Uh, size of t. Oops. Um, size of t. t is t sized in this case. Um, and then sum. Beautiful. OK, 87 here. Uh, this is core pointer. Uh, this is actually a, a fizz. Adder 0. And I'm guessing we don't have fizz adder yet. Uh, T. Let's see what's going on here. T. Oh, this is a sum. <laughs> Trying to convince us we're human. Oh, no, you're on to me. You caught me. Oh, we can't do comparisons of fizz adders. Uh, that's interesting. We'll add partial EQ, EQ, partial ORD, and ORD. Partial EQ, EQ, partial ORD, and ORD. Bam. OK, that's looking pretty damn close. Uh, 78. So this is not going to be a core pointer read. This is going to be a read fizz. And we're going to read from that physical. Uh, a U size. Actually, the type is just magically done for us. God, this is fucking cool. Um, so this is going to read a fizz adder outside of there. Haha! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Templates, man! Fuck yeah! Lock the free list. If the head of the free list is uh, empty, then we don't do this. If it is not empty, then we get the head. We read the head as a physical address to get the next free entry. We put that up on the list. And then at this point, we can literally return head, sum head. Uh, we allocated from the free list. And there we go. We return out that physical address. <laughs> that fucking simple. And this code should work because we're not using it yet. There's nothing ever gets put onto the free list, so this should boot, and we should have no issues. Beautiful. Um, so here, we're actually going to get head here. We'll do this, and then we can say if the head, if the head is 0, else free list is not empty, uh, allocate from it, get the next entry, put the free list. OK, then here. We say free list was empty, empty, but we still wanted a 4096 byte uh, allocation. Oops, we're actually going to do mute head. Um, uh, OK, so check if the free list is empty. If the free list is empty, then uh, we're actually going to do a bulk allocation. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to allocate. Um, we're going to uh, allocate memory in bulk, uh, populating the free list. And this will do this. So we're going to allocate a meg. And that is how many pages? Uh, 1024 squared divided by 4,096. Yeah, so if the free list is empty, we will allocate one meg in one expensive operation. And then we'll construct this free list. So um, uh, let bulk is equal to this. So allocate uh, memory in bulk. And now we need to make the free list out of these allocations. Um, so we're going to construct a free list. So uh, for physical address in bulk.0 to bulk. And here we'll just do like const bulk uh, free list populate size. We'll say um, this is a u64 1024 uh, squared. So this is the size. And that way, we can use this constant. Oops. OK. So we're going to bulk allocate. So this is the um, number of bytes to allocate if the uh, page free list is empty. This, uh, this allows pre-allocating uh, from the expensive range set operations. OK, so we're going to allocate. We're going to go through each physical address in bulk to the bulk plus the populate size. We're going to step by 4,096. So this is, uh, yikes. Uh, we'll just say bulk size, I think, here. Say bulk size. Just don't need a name that long. Especially since it's uh, locally scoped. So say bulk size. Uh, go through every physical page we just allocated and link them together. And in this, we will do patter dot. Um, there are people entering the workforce today that don't remember a time, do not remember a time when uh, when everyone had mobile phones. When no one had mobile phones? Like their whole life they've had, everyone's had mobile phones. Um, so here we'll do a write fizz to physical address, a physical address plus 4096. And here we're going to do bulk size minus 4K. Bam. So go through every physical page we just allocated, except for the last one, and link them to the next page. So um, here we're going to assert uh, bulk size, assert bulk size mod 4096 is um, 0 and bulk size divided by 4096 is greater than 0. Uh, invalid bulk size must be uh, 4 kilobyte aligned and non-zero. OK, uh, this assertion is constant. Since that's a const, this assertion is constant. So it just won't exist in the code because it can prove that this is not the case. Um, actually, there's like const asserts, aren't there? Compile assert. Compile error. Yeah, not quite. Anyways, that would panic very early on. So if assert that it's mod uh, 4K and it has, and it's greater than zero is actually fine here. So it has to be mod 4K and greater than zero. So at this stage, we know that we can take this physical address. We can add the bulk size, because we've got a valid allocation from it. We can subtract 4K, because it's at least 4K. Um, ooh, if we had bulk size be 4K, this would be an empty range, a 4, 0 to 0. 
And I think Rust won't iterate that. So we'll do a an inclusive range. There's a static assert trait. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't use crates here. Um, so this is go through every single page from, so bulk plus the bulk size, which if it's 4K, which is the minimum, we'll subtract 4K, it would be bulk to bulk. It's an inclusive range, which would cause this to get called once, in which case we're going to add, ooh, no, we actually want that. Um, I actually might go this way. I think I'm going to go this way. Um, and the reason for this is I will write, uh, each one will link backwards. And that means at the end, I can just do this. Bulk, uh, bulk patter. Uh, I can write zero. This is uh, terminate the uh, free list. So how's this going to work? Uh, we allocate, let's say we allocate 4K. If we allocate 4K for bulk size, this uh, bulk plus 4K to this, this won't iterate. So this will never execute. But then we'll write a zero to there. Perfect. That is valid. OK, if we had 8K, we would come into here. We would go through the next page. That page would link to us. Um, yeah, that, that would link back a page. Um, and then the free list actually starts. Uh, it doesn't matter what direction we go. Um, let's say bulk size minus 4,096. And then we'll do this. And then the, the free list starts on the first one. We terminate the free list by writing to the last entry, which will be at bulk size minus 4,096. Terminate the free list uh, by writing a zero to the um, next pointer, next pointer of the uh, final entry. Okay, so none of this shit's gonna work because we gotta mark this stuff as patter. Let patter is equal to fizz adder patter. Um, and this, we can't do this add, so we gotta do this, and we'll do uh, fizz adder. And this is fine, so this will go to the last page and write a zero to it, and then these all link each other up. Perfect, 93. Uh, we're going to write a U64 to that location. Actually, we'll fizz adder this. Fuck it. Why not? We'll write a physical address to the next. And then right here, we'll write fizz, uh, fizz adder zero. Okay. And these are a little unsafe. Just a wee bit. Turns out writing the physical memory is unsafe. It's kind of bullshit. Uh, and we'll put question marks on here to make sure that those writes actually succeed. Perfect. So at this stage, we will actually make that free list entry. And then here, uh, this should panic, I think. Out of memory. Perfect. Um, that's because we don't set up the head. Uh... We actually, yeah, what we want to do is the head is equal to bulk. Um, set up the, uh, reassign the head of the free list. This is now the complete free list. Damn, just barely fit. Okay, this is now the complete free list. We're going to assign bulk to head. Head we marked mutable. At this point, it was uh, zero. Here, it's not zero anymore because we just allocated. Um, and now this will read the next pointer and put it back on the free list and then we'll return out head and this should not work. Okay, that is slower? Really? Damn it. 
Have you heard of Temple OS? Oh man, Temple OS is quite the thing. Okay. Um, how did that get so much slower? Is it that lock? Is the lock that slow? Wow. If, wow. Maybe that lock is really bad. I thought that lock was gonna be relatively cheap. Wow. Um. Yikes. I can't imagine this stuff really slowed it down. I'm gonna set the bulk size to 4K, which is valid. We're gonna see what this does. This should be like, mm. Unless the free list is like getting fucked. Uh, print pulled X from free list, uh, head this, uh, and we're going to temporarily do this print Updated free list. Uh, we'll say bulk. See, we're gonna see how often we do this. We should only have to do this 8,000 times. How spaced are those? Oh, we set the we set it to 4K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's do 100. Uh, let's do a gig, which is stupid, but let's do it. Okay. Um, I think that indicates that something is wrong. Well. Due to that bulk size, we're actually not allowing us to try and grab scraps uh, since it's so bulk. So let's do this. Um, if this bulk size fails, we want to actually just return. We want to try an allocation. So if let's, if bulk is none uh, failed to do bulk allocation simply return the um, simply uh, or just attempt a normal uh, allocation okay and then here we're gonna do it for the size online similar to it's just this code here Boop. And then this, we can just return this straight out. Uh, lay out a line. Yeah, we'll do this. Um, just attempt a normal allocation. Uh, we've given given up on the free list. Uh, we've given up on bulk operations. Okay. So this means that if we can't do a bulk operation, we will, uh, here, let bulk is equal to bulk dot unwrap. At that point, it's been filled in. Uh, 
So default to doing a small size allocation. So we'll allocate gig, 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 gig in bulk, and then we'll run out of memory, uh, and then we'll just go to the, we'll sp split up, and we'll try and find any physical memory that can satisfy the request. So this allocation now succeeds. I'm just so surprised in how slow that is. Just solved a web security challenge involving some PHP code. Awesome. Hell yeah. Why is that so slow? Is it literally the locks? All right, so we can check if it's the locks. Um, we can see if we're losing the perf due to the locks. Uh, it's a relatively easy operation. Uh, we just uh, get rid of the spin lock and uh, we get rid of the increment here and we've gotten rid of the locks. So. Well, that, that, that just isn't right. Um, let's, uh, um, I might need to guarantee that this uh, these writes are occurring. It's one write per 4K page, yeah. How is that not causing the allocation? How are the RDTSCs are get? Um, that's volatile Intel. That should not be getting reordered. And we got a memory. Fence. It took 19 cycles. Something's getting optimized out here. Um, I'll do this to make sure that gets realized. There we go. Oh, thank fucking God, it's still slow. Oh, thank God. So it's not the locks. Oh, oh, I was sweating. Um. It was optimizing that out with the locks. So let's put the let's put the locks back in. So here it is with the locks. Where is the fucking slowdown? Yeah, we lose like a a smidge. Actually, we lose like a decent amount. Are we losing like No, no, it's below the noise floor. Okay. So And then let's try this. Maybe it was getting optimized in some way. Dude, how is that so much faster? How is that so much faster? Um, okay, let's go to 4K. Yeah, 
this should be effectively the same. Um, oh, and this. Like, this should be effectively the same. The only difference is we're not creating this free list. Wow. Wow. Um, okay. So, I'm gonna do this bulk, and I'm gonna return some bulk. Or, I'm just gonna return... Yeah. At this stage, I'll return some bulk. This will bypass all the free list updating. We'll still, like, check the free list, but it'll always be null. And we'll go through here, and we'll return this allocation. So, this is gonna still acquire the lock and release it. Okay. So, that's fast. Um, okay, so we can just move this to figure out where the slowness is. So at this stage, we still haven't set up the free list. So we haven't written to that free list. So let's do this. Ooh. So something in here is hurting us. It's so like, this is fast. I think it's these iterators. Let's go here. Uh, actually, that one was fast. What? And then after this is where it gets slow? Or is it that head equals? Why is this one so... This one... This must, like, fundamentally change the shape of optimizations or something. This throws something off. If I don't do this and I keep bulk in the same location... Wow, that is uh, a little weird. What? 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 And I'm gonna do this. Um, uh, push. Uh, ASFD to push. Just gonna initialize everything outside. And we don't want to print it. We'll just print to like eight or something. Uh, and ref that. Okay. Writing it takes a long time. But this is just the time of allocating it. Um, okay. So commenting this out fixes the perf. Oh. Dude, that makes no sense. The code gen's just getting destroyed. The second... Because it shouldn't. Why isn't 8 gig uh, right taking that long? Because it's doing a byte at a time and it's doing a bounce check every time. It's not a bulk uh, right.
Oh, that's bootloader. Uh, bootloader.exe. Oops, uh, kernel.exe, uh, vim dash, and we'll say mintel so we can have a readable assembly language. And we're going to take a look at whatever this function is called, alloc uh, fizz. Well, it puts it right there for me. That's a call to it. Okay, yep, <laughs> it's literally the first thing in the program. What if you move the final right before the iterator? Sure, let's try it. I think I think it's some some inlining optimization is like just on the cusp of working. Um, and this we don't need to do the full capacity. Okay, we'll just do this. That's still slow. Weird. Weird. Oh, I guess this loop's doing nothing. That makes sense. This loop is literally doing nothing, right? In the 4K case, that makes sense. So if we count that out, that won't change anything. Uh, the, the, the problem is actually the bounds check on the, this, this is the issue. Having this be failable is the issue. Um, this will fix it. Um, did that not? Oh, it, that I think needed to be in line. N no, what the fuck? Oh, we marked the wrong one. Okay, this one. Whew. Let's see, this might fix it. Really? Um, wow. It, it almost feels like the physical memory map is uncached. That would make no sense, but it does feel like caching is like not happening on the physical memory map. What are we doing? We're doing a write fizz. And if we get rid of this, we don't have perf problems, correct? Correct. And putting this back. Okay. So here we go. Uh, a dot text. Hopefully we're making a mistake, but I'm afraid that's not the case. Uh, B dot text. Uh, vim a dot text. Split B dot text. That's map, okay, uh, alloc fizz. Here we go. Here's alloc fizz on that. Okay, um, we get access to these, lock like xad. So we're doing the same thing in both so far. Uh, there's our pause. Here's our range set allocate. 
doing that, range set, allocate in both. I'm gonna move this to another screen so I can read it a little bit better. Uh, let's see, what all do I have open? This we can discard. Okay. So there's pause, jump, lock, X, add. So let's compare these. Okay. Looks identical, jump equal, compare R9. Oh, these are like literally the same to the byte, but they should differ. Okay, why are those not differing? Did we not build it? This should be the slow one. That's not slow, why is that not slow? Oh, this was commented out. Okay, that goes to B, spb.txt. So B is the slow one, which is on top. Alec fizz. Okay, here we hop into it. Here we got cafe. Let's see what it's doing here. Here's where it grabs the lock. Um, let's see how they line up here. So this is 1500, 1510. So they're off by 10 hex. So let's see where they start to differ. Okay, they've already differed by this phase. Range set allocate. Here's range set allocate. This is at 6.4, this is at 54. So, um, so far these are identical. Um... Then we test racks, RDX one, move, test, jump equal, XOR, still the same. Ninety, still the same. This is the uh, uh, fallback allocation here. This 1,000, 1,000 allocation uh, lines up. Uh, jump zero, that's gonna be the return error. Okay, here's cafe. Okay, at CA, so here we wanna see DA. Uh, so here we have the jump to the end, and then this is where it actually goes to execute. And in our case, we're grabbing cafe, and we're writing to Racks plus RDX, and then we're jumping. So th this is where we terminate the free list, right? We're writing zero to the free list. In this case, we're about to return out. So then we jump to uh, 15 F6. 15 F6 is the return path. Uh, RSI 8, EAX 1, RSI racks, lock add to release the lock. Dude, they're literally the same. They're the same except for this one does a write to the memory and a jump. So these three instructions are the only thing that change. The jump is like half a cycle. This move should not be that expensive. Really? Perhaps it's a QMU thing? That actually could be, they could be emulating the physical rights. Nah, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't. They should be using nested paging. I'm gonna change the topology a little bit. Okay. Okay, force off, power on. Took that to allocate. Was that first run fast? 
Okay, that's all over the place. Unless it's just literally due to TLB thrashing where we're polluting the TLB, but that shouldn't be the case because we're, regardless, regardless of what we're doing with the page, we're writing to it. I guess, yeah, this is causing us to write to the pages before we, this is causing us to write to the pages, whereas the other one allows us to use completely uninitialized pages. So, but I feel like that makes no sense. We're, we're only allocating eight gigs. So this is saying that per page, this will give me a cycles per page. Fuck off. Oh yeah, we had no way to copy pasta here or something. 880 cycles per page. That makes no sense. That's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And if we don't write to that fizz, our perf all magically comes back. This is it emulating the memory? No, that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, what's this one? Divided by this. 129 cycles per page. That sounds pretty reasonable. Still high, but reasonable. Why does it get eight times slower when I perform one right? I don't think that one right would in, in That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I'm going to write to the same location every time. I'm going to write to zero. This will potentially rule out a caching issue. Okay, that had almost no cost. Oh, you know what? It's because it's the first, it's because it's the first allocation. That's why. That's totally what it, that's entirely what it is. Yeah, yep, yep. So, basically, the, um, the virtual machine, uh, the VM is not allocating the memory, and we're touching it for the first time. Uh, without touching the memory, we actually, the virtual machine never actually has to, um, allocate those pages. So, when we're not writing to this memory, the VM literally just has that virtual memory not mapped, or the physical memory not mapped in yet, because it hasn't, when you make a VM, there's no reason to page in physical memory until it's used. And that's what's happening. This is the first allocation. So we have to write a free, 
We're going to implement free. Uh, that'll allow us to touch all of physical memory. In fact, let's just do that. Um, let's... Uh, we might have to write to all physical memory. Th this is totally fine. Everything we did here is totally fine. Uh, yeah, it's much faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I'll be back in a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some wine. That was embarrassing. Okay, um... <sighs> what a mistake. What a mistake. Okay, uh, let's do, um... Okay, uh... That's page table, bootloader, source main, mm. Debugging, 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 debugging. Um, this is probably the best version here. Uh, free list. Uh, get the free list. Get the head. If the head is empty, here's our bulk size. We'll do a meg. Oops. We'll do a meg. Uh, assert those. We're going to allocate the bulk. If the bulk allocation failed, then we'll go back to the default and try and fulfill from anything. Uh, otherwise, we're going to uh, touch everything to link everything together. We're then going to uh, terminate the list. We then set up the head, and then that's going to cause us to use that as the free list. Okay, great. Okay, this will still be slow. Wine sounds good. Drinking some Heineken at the moment. I don't think I've ever had a Heineken. What type of beer is a Heineken? Seven Bells Sour Mountain Goat? I have no idea what those are. Oh, I'm guessing those are beers. Unless you're talking about a whiskey sour. I fucking... Dude, whiskey sours to me are my kryptonite. I feel like every time I have whiskey sours, I get smashed. Like, vodka tonic is my go-to, but I almost never get drunk off of vodka tonics or wine. But I get crushed if I have, like, whiskey sours. I maybe drink it too fast. I, I have no idea. I just love the whiskey sour, man. Oh, nice. Australian uh, beers. I'm not a beer person, so I, I just don't know beers in general. I don't know if they're popular here at all. They might just be Aussie only. No idea. Beers are weird like that. So I grew up in Wisconsin, and we had, uh, we had a new Glarus brewery, and they made, like, a spotted cow. And it was a really good beer, and they didn't ship out of state. Like, intentionally, they wanted to keep small. Um, pretty interesting. So it's weird because, like, I think it would be a really popular beer if they let it out of the state. 
but nope. Gin and watermelon soda. Ooh, that actually sounds pretty, pretty damn good. With the right gin. A lot of gins taste terrible. I, I realized that growing up that a lot of gins are not good. <laughs> New Glarus is pretty good. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> it, it, it's not like the most amazing thing ever, but it's, it's really good for the uh, production run and the consistency. Right, like people always say, oh, I like this microbrewery beer more. Yeah, when it's available for three months and it's very inconsistent. <laughs> it's very hard to have a consistently good beer. Okay, so we have to implement free. And unfortunately, free is um, not trivial. <laughs> London Beef Eater Gin, I can drink straight. I don't know if I've had beef. I've probably had beef eater because that's typically what they'll use at like a, a higher end uh, bar. Gin is poison. <laughs> Heineken is the third largest beer brand. Yeah, I know Heineken. Not too good. I mean, what what are the biggest ones? Is it like Bud followed by, let's see. Corona's pretty damn popular. Yeah. I I feel like I've like almost never seen someone drink Budweiser. People drink Bud Light, but almost no one drinks Budweiser. <laughs> Except for my my uncle. My uncle would crush Budweiser, man. <laughs> He always said that it stands for uh, because you deserve uh, what everyone should enjoy regularly. And I don't know if he fucking made that up or if it was a temporary ad campaign that they used in the 90s or some shit. But I remember him like teaching me that when I was like 10. <laughs> and I will never forget it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to implement a uh, free fizz on physical memory because uh, we're going to... We're gonna add the ability, um, fn free fizz, uh, self, uh, fizz, fizz adder, and then, uh, size. Um, I think that's gonna be a U64 here, and this is going to be, um, request, uh, used when, uh, so this is going to take a physical address and then the size of it, and then it will free it. And then for us, we'll basically, if it's 4K aligned and it's 4K bytes, then we will free it to our free list. Otherwise, we'll put it back into the um, global pool. Top brands. Number one, snow? I've never even heard of it. Budweiser, yep. Tsing Tao. Wow, so I guess Bud Light is separate from Budweiser. So Budweiser plus Bud Light is, is pretty much up there. Skoll, Heineken, Harbin. Is beer really popular in like China or Asia? I guess beer is kind of popular everywhere, isn't it? I don't know why I'm surprised by that fact, but I feel like I've never... I feel like that's something I've never really seen. <laughs> Love Sing Tao, great summer beer. Okay. Lots of breweries in Toronto. Yeah, of course, hell yeah. Uh, I need to, uh, I'm gonna put on yeah, we're just gonna put this whole album on because it's fucking fantastic. Okay. I've been jamming to Nightwish recently. Century Child is an amazing, amazing album. Unreal how good it is. Okay. So we're gonna do almost all the work in the page table. This is going to complain. Yep. Uh, there's no trait for that. Um, 
So this is going to be, yep, and that Alex fizz, and then we translate, and then we write zero to it. Perfect. OK. So this is going to be uh, free uh, physical memory. And this will be uh, free fizz. Did I call it free fizz? I think I did. Yeah. And this will have a mute self. Yeah, mute. I'll take a mutable reference to self. This will take a. Um, physical address and a size. Uh, free physical memory. Okay. And I have to implement that on the bootloader's MM as well. And this should be relatively easy. Um, God, this fucking album, man. FN free fizz uh, mute self. Uh, adder fizz adder size u64 and here we'll do self at zero dot free um, what is our free syntax oh we insert the range oh yeah inserts range starts end adder zero dot Checked add uh, Yeah, here we're gonna say if size is less than zero, less than or equal to zero return. Um and then if adder dot zero dot uh here we'll do this. Um if let sum end is equal to Adder dot zero dot checked add size dot checked sub zero uh, how do I do this checked add how do I actually express this? So I can't use the check mark syntax or the question mark syntax here. Check sub. Oh, I have to go the other way. If I do this, uh, size check sub one and then uh, x x dot checked add adder dot zero else um, so this is basically if the end doesn't create an overflow condition then this happens so checked one and then this that'll flat map it and then that should work god we're so fucking smart uh, and then we're gonna add to the free uh, physical memory, we're going to insert a range starting at address dot zero to end. So it takes size minus one. If that's none, we do nothing. Uh, and then we add the address, and then that's the end. And I think I've been saying this just for uh, clarity. Okay. Nice. So that'll put the memory back up. Uh, in the free list. So now we have access to a free routine inside of our um, page table implementation. So, oh, this wine, man. It's the same wine from yesterday. I still have half the bottle. I don't think there will be much left uh, soon, though. Okay, so this is mapping uh, physical memory. But we also want to be able to free memory. So we're going to do pub fn free, uh, pub unsafe fn. Adding memory is safe. Uh, freeing memory is not safe because we don't want people to arbitrarily free stuff. You can, you can consume and waste memory, uh, but I don't want you to arbitrarily be able to free memory. So this will take a mute, uh, mutable reference to self. We're going to take a fizzmem, 
mute p. This is going to be a, a p, which is implements the fizzmem trait that allows us to free things. And we'll take a virtual address. And so we're going to free at this virtual address for size bytes, which is a u64 uh, option here. So uh, what this is going to do is free the uh, uh, virtual memory region indicated by virtual address and size. Um, we might just do another page table walk here. Um, uh, all pages used to back the allocation will be freed, and any intermediate page tables which no longer contain any mappings will mappings will be unlinked from the table and also freed. So this means that we should be able to create a page table, add a bunch of mappings, and free the whole fucking thing. Um, so let's see. Um, I think we need to re-implement this logic, sadly. Um, I might implement translate. I think that's going to be the play, where it will take an address and it will give a pointer to the uh, page table entry. Yeah, but we need to see each of the levels. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna implement uh, translate uh, pub fn pub unsafe fn translate. Actually, this can be safe. Um, and we're gonna do. Uh, um. We're going to have, I actually really want this function for my own CPU research stuff. Uh, this will take a fizzmem mute p. Technically, I don't think this fizzmem needs to be mute in this case, but we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to call this unsafe for now. We'll relax it if we think we can. This is going to take a uh, vert, uh, vert adder, and that's it. Oh, wow, my large paging stuff is not going to work right now because I don't set the uh, large page bit. <sighs> okay. So um, this is going to translate the page, and I think this is going to return a structure. Um, um, I think what I want to return is I want to make a struct that's going to look like this uh, mapping. And this is going to have um, last option. I don't know. I, it's hard to say which direction I want to go. Uh, I can have multiple references. So this, I'm going to have, uh, this is going to be the uh, PML4. And this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a pointer to the entry in the PML4. We are going to have the, uh, this is the top level. So the PML4 is this. This is the PML4. This is the um, uh, P uh, PML4. This is the PDP. This is the PD. And this is the PT. 
So this is the uh, uh, page uh, PML4, I forget, page modif, it's not page modification list. I don't know, it's something, uh, the fourth level of the page table. The PDP is the page directory pointers. The PD is the page directory, and the PT is the page table. <laughs> so this is the PML4E, this is the PDPE, this is the PDE, this is the PTE. It's fucking stupid. Don't, don't at me. Uh, PDPE, PDE, PTE. Okay, and I think we're gonna do this. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> well, you know what? Go blame Intel. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna have an enum mapping uh, state state uh, present const u64 uh, free um, and I think I'm gonna do one more. So we're gonna have this implementation support uh, large pages. And if we have large pages, so I think these are actually going to be um, states. And basically, when you perform a translation, it will tell you, it, it has to walk this list, so it's good to save off all this information. It has to read all this stuff, might as well save it. So it will save off, if the entry is present, um... Now the question is, do I want the present to reflect that the entry is present? Or that the a pointer to the entry exists? And I think I'm gonna have that. I think present is going to mean um So we translate memory and then we would store even if it's zero. So let's say we translate something and there's uh it's not mapped at all. And it is done at this level. So let's theorize. Um, if we translate completely unmapped, like at all levels, um, what I would like for this to do is this would have a present, uh, and this would be a mutable pointer to a zero, not null, but that's technically what that expresses. But basically, this would point, uh, point to the entry, which to populate it, would be filled in, if that makes sense. So basically that would point to the entry. Uh, so the PML4E will always exist. Um, and then this will have, this would be, uh, oops, uh, free, free, and then this would be free. Can I like a funny pick related to what you say? Sure, as long as it's not inappropriate. If it's not like, Porn or gore. Um, okay. So present isn't actually going to mean present. Um, we'll say entry. And this will be um, a pointer to the entry for uh, the... Uh, for this level in the page table. Um, it is possible that this is a valid, uh, it is possible that this, and in this case, do we want it to be a pointer? I'm gonna do a fizz adder here. Um, the physical, address of the page table entry. Uh, it is possible that the page is not mapped, and if so, this may... It is possible this page is not mapped, um, in which case the contents of the physical memory at this address 
are zero. Okay. This is a um, this is the physical address of the page table entry. Uh, okay, and then this is going to be uh, this is identical to entry, except this enum enum variant will only be used for the final level translation. Thus, this can be used to access the um, page table entry, which maps the final translation. Okay, and this is um, no page table entry occurs as the level above did not mention uh, the level above the entry at the prior level that had the above level was um, not present. So in the case of looking at a page which is not mapped at all, it would say um, entry and then a fizz adder to the entry location such that if we wanted to map that memory, we would have to fill this in with a new page table that we'd have to create because these are free and then we'd construct these. If we map something that is present and is a two megabyte page, we would have an entry, we would have an entry, and then we would have a final, and then this is the like the address of the entry. And then if you read that address, this address, and you'll have the um, page contents. Okay, so this allows us to express uh, the different levels of page tables here. Let me check out this image. The blame chain. <laughs> Fuck gravity. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> you're, il uh, you're using for illustrating the state of the mapping. Yeah. This will tell me everything about the state of the mapping. Yes. So this will allow me to see for any mapping, whether it's present, whether it's partially present, whether it's completely present, whether it's free, whether it's a, a large page, a, a 4K page, a one gig page, this will allow me to see every single time the shape of the table and it will basically do all the parsing and stuff for me. And it will allow me to like quickly look at uh, an existing uh, page, uh, table. Okay, I think this is the model that I'm gonna go with. So, um, this is going to be a, uh, the current, the state of a uh, page table mapping. The state of a page table mapping contains the information about every level of the translation, uh, also contains the information about uh, what um, also contains hint uh, information about whether the page is final. And in this case, we're actually going to have page, and this will be present, uh, or this will be um, option uh, fizz adder. So this will be the um, uh, that'll be the PML for E, and then this will be the um, actual address of the page if it is present. And this will allow us to decode anything. And this will be uh, the different states of page table entries. I don't know if I need final. I kind of do. Like final... It's kind of weird. Final allows me to not have to figure out if it's a large page or not, which I don't know. So yeah, I do think I need that. 
Otherwise, I would have to go through all of them and then read the memory. Yeah, so we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to pull up the Intel manual. And we're going to look at paging in 64-bit land, uh, which is here. And then four-level paging. And this shows the uh, page table shapes. And if you have... Uh, this is a PML4E. Here's the access bit. Dirty bit is at 7. Uh, these are the write through. These control caching and stuff. Page size. Uh, this is for setting the page size. So page size, PS is always 1, I'm pretty sure. So in this case, the format of a PDPTE, which maps a 1 gig page, if this bit is set to 1, that means it is a large page. If it's zero, that means this actually indicates a page table entry. Uh, dirty is only present on those. So this will show a PDPTE that references a page directory, in which case the page size must be zero, and the other bits don't matter except for accessed. So we're going to grab that was, uh, that was bit. We care about this, the page size. Um, con uh, pub const page size u64 is equal to one shift seven and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna add an assert here um if page type is not equal to page type uh page 4k then we're going to if uh if that's not 4k and the um raw and page uh, size is equal to zero. Um, return none. If we're requesting to map a large page and the page size bit is not set in the uh, page um, table entry, this is not a valid mapping. Okay, so if it's not 4K and the size is zero, or and this bit is not set, then it's not a valid large page mapping because all the large pages will have that bit set, which is a special indicator that allows the uh, page table walk to terminate, indicating that uh, we've gotten to the end. Okay. Now, during the traversal, we also want that information. So we're going to rewrite a lot of this code. Um, so this is going to return a mapping. And we'll do this. Yeah. OK. Let me ret is equal to um, mapping. And here we'll say uh, PML for E state is free. So by default, everything's not correct. P D E P T E. So this is uh, start off with an empty mapping, and then page is none. And this is just P T E. Okay, and then this will give a mapping, and this mapping will always be valid, actually. Um, We'll never have a chance of failure, I don't think. Ah, uh, we might. If it's like completely, if the virtual address is invalid, non-canonical. Okay. Boop. Okay, so that has information about those. Uh, mapping, okay, this. Okay. And we don't have uh, these. Uh, partial EQ, partial uh, EQ. So we'll implement equality operators for those. 199, free, uh, return none. Currently, we don't implement anything. We don't need return there, but that's fine. We'll come back to that in two seconds. This is the uh, PDPE. PDE and the PTE, 2 and 5, this is going to be sum. Okay, so we're going to perform a translation. The first thing that we're going to do is, uh, if the address is not canonical, 
We'll do this. Oh, uh... We'll just canonicalize the address. Um... Because we don't know the page size yet. If the, um... If the vatter.0, if that, uh, check that's the address is canonical. Um, and this will, I think that's the only failure case. Literally, this is probably going to be the only failure case, potentially. Uh, so then we're going to, I think we're going to hijack most of this code. This meme needs to be parodied with a uh, Rust programmer. Man, this language is great. <laughs> Fuck this language. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to do a page table walk. And map raw is going to use this. This is going to be like the, the holy grail of a mapping. I think. So this is going to be the only code that implements a page table walk, I think. Um, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to do this in an interesting way. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is going to be... Um, it's going to be the indices here. So this is, uh, okay. This is going to be a different way of doing paging than I've ever done before. Um, uh, page table walking than I've ever done before. So this is all going to be new. Um, and then we're going to have a page offset as well. Um, and the page offset is going to be the offset into the page. So this contains literally everything we need for a translation. Offset option U64. Uh, offset into a virtual, into the page, uh, given the page is present. Um, and this will actually allow us to reconstruct a virtual address. Uh, given the page is present, I might put that here. The physical address of the page um, and the offset into it. So the, the physical address of the base of the page and the offset into it. And that's a U64. Okay. 213 mapping, get rid of that. And then these can tab in by one character. Okay, if the address is not canonical, uh, 35 mapping is private, pub. Uh, okay. So, um, get the components of the address, and then we're going to get the page table base here, page table. Um, this is going to be get the address of the page table. I think that's a phys adder. Uh, phys adder. Oops. Table. Colon. It is a phys adder. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to, uh, we're going to decode the, uh, the entries. And I might cache the raw entry value, which could be interesting. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. So we're going to um, we're going to for index in indices fixed size. We're going to so ret is not a thing, and this is going to be the depth index in indices dot iter dot enumerate and then here we're gonna say uh, let's 
um, entry is equal to, uh, and we got to do that translate stuff. Here we go. So this will get the physical address of the page table entry. Um, page table pointer. Here we're going to take the index, multiply it by that, add it to the table. Uh, then we're going to translate that to get that. And then we're going to say, um, at this point, uh, fill in the um, fill in the pointer to this entry. So we have the physical address of the entry. So now what we can do is we can fill that in. So we can do match index, uh, match depth zero. On the zero depth, we are going to fill in the ret dot uh, pml for e, and we will set that equal to sum ptp uh, one two three, and this is the the PDPE, the PDE, and the PTE. Okay, so fill uh, fill in the address of the entry we are decoding. Okay, so we'll start off filling in the PML4E. We will then um, get a virtual address for this entry. We're going to get the entry, and we're going to do that by just derefing that at this stage, right? Uh, yeah, we're just going to core pointer read that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, core pointer read vad as mute u64. So that gets us the entry. And now what we can say is if the entry, so this returns right. If the, if the entry and page present is equal to 0, break. Uh, page is not present, break out. Okay. Uh, break out and stop the translation. Um, uh, check if this page is present. Pretty obvious. So if the present is zero, then we break out. So we only fill in the pointer to the entry, which contains the non-present entry. Uh, then what we're going to do is if the entry, if the entry and seven, uh, and it's not seven, uh, we're going to say page size is not equal to zero. If the page size bit is set. So I need to see page size is valid for all those. And the top level must be zero for page size. If the page size is equal to zero, if the depth is equal to zero, return none. And this is uh, page size bit is not valid, reserved zero, as zero for the p uh, for the PML for e. So check if this is the page mapping. If the page size is zero, or or the depth is three. So if the page size bit is set, or we're at the final level of the translation process. Then we are at the um, we're at the entry, and then let's see uh, table is equal to table equals this. Get the next level table. Okay, so table is this. Um, update the table to point to the next level. Update the table to point to the next level, and we mask that off and compute that. Okay, and that should be 52 bits, correct. Well, it's M, but we're going to say 52 bits for now, which is the minimum, I think. Thank you for the follows, everyone. Uh, if the page size is not equal to 0 or the depth is 3, so if check if this is the final page. Uh, check if this is the... Um, page mapping and not pointing to, not pointing to a table. 
Okay, let's see what that bit is defined as, bit 7, in the uh, 4 kilobyte page. 7 is the... Oh, is it 7? I think it is. 7. Yep, page size. That is the page PAT. Indirectly determines the memory type referenced by this memory, so that doesn't really matter. If depth is 3, then we don't care what this bit is. So if we erroneously did the or by this, and we'll just say this. Uh, if the depth is 3 or we're not at the final level, the page size bit is not valid, reserved as 0 for the PML4E, uh, which is true. Um, and I think I just want to return ret at this stage. Um, and I might, for the PMLE, uh, return out the partially walked table. Um, and we're going to say break here. Do, 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 do. Okay, 237. Expected state. Found this. Oh, yeah, it's not sum. It's a state. Uh, this is state entry. And I might actually get rid of the whole final concept, to be honest, because because um, we can actually, now that we're decoding this page, we don't really need that information anymore. If page is present, then the last option set is actually the last entry. And that's just as easy to parse. 190. State free. It's going to be none. We can implement default for this structure, but we're not going to. Okay. 218, depth, um, unreachable. Okay. So that's going to, if it's not present, we're going to break out. We've already recorded the entry. Here, if we're at the final page, if the depth is zero, then uh, it's not valid. So we want to stop. We don't want to say that this maps a page. Otherwise, at this point, we know that this maps a page. So we know that uh, at this point, uh, the page is valid, and um, the physical address of the page can be found in table. And let's take a look there for a large page. Um, so bit 12 can be used. That makes sense. Must be zero. Uh, so we'll do let table is equal, or let page patter is equal to table, uh, we'll say entry. At this point, the page is valid. So we can take the entry and then we can mask off. Uh, we can do table. And we want to mask it with the size for this level. And we don't actually know that yet. I need to um, um, how do I want to do this? If the depth is 0, uh, match depth. Uh, if we're at the once depth, the once depth, we have a table and not OXFFF. If we're at the, uh, it's actually this way. Um, that's valid. The once depth, yeah. So in this case, this is just going to be uh, two 
minus 1. This will be uh, 4096 minus 1. And this will be um, a gig minus 1. So this will be the page is valid. Um, mask off all bits that aren't part of the address. And we're actually going to get the page mask here. Let page mask is equal to match depth. Uh, and this is going to be one, which is uh, 1024 minus one. Uh, two, three, and then this is going to be a U64. Oops. Uh, two U64. Four U64. Unreachable. So, okay. Uh, this is going to be determine the mask for this page size based on the level that we translated. Uh, so we have one meg or one gig, two meg, 4k, and this will not with the page mask. In fact, all of these. So the page physical address is equal to the page table entry ended with the page mask inverted. And then page offset is equal to the um, virtual address. Uh, vatter.0 and page mask. The page is valid. Mask off all the bits that aren't part of the address. Uh, compute. And we can do this. The offset in the page for the virtual address. And now we have both of those. I think that's the last thing in here, right? Page? Yeah. So we'll do page. Uh, ret.page is equal to sum the page physical address and the page offset. That should work. Uh, okay. Um, let's add debug on this structure. Debug, clone, and copy on this. They're all just uh, basic values. And let's add debug on these two. Perfect. So now I'm going to do translation of an address. So I'm just going to do uh, let meet val, uh, let val is equal to OU8. I'm just going to put some shit on the stack. Um, and we're going to say um, print. We're going to pre-print debug using hex. Uh, let page table is equal to core page table dot lock. Let page table is equal to page table as mute unwrap because it's uh, the page table is optional. And then here we'll do a page table, uh, page table dot translate. And we're going to translate the, um, we need a PMEM here. We're going to translate the virtual address, uh, vert adder of the val as u size as u64 as const this as oh damn i was not paying attention to my tibia makers i got logged off one second um invite oops Okay, fixed that. Uh, let me see here. This is now as a U64. That's the virtual address. And then what else does this take? That's it. That's all it takes.
That makes sense. So that's all it should need. Okay, uh, that's gonna be like, whoa, uh, I don't know what that field is. Um, really? Oh, is that not pub? No, it is pub. Page table. Boot args. Oh, boot args. Okay, vert ad address, not in the scope. We're gonna just do use page table vert adder. Great, uh, 49. Cannot find a value pmem in this scope. Yeah, that's fine because we don't make it. Um, so pmem in this case is access to physical memory, but the way that we actually did that before, um, so we made this physical memory structure. I think I can actually use a dummy structure here where I can just say physical memory. And this should do the trick. So, and the reason for this is I can get access to physical memory without needing all these references. So it's just a marker trait and this can't find 86 allocate and that's fine. Um, that makes sense. Uh, to do this, we're gonna do let uh, fizz mem is equal to um, core boot args fizz mem dot lock let's mute fizz uh, let fizz mem is equal to fizz mem as mute unwrap uh, get access to physical memory and in this case this will now be uh, fizz mem same here Fizz mem, that lock will go out of scope. So we only need to get that lock if we don't have anything in the free list or we get to this stage. So now the lock will not be taken on physical memory. We'll, we will not have to get that lock, uh, uh, free memory, sorry. We won't have to get that lock unless we are populating the free list or we were unable to use the free list because it wasn't a 4k access and that means that now uh, physical memory in mm i can do let me pmem is equal to mm physical memory and i don't actually have to assign anything because everything in there is constant uh, and then that apparently is unsafe. I don't think this needs to be unsafe. Well, we're doing read fizz. Mm. Okay, so here's the mapping for a stack address. Uh, and we'll print the address that we're mapping. Holy fuck, did that work first try? So, oh my god, guys. <laughs> I think we just fucking slayed that. <laughs> God damn. Okay. So we request, what is the translation for this address? And this says the translation is you have a physical, uh, you have a, a page table entry here, which points to a page table entry here, which points to a page table entry here, which points to a page table entry page table entry here. This 38, this actually shows you the uh, permissions of that. And then this is the page address um, of the page. That actually seems fucked. No, because this is the address of the entry. Yeah, and then that's the physical address. And then this is the offset into that physical address. Fuck yeah. <sighs> I, th I think we just did that first try. Oh my god, guys. Unreal. It's not even midnight yet. Holy shit. <laughs> what have we done? What have we done here? Um... Refresh your uh, stream, uh, bad idea. Maybe shift uh, refresh or shift alt control or whatever it is to fully reset it. Um, 
Dude. Okay, uh, so, now, W, um, we should panic if we try to make a large page, but we can actually do that. We can try and make a large mapping right now, a thick mapping. Oh shit, does our, does our map routine, oops, does map allow us to do large pages? It does, oh my god. Page table dot map. We're gonna map some memory. We're gonna map using uh, mute fizz uh, pmem at vert adder ox leet uh, page type page one megabyte one meg uh, two meg pages, and we're gonna use size is uh, one byte. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, size one byte. Uh, read writable non-executable, and this will do, this will create a page. Now this should fail. Expect failed to map large page. And that should fail because this is not going to uh, set the page size bit on a 2 meg mapping because we didn't add that support. And I recognize this code looks like shit, but this is a test right now. So we're going to throw all of this code in the trash. So I don't care about the code quality here. Um, page type is private. Well, that's... Oh, uh, that's mm. Um, page table, page type. I know, I know it looks like shit. I know, I know. Okay, so this is gonna try and make a two meg mapping and this should fail. Nice, fail to map large page. Fantastic, um, and the reason that's failed is map is gonna call map init and map init is not going to set that bit. So we're gonna say, or, we're gonna or this with if, if the, what do we call it? The page type, if the page Type is not equal to page type uh, page 4k, then we're gonna or in the page size bit, otherwise zero. This should now allow us to map a one meg page. Fuck. Um, page size. Whoa. Oh yeah, that maps uh, allocate fizz page size. Interesting. Intriguing. Um, print starting map. I really should probably add some nice return codes from this shit. Cause I'm not actually gonna be able to debug this stuff. Uh, CPU halt. I'm gonna have to halt debug this because I don't have access to the screen in this code base. I could. No, because I don't have, yeah. Okay, so it gets there. Cool. Uh, that translate should succeed. That should succeed. Map raw. So we should halt, this should be fine. We should get the halt, we shouldn't get our print. Okay, we did. And this should fail. The first time we go to map that page, it's gonna fail. No, it doesn't, it's okay. Parlez-vous. So what's going on there? Uh, it was able to map that page. Oh, uh, this, is not, this is not aligned enough. So we're gonna say 3337. It wasn't aligned enough, yeah, no shit. We're getting there. Talking to yourself when you said it looks like shit. <laughs> Is there any other chat? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm talking to myself. Okay. Uh, okay, we just made a two meg mapping. Um, core pointer write volatile to this as mute U64. We're gonna write a five there. We're gonna make sure that we can write to that memory. Um, we should be able to. 
let's check this out. Okay, and yep, yeah, we were able to write to that memory. Wow! We made a 2-meg mapping, I think. So now we're going to translate that address. We're going to translate, um, uh, yeah, just this address. It's hard-coded. Okay, and this will give us the translation. We have a PML4E, a PDPE, a PDE. Ooh. That's not right. Okay, uh, well, we didn't get it right first try. Canonicalize the address. Get the indices. Get the table. Get the PTP. Set the PTP depending on the level that we currently are during translation. PML, PDPE, PDE, PTE. Uh, we're going to translate that. We're going to then read that entry. To get the entry, if it's not present, we break out. Then we get the table. If the page size is not zero, or um, what plugin lets you drag the Vim windows? It's just by default you can do that. Well, if you use uh, Vim or C example, I do have a my Vim. It's literally just uh, Vim or C. I do have the. Um, it's just the VimRC example that comes bundled with Vim with like a couple very basic options, but the mouse stuff by default is there with VimRC. Yeah, set mouse and it looks great. Yep. Yeah, I'm a very heavy mouse user. I think the mouse is an important instrument for uh, computer input. I recognize that like terminal people like to be all elite and shit and not use the mouse, but the mouse in many situations, is much faster than using keyboard commands. Like, being able to do this, this takes less time, I can guarantee you, than resizing that specific window, or memorizing all the windows, or using window tabs where you have to know a number to know which uh, window to pull up. It's just, it's just faster. It just is. <laughs> I've convinced many a people in my life uh, away from the uh, keyboard only to using a mouse. The mouse is very important, I think. Okay. We gotta figure out this bug. Now the question is, are we creating the page table entry incorrectly? And I think that's probably the case. I think this code is perfect. I can't really see where I'd have a bug here. Uh, so I think it's on the mapping side. So here we're gonna create all these things. If we are at the end, and if we're not at the end, and blah, 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 if we are at the end, and the page is not present, or we're updating the entry, if the page is not present, overwrite it. Otherwise, uh, create the new page table entry. Um, yeah, that's... Okay, so the way we can test this pretty quickly is we can just add more than 4K here. So we will write to this, and that's the next page. And this will crash if we map to 4K page. It'll just keep rebooting. Uh, and it didn't, which means that it is the translation that is failing. Okay, cool. Good to know. So we're going to canonicalize the address. We're going to get the indices of all the parts of the virtual address. We're going to then go through the depth. We're going to get the entry based on the index of here, based on the table. Uh, get the depth, PML for e PDPE, PDE, PTE. We're going to translate that. We're going to read that to get the entry. And let's take a look here. So these are the addresses. And that looks like that makes sense. This is this is definitely the page. So why are we why are we getting fucked here? Page size. So we're on a two meg page. Let's go check that out. One gig page, two meg page. Page size must 
must be set to 1. Otherwise, yep. Um, and this sets page size now. If it's not equal to 4K, then we set the page size bit. If depth is 3, or the page size bit is set on the entry. Okay, let's take a look at what the entries are. Print entry is x and ah fuck we can't print i forgot uh serial uh print yeah and i can't use yeah it's not in serial anymore it's in kernel yeah i have no way of printing in this stage so what i'm gonna actually do here is i'm gonna hack this temporarily where this will hold SPTP, it'll hold the entry instead. We'll be able to see what the entries are for these page tables. Um, uh, fizz adder. This is super hacky. Oops, fuck. And we had it too. There we go. So this will let me see the entries, the like raw entries for the page table. And yeah, this is uh, absolutely, this is the page. So, uh, 27, so this is the physical address of the page table, and then we have 27. The 2 indicates that the page has been accessed before, and the 7 indicates that it's uh, RWX. Um, yeah, this is RWX and user, so it's read, writable, present, and usable for users. Oh, I need to, let me get, uh, I gotta switch up my music now. Okay. So the problem is E3, right? This address, uh, bin, this, ooh, bin. Uh, yeah, we got a right-click copy for some reason. This has the seventh bit set, doesn't it? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh bit is set. So what's our stupid bug here? If the entry and page size is not equal to zero, if the depth is three, or the page size bit is set, which it is, then we set up all this stuff. I don't know how we're getting further than that. Assert depth not equal to three. Yeah, I think that's panicking. Assert that this is three. What? Oh, that was just taking its sweet time, I think. Assert that the depth is three. What is going on here? Can I not panic inside of a library? I should be able to. Let me see. I wonder if that's some... Yeah, I feel like that's panicking. I don't think there's a lock that I hold in a panic where it's deadlocking. But it shouldn't be going to this PTE stage. And I have no idea how it is. Oh, I don't break!
Here we go. Done. There we go. No PTE. This is the final. This is the page. This is the offset into the page. So if I translate, uh, okay, so I should be able to use one gig paging then. Let's try it. And here's a one gig page. Yep, and we were able to write to it. Okay, so that seems to work. Uh, I'll be right back. I got hit the head. Okay, so now that that translation stuff works, and I made an apple for myself. Oh my gosh, good apple. Um, what I would like to do is this translation is pretty bulletproof. Uh, store the page and offset. I kind of want this to be the core for all memory operations. Um, and I don't think this is unsafe. It's not. We're going to read arbitrary physical memory that's based on the table. But you can only create an invalid table if you use unsafe routines. So if you use safe routines, you will create a valid table every time, so it is safe. You made an apple? <laughs> when, <laughs> where will your magical powers end? I like slicing up my apples. I like eating apple slices instead of an, a whole apple. So that's what I mean by I made an, I, I prepared an apple. Son of a bitch. Question mark. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So I think translate is going to be the only thing that actually translates the page tables. I like peanut butter on the slices. Oh my god, peanut butter is so good on the slices. I never got into Nutella. I guess, I don't think my mom ever got it. So it's just something I never grew up with and like got into. What is everyone's favorite like fruits or apples or... I'm a sucker for mango and pineapple. I think mango is my, my top tier fruit, at least right now. And pineapple is like a close second, a very close second. Tangerines. Oh, tangerines are really good. Okay. Woo! I closed the wrong window. No, that's fine. We'll start closing windows. Um, we'll open up shared page table source. Okay. So I think we're going to change this, the mapping routine... I think we're going to change this to actually use the translate. And check this out. Yeah, we're just going to rewrite it. Fuck it. I, I ain't scared. I've never made a, never made a mistake. Okay. So, uh, determine the state of the existing... Mapping. Um, oh, I don't have my alignment check. Oh, I do. Okay. Here we will do. Um, I don't need that alignment requirement either. So this is going to be... Uh, Make sure that the address is canonical. Canonical. So make sure the address is canonical. At this point, we're going to determine the state of the existing mapping. Let mapping is equal to self.translate fizzmem vatter. So this will get the state of the existing mapping. If it's non canonical, it will fail. That's actually done for us in mapping. Yep. There's really nothing in here that can fail except for translate and non-canonical. So if the page type is not 4K and it's a page size, make sure that it's got that set. Okay. So now... Um, hmm. I can't do mango. It's okay when you're eating it, but I hate the aftertaste. Really? The fact that apples seem like they taste better, even after immediately cutting them is weird. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. Honeycrisp apples and oranges. Oh, yeah. Peach? Peach is... You know what? I always forget about the poor peach. Strawberry number one. Strawberries are really good, but the variance is really high on strawberries. If they're not ripe, they can just taste super bland. Been craving good leches. Mmm. For the lockdown, my girlfriend started freezing bananas and then just blending them with whatever uh, as vegan ice cream. Yeah, that sounds fucking good. I'm allergic to mangoes, but they're so good. I think mangoes are actually uh, the most common food allergy. Not, ter not in terms of, like, the most common one that people know of, but the highest percentage of people who try them have an allergic reaction. They're, they're apparently, like, really aggressive uh, fruits. 
Plums. I don't even know the last time I had a plum. Maybe I'm missing out. Okay. So at this point, I need to figure out, um, let exists is equal to, um, I think it's the mango leaves that can give you a skin rash on contact. Oh, that makes sense. Knew a girl who couldn't eat most fruits. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds miserable. Fruits are so good. Um... Okay, so at this point we want to map something. We know the existing map for it. And then here we can say... At this point, we know the existing state of the mapping and now we can figure out if we need to remap it or create uh, new tables so here's what we're gonna do is um, if uh, the PML4 will never be none I don't think Um, yeah, we'll say if mapping.pml4e is none, return none, um, this should never happen. This, um, this means the page table doesn't even exist, um, so that we can return none. If the mapping.pm, uh, pdpe is none uh, at this point if the PDPE is none if the page type is equal to page type 1 meg uh, uh, page 1 meg mm, why not pa panic if it is none um, in this case, I'm okay with it feeling kind of open. I could panic on it, though. Um. I feel like I was having issues with panic not working inside of a shared library. We can figure that out, too. If the PDPE is none, mm, if it's a one gig page, then yeah, I don't know actually how I want to write this. I really want to use a loop. I don't want to have to implement the same code every time. I might use a macro. We'll write this out, and we might use a macro. I've seen people poisoned by deadly nightshade. It's nasty stuff. Yeah, that sounds spooky as hell. Sounds super spooky. Um, if if it's a one gig page, then we want the PDPE to be filled in. Yes. Um. Yeah, the fact that I'm using names here rather than using uh, like an array means that I 
can't really go through this list in a loop. But I think it'll be more useful to do it this way for the user side of things on being able to access uh, those fizz adders. So, and access them as a named thing. So we're gonna say if, if the page type is a, a one gig page, if the mapping PML uh, if the ooh if the page is none or update um so if the page wasn't already mapped or updates are allowed um update the mapping and in this case we will do um if the page wasn't already mapped uh if the page wasn't already mapped or we can update the page so basically page will be none if and only if it did not translate into a page um oh wait but this Oh, this just got really difficult. Um, what if we want to update a one gig page, but it's currently mapped as 4K and we want to overwrite the table? Do I not allow that? I think I don't allow that. I think I require that you free it first before you update it. Honestly, I don't know if I'm ever going to use update. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to use update. I think I might require someone to free memory before reallocating it. I think that simplifies things just a wee bit. So we'll do that. Uh, create page tables as needed during translation. Okay. Uh, damn it. Uh, visual block, this, insert. I thought you hit escape there. Visual block, insert, this, escape. Is it not escape to do that? Well, we'll do this for now. <sighs> oh, you can delete visual blo blocks? Yeah, I could just delete and select the whole area. That would make sense. We're just going to get this build again. Uh, 171. Map raw. One hundred. Honestly, I'm just gonna have map create the entries, I think. Uh map raw. 
Oh, I use map raw. There. Yep, I do. I think I might get a get rid of add as well. I'm just going to cut down this API a little bit. I think that just makes more sense. Uh, map raw. Okay, then I get rid of all this shit. Oh, yeah. Nice. Upgrades. I just don't think I'll ever use any of the other modes. It's like, create the, create the tables as you go. Don't overwrite anything. If I want to overwrite something, I'll free I'll free the whole table first. Okay, what's going on here? This is all page table warnings. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Um, free. So we're going to comment this out just so we can shut up some of these warnings for a second. Uh, page mask. Okay, yep. Okay. So translate is going to walk the page table and tell you the existing state. And then this one, if you're mapping a one gig page, um, if mapping dot page dot PDE is sum, return none. And this will basically say, um, this will say, oops, if the page is already mapped as a smaller type, we can't map it, right? So we're in, we're in the PDPE and we're saying if the next level exists, then that means that then this points to a table. And if this points to a table, uh, if this page uh, is already mapped as a smaller page, we can't map over it. Oh, we don't have update anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we made this a lot easier now. Um, if the PDE is some, return none. If page is none, um, uh, page is not mapped, uh, we can map it in. Oh yeah, this logic is so much cleaner. Page is not mapped, we can map it in. Okay, so then here we will write to um, self.translate mapping.pde, pte, uh, pdpe. Uh, hmm. If let, because we need to map the intermediary pages. If the PML four E is none, return none. If the PML, if the page type is one gig, so at this point we are working on the PDP entries. If So we want to map a page here. So we'll say if mapping.pde is sum and um, if this level doesn't, if this, if this, uh, if the PDP PML for E, if the PDPE doesn't point to a table and the page is not mapped, then we know that we can map this page, which I think is the case. Oops. Three bulls and arguments seems like an anti pattern. Yeah. If the P PDPE doesn't point to a table and the page is not mapped, then we know that we can map this page. We know that there's a PML for E.
Um, does map 512. So then at this point, if the PME 4 e does not exist, return none. OK. Then if the mapping dot p dpe is none, um, create the uh, pdpe uh, page directory, the pdp table if needed. Um, so if it doesn't already exist, then we will write, we will allocate a table. Yeah, fuck. We're going to have to repeat this like four times, and I don't like that. I'm trying to think how I could restructure this to have that a lot cleaner. I could use a macro. I could not... I could uh, use a list. Oh, um, I could do this. Let mute entries is equal to this. I can do this. Entries is equal to mapping dot pdp uh, pml for e mapping dot pdpe mapping dot pde mapping dot pdpe uh, p pde pte okay so get all of the current mapping states then what we're gonna do is for entry and entries. If uh, EID, uh, we'll say ii dot iter dot enumerate. If um, If the entry, OK, first we need to figure out if we are at the final level to make our page, I think. Um, my brain is struggling right now. We get the current mapping states if. I think we need to figure out what level we're at right now. Um, and how do I know that? I can turn the II into the level. If II, like I can do this, if I is equal to one, Yeah, I got to make this more generic. Um, let cur level is equal to. <laughs> I'm about to dip. What's up, my Twitch account? Uh. If the current level, match those, yeah, I could do that. I think that might be pretty good. I need to create mappings that don't exist. I might do this. Match entries. Uh, oops, match page type. Uh, and then here I can do let um, I can do like let depth. Yeah. Depth is equal to this. And then page type, page one gig. This is one. Two, three, two megs, four K. Uh, get the 
index, you get the index into the entries array for the um, table which holds the current mapping, which holds the page mapping. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Four. Uh, then here, if the PML four E is none, then we bail out. Okay, perfect. So that's done. For I I in one two depth. Uh, we actually. Uh, get the length of the entries array. I might just trim the entries array down. I think I'm just going to do that. I might do walk path or something like walk is equal to that. Yeah, but I need to get the one afterwards. So we'll say this for this in one to depth. So on a one gig page, we'll go one depth in. We'll say if mapping, if entries for depth is none, we, uh, so this is, yeah, 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 yeah. Create page tables as needed while walking to the final page. If the entry is none for this location, so we'll start out at one, the PDPE. If the PDPE is not present, that means that the PML4E did not point to a valid table, in which case we will create one. And alec fizz, alec fizz takes a layout. Okay, let uh, let table is equal to pmem dot alec fizz zeroed layout from size align four thousand ninety six four thousand ninety six. Okay, so this will be uh, allocate a new empty table. And now we can go to entries ii minus one dot unwrap. Uh, so check if there is a table along the path. And I think we want to go to depth minus one, actually. No, we want depth. Because uh, we want to go from one to two. On a four, we would do one, two, three. Or uh, one, two, three. Oh, uh, yeah, this should be uh, mapping.page, maybe? Oh, that's where, uh, okay, that's where it gets really tough. Hmm. I need like the, so I need to create the, I need to create the tables during the walk. So I want to walk through every level that I need to, and this should do it. They should say one to depth. Uh, so for a one gig page, we'll go through one. We'll check the PDPE. If that's not present, then we'll fill it in. I think this is correct. Uh, and then if we are 4K, then we'll check the PDPE the PDE and the PTE. If any of those don't exist, then we'll go to the table above and allocate the entry. Yeah, I think this works. Why is it tough? Something extra to the page? It's because the page could occur at any of the different levels, but I don't think it's too bad. I'm just, uh, I'm just not thinking about it in the right way, I don't think. So alloc page zeroed, that's gonna create a zero page. And now, update the level above us to reference this table. Okay. Oh. I don't know if this will work at all. 
Yeah, I don't think this is going to work at all because... Um, I would have to re-extract the bits from the virtual address. I would have to extract the bits from the virtual address so I could... Yeah, I'd have to extract the bits from the virtual address so I know the offset for this level in the table. Um, and at that point, I think we're better off. I mean, I could grab indices. <laughs> Jump out says the weirdest stuff. <laughs> it's. Okay, so we got the indices. Um, hmm. So we have the indices for each level, and that's the offset into these. We can update this. So this will get us a phys adder. pmem translate this to get us a pointer. Let uh, pointer is equal to this. Whoa. I'm going to call this pmem. Didn't I call it pmem here? No, I called it physmem. Okay, we'll keep that standard then. Translate that. Two arguments. This needs a size. Uh, core pointer size of u64. Three forty six. Oh, this is the old, yeah. It's going away. We'll return none. Uh, core mem size of layout. That is a dot okay on this. Okay, we build again. Um, okay, so go through every level in the depth. If. Update the level above us. So we're going to translate the physical address of the table above us. And then we're going to write in uh, core pointer write pointer as mute u64. We're going to write in the table or uh, page present or page user or page write or page present, just changing the ordering there. Okay, so this whole function's unsafe. So this is now going to update. If we don't have a PDPE, then it will go to the PML4E address and it will fill that in. Uh, yep, because that is a pointer to the entry and then we'll overwrite the entry, we'll update it uh, user, writable, and present with a table. And this will go through and create all the tables. Uh, well, this will fail at the next level. Uh, because we're relying on this entries table to be updated. So I need to do entries ii minus one. Oh, entries ii, because that was none is now equal to a sum value, which is the table plus uh, the, the physical address of the table plus core mem size of u64. Oh, that fit. Oh, I need to call it a phys mem though now. Okay, so 
update the uh, table to reflect the new address of our entry. So because we made a new table here, and our entry will be specifically, oh, ii, in this case is the um, indices ii. Mm, yikes. Yikes, man. Uh, this will be the table plus the indices. So for the level that we're at, times the u64 size, and that will give us an index into the table that we just created for that entry, and then we update that, and then we'll go to the next level, and then we'll do the same thing, so we might end up updating that. So it's kind of like a backlink. It's kind of weird, actually. Um, well, that just barely fits. Uh, fizz adder. Okay. So that creates the tables. Uh, to check if there's tables along the path. At this point, um, tables were present or created. Check uh, for the page. So now we say if... Ah, uh, fuck. I mean, the other one that we wrote actually was wrong, so I need to I need to move past that. If the pages were, uh, tables were uh, present or created, check for the page. If Oh, we can actually bail really early. We can bail really early here. We can say if uh, right away, right fucking away. Here we go. Before we compute the indices, make the depth. If, so first of all, if mapping.page, wow, we'll go up here. If mapping.page, uh, is sum return none page already mapped. Okay, so if the page is already mapped, we return out. Perfect, done. Now, uh, this should never happen, it means the page table doesn't even exist. Yep. And then here we get the entries, here we get the depth, and now we can say if the depth uh, if the entries uh, at the depth is equal, uh, is sum, return none. So this is saying, if a page table uh, exists below where we want to insert a page, there is already a smaller type uh page, okay, if a page table exists below where we want to insert, uh, let's see, if a table is present at the level where we want to, want to insert a page, we cannot, uh, insert the page. And this is going to go out of bounds in that one case. So we'll say if get dot map, uh, and then Is that what we want? No, that's not quite it. Uh, we want to say, we want to get it. I don't know why I struggle with this logic so much. Um, uh, we can just do a map, x. So if it is sum, or uh, false. So if we went out of bounds, which is only for the fourth level, right? If depth was four, which will happen on a 4K page, um, then we'll unwrap or false, so this won't happen. Otherwise, 
if it was in bounds and it was present, then that means something was mapped beyond us. Map or false. Map or. Huh. I've never seen map or. That's interesting. Let's take a look at that. So it's just the first value is what to default. Okay. Default or closure. I see. So map or. So it's false by default, or it is if it's present, which would make it true. Okay, 357. So we basically, we validated that the page is not mapped. The page is not mapped, so there's no valid page mapped here. And we have validated that the next level does not exist. Uh, and that handles the fourth case. In the fourth case, when this is false, the check is actually this. This is the only check. Um, and it is impossible to have a large page that's not mapped. So if any level is a large page, this page has to be set. You can't have an intermediary large page. So if there's a large page set anywhere in the chain, false. Otherwise, if there's a 4K page, get out. And then here, we check to see if there's a table below us, which means there is the opposite of a large page. There is an existing present table. Okay, then here we go through the depth. Uh, if the entry for the level that we start off at, the PDPE, if that is none, then we allocate a new zero table. We go to the level above. We translate that from a physical to a virtual address. We then write to that virtual address, and we write in the address of the table. Uh, so we're writing in this level because it didn't exist. And then we update it to indicate, hey, this level now exists. And you can find it at uh, the indices for our level which in this case would be th these bits, times the size of, and write that in. So I think that'll create all the page tables. Um, OK, I think, wait, you said there's a map or either? Oh, map or else. Oh, that's cool. Default uh, closure on that. Wow, that's super powerful. OK, at this point, the tables have been created, and the page doesn't already exist. Thus, we can write in the mapping. So here, we'll write to um, this. This is it. We're done. Oops. Ah, uh, whoops. So this is the uh, raw. And this is at depth. Uh, ooh, depth minus one, the final level. Because this didn't include, oh. Wait a minute. This might, no, this should go to depth. This will go through one, and then depth will not be included. But depth minus one will. Good night, mostly not. See you around another time. Why am I struggling with this so much? If. Oh, yeah, we do want to translate depth minus one because we're filling in the entry at that level. That makes sense. That totally makes sense. So we go uh, in the 4K page. That would be depth minus one. So the third, which would be the PTE. At the PTE, we get the address of the PTE. We then translate it, and then we write the raw value to there, and then we can return sum saying 
everything happened. Okay, so if this boots, we got it right, but it... Oh my fucking god. <laughs> First fucking try. Hell yeah. I was not expecting that. I like already priced in like two hours of debugging. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was going to fuck up so bad. Oh, my God. So, while this seems a little bit more convoluted than the last one, the last one was actually incorrect. The last one would not handle the case that a smaller page was mapped and we wanted to make a large page there. It would end up, like, overwriting or throwing away something. So, let's, let's reread this. If the page is not a 4K page, and the page size is zero, oh, and we'll also say, um, or the page type, uh, or raw and page, uh, present is equal to zero. We don't want to allow someone to map on a, a non-present page. So if, if the page is not 4K and... If the page is not a 4K page, uh, and we're going to put this raw first, because I think it's the more obvious one. I typically do my if statements in the order of obviousness, and we put her friends around that to be careful. Okay. Uh, and this is if the page is not, if we're mapping a non-present, a not a non-present page, or we're mapping a large page without, without the page size bit set, this page will never be valid. So just return fail. OK. So if the present bit is 0 or the page size is not 4K and the page size bit is 0, ooh, 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 or Oh, uh, um, a 4K page can have the page size bit set because it has a different meaning. So that's actually fine. So if it's not 4K and the page size bit is zero, return none. Now we're going to get the raw page size in bytes and the mask. So we convert the page type into the size. We subtract one to get the mask. We then translate. Uh, technically, we don't use those yet, so let's do this. Do we use those at all? Page mask, we don't use. Page size, we don't use that either. Yeah. See, this is why I like rereading code when it's final. Uh, determine the state of the existing mapping. We're going to do a translation using the virtual address. Uh, if the page is already mapped, return out failure. If the PML4E is none. That means there's no page table because the PML4E points to the entry in the raw page at the highest level of the page table, at the root of the page table. So that should never happen. Then at this stage, we get all of the entry, uh, the mapping states. We determine the length of the entries array based on the uh, page type. Then, if a table is present at the level where we want to insert a page, we cannot uh, I want to reword this. Check to see if a page, uh, if a table is currently mapped at the location we want to insert a large, uh, large page. This will uh, disallow us from mapping a large page over a table which contains smaller pages. Okay. Then here, get the indice, uh, get the components of the address. Go through each level of the depth. Uh, create page tables as needed while walking to the final page. Check if there is table along the path. If there was not, then we need to allocate a zeroed out page, 4K, 4K. We're going to translate the location above us, so where we're going to insert the table into, 
Um, and then we write to it, and I kind of want this. So this is uh, convert the address of the uh, page table entry where we need to insert the new table. And this is insert the new table. Uh, uh, yeah, insert the new table at the entry in the table above us. Okay, and then here we're going to uh, update the mapping state as we have changed the tables. Okay, and then this has a physical address to the table that we just created, indices ii for the level that we're using, times the size of a U64 as a U64, that's a physical address, fantastic. And then that'll go to depth, but not inclusive. So one, two, uh, three. So it would actually go to this. These are the, yep. And then here at this point, the tables have been created and a page doesn't already exist. Thus we can write in the mapping. And we translate the address of the last table. We then write in the raw page table mapping, and we're done. And we somehow broke something. Um, where? It's up here, isn't it? No? No? Wait, it is here. Oh, yeah, I don't have a... There you go. What's the overhead of a page tables when using 4K pages? Um, so uh, there are 512 pages per uh, page table entry. So the way you can think about that is effectively um, for every uh, every two megs that are mapped, you need 4K of page table entries, and then you need one five twelfth of a level above that and one one thousand twenty or um one five twelfth squared of that. So it's basically four K for every one meg you have or for every two meg you have mapped, if that makes sense. Now, depending on how much fragmentation you have in your virtual space, you might end up with having like if you make a random four K page in the middle of nowhere, you're gonna have four levels of page tables plus the page. So you'd have massive amounts of overhead. Yeah, it's like one five twelve. Yeah, it's one five twelve for contiguous data converging to one uh, to five over one or four over one, a uh, four x. Um, if you have completely sparse pages that share no common level in any table, <laughs> which eventually will never be the case, because once you have five hundred twelve mappings. There will, if you're trying to make it as sparse as possible, um, you can only have 512 unique mappings at the top level, and then 512 squared at the next level, and so on and so forth. Uh, so pretty quickly, it's only the last like couple tables that really would get recreated, anyways. Okay, car run clean, cargo run. Let's see if we have any warnings or errors. The bootloader builds clean, and Macro use an alloc. Um, and can I shut that up here? Allow unused imports. And I think that's just going to be for this. Because I want, I want things like VEC to be uh, globally available. Um, and I'm actually going to do that on my... Uh, I'm going to do that on my bootloader too. Um, Alec. And that, that will bring in the VEC macro and some other stuff. Uh, and the box macro and some other helpers. I think that brings in uh, format bang and stuff. So it will behave uh, in normal Rust, in lib standard. Um, Alec is marked import, macro use, and then allow unused import such that you can use the VEC macro and the format macro without having to pull them in. So, okay. 
This no longer references range set. That is pretty cool. Um, oh, that's in uh, kernel source mm. That makes sense. That's gone. Okay. Kernel source main. Uh, yeah, this was like all of our testing stuff. Oh, yeah, let's do a quick audit before we move on. Let's do an audit of this code, the translate code, because this is this is now kind of the, the crux of a lot of our mapping. If it's not a canonical address, return none. Perfect. Then grab the indices, get the table, go through each level, compute the address for there, uh, match the depth that we're at, 0, 1, 2, 3, PML4E, PDPE, PTE, yep. So we get the entry, uh, fill in the address of the entry we're decoding. Then translate the, uh, the pointer to that entry and then read that entry. Now we have the entry. If it's not present, break. At this point, we've only filled in what has been valid up to this point. Um, which includes the current level, right? So that's why the PML4E is always present. The only way the PML4E gets not present is if the whole thing returns none. Otherwise, the next possible return point is this break, which is after the PML4E has been filled in. And that's why we can assert that in the other space. Here we're going to mask it off to get the table. If the depth is 3, we're at the final level, or the page size bit is set, then... If the depth is zero, page size bit is not valid for the PML4E, return out with a partially walked table, because that means the table is corrupt. Otherwise, match the depth uh, to its mask. So, And this is dynamic, because we don't specify a page size. We're walking the table. So we're going through an existing table, regardless of uh, what we want to do. This is just going to tell us the true state of this mapping. So. Uh, that's 1 gig minus 1, 2 megs minus 1, 4k minus 1. OK. And I think I might do this. Uh, page, what did I call it? Page, page size, page type, page type, page 1 gig minus 1, uh, as u64 minus 1. 2, 3, page 2 megs, 4k. And that just looks a little bit more consistent and obvious with what we're doing. It's the same semantic. It, it does the exact same thing. So then here, at this point, the page is valid, uh, which is true. Um, mask off all bits that are not part of the address. OK, so we take the table entry, and then we mask off the um, page mask, which is the mask. Uh, we invert that mask, and we mask those bits off. So we zero out the bottom parts. Then we compute the page offset, uh, which is the only the bottom bits. And then we store that information that this is the page, and that's the offset. And then we return done, or we break out of the loop. Um, OK. And that works. Uh, we've tested that. And this is on, a, this is on uh, 1 gig pages. And here we can see that it stops once it gets to this point. OK, so now that that is done, we can implement free. Free is going to be rel relatively difficult, but now that we have translate, which is the core, this is going to be um, translate a. Uh, this is going to be translate a physical a virtual address in the uh, in the self page table into its. Uh, into its components. Um, this will include uh, entries for every level in the table, as well as the final page result if the page is mapped and present. OK. Love it. Love it. Really nice, actually. So then here, we're going to free the virtual memory region indicated by VADR and size. All pages used to back to allocation will be freed, and any intermediate page tables which are no longer 
which no longer contain any mappings, will be unlinked from the table and also freed. Okay, so this is uh, this is going to be relatively complex. So, apologies if I seem irate at times, not asleep and wake up halfway confused. No problem, man. No problem. Okay, so we're going to go for... Um, let's see. Uh, I actually need to think. These ones are fine because these don't operate on ranges. But these mappings, actually, this is not safe. Yeah, make sure that the page is aligned to the page size request. Okay, perfect. Um... So, actually, yeah, this is fine. We, I don't think we need to be so strict about these page, uh, these pages being aligned. Get the address of the page table, vert adder. That calls this. So that's just a wrapper. So this is some other core uh, code. If the size is less than or equal to zero, fuck you. We're not mapping your memory, or we don't match the page, the page mask. Um. And I feel like we can handle that page mask. Because this would allow us to like initialize an arbitrary mapping at a byte offset if we really wanted to. I don't know why we would, but why not open up the um why not open up what we can do here? and relax that constraint. So here we're gonna compute the end address. We're gonna check to add the size minus one. That's fine. So we're gonna see if we can do this. Um, uh, nothing to map, return uh, failure. Okay. Page mask. Yeah, I don't know if we're using page mask or page size anymore. We're using page size for stepping. Okay. So save off the original virtual address, compute the end virtual address of this mapping. Okay, and that's fine. Check dead size minus one. Then we're going to inclusively go through every virtual address that's covered in this range. We're going to allocate a page based on the page size requested. We're going to set the permissions on that page. It's present, writable if requested, and X if not executable requested. Um, if it's not 4K, then we set the page size bit. Then if init is set, then we will translate the page. And this is where it's actually wrong. So in this case, we want to take the page and we want to add, and we do want that page align, that page mask. Uh, translate the page. We're going to take uh, Yeah, this might get really confusing because we'd have to give like a negative number for the index. Yeah, we're going to uh, we'll keep that restriction for now. Um, otherwise, this init closure would actually return a negative number where it would be like, hey, we are negative three bytes off of where you told me to allocate. And that would maybe work, kind of, but it's it's a little strange. So we're just gonna avoid that for now. Trizzy, hell yeah, what's going on, man? How you been doing? You still playing retro these days? I actually transferred to Harmonia. That way I can do my Banshee quest in peace. My steel boots. <laughs> um, okay, so freeing memory is actually gonna be relatively difficult. So, I'm still waiting for my monitor to return from repairs. It's been two months, holy shit, man. What the hell? 
Uh, does translate mimic the function of the CPU that maps virtual memory by walking the page tables? So technically, it could be exposed by the CPU. Yes. So that translate routine is effectively doing exactly what the CPU is doing. We're mimicking the behavior of stopping when we get to a non-present page. And we're mimicking the behavior of uh, stopping when we get to a page size page, like a large page. Playing on master cores. Start on retro cores as the new 1x server comes out. Oh my god, dude. I can't train again, unfortunately, so I don't know if I'll be on the 1X. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, but I couldn't have both my characters logged in. But the 1X is like what I actually feel like I'd enjoy more. Oh, the 1X is actually PvP, so yeah, I probably won't do that. Never mind. It's gonna be slow. Yeah, I'd actually play on like a 0.5x server to be honest. Why do you have to implement the ability to translate uh, if the CPU is able to do it? So there are two reasons. One, we're about to free memory. So we actually have to walk the page tables to identify what regions I need to free uh, when I'm doing freeing. Um, yeah, I saw Rustank had 101x. I'm 103x. I'm actually pretty close to... Uh, 104, well, 37% to go, which to me is close. Anything over 50% is close. I just got 103 shielding. So, I don't know how long they're taking per skill now. I would say probably like 180 hours or something. Yeah, I'm the one above them. Yep. I've been number one skills on Retro uh, for basically 90% of its existence. There was like... There's a small window for one month where there were like two people who were botting and had higher skills than I had. But other than that, from like day one to now, I've basically been number one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't stop training, man. I can't. I can't. My body needs it. Okay. So, um, the reason we need translate, first of all, this translate is actually, the translation goes through this physical memory structure, and that allows us to do nested paging, it allows us to translate memory in an address space we're not running in. So, for example, the processor can't translate something that we're not using, right? But this allows us to do this. This allows us to set up and translate and create page tables. In fact, we create 64-bit page tables from 32-bit Rust before we even have paging enabled in the processor. So it kind of allows us to emulate some of this behavior. Now, when we free memory, like we're about to do, we have to walk these page tables to identify what is being used and what's not being used. I'm going to go eat some breakfast and let you do your thing. Good stream. Keep it up. Thanks, Trizzy. Go have fun. Enjoy your morning. Have a good breakfast. Don't get coronavirus. <laughs> See you around, man. So for free, uh, we're going to go through all of, this, all of the virtual addresses that span this. So we'll do let end is equal to vatter.0.checked add size uh, checked sub one question mark question mark. So this is... Uh, determine the end of the mapping for virtual address in vatter dot dot equals end. So we'll check to sub that, and if it's zero, then we'll fail because you can't free uh, non-zero. Actually, do we want free to just silently fail or succeed? A free of should a free of zero bytes succeed, or should it fail with, like, hey, you did nothing? And I think fail is better. Um, like, technically, freeing nothing and returning, hey, we did what you wanted, makes sense. But I think this will catch bugs in case you accidentally provide a size of zero. You would never call this function if you know the size is zero. So I would rather have this function fail, actually. Um, that's just failing closed. I'm all about that. Those old MMOs are pretty cool. Used to play Ultimate uh, Ultima Online, which had similarities. Yeah. Uh, very similar games. I don't think I've ever actually played Ultima, but I am quite familiar uh, with, like, screenshots. <laughs> I don't know. It actually sounds pretty fun. So this will go through. 
every virtual address. And we don't know the page size, so we're going to have to step by 4096. Uh, go through every page which could potentially exist. And here we'll just, uh, uh, we can't print. So this will go through every page that could potentially exist. Uh, since we don't know the page size yet. But we can... We might be able to do that. We might be able to, we can actually translate this and then skip. Mm, we, we. Uh, so this is gonna be translate the initial page. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Let mute uh, cur page is equal to uh, self.translate fizz mem of uh, uh, this is just vatter dot vatter. So translate the initial page. And now we're going to say while, while, uh, I can actually implement on mapping. Check this out. Impl mapping fn vert base. Uh, self. This will give a vert adder, and this is going to um, compute the base. Compute the base virtual address of this page if the page exists. Okay? Option. So if the page exists. So if. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we can actually do this. Project, yeah, I'm currently working on a, um, who says he can't print? Yeah, I can't print in this structure, or in this code base yet, or in this file, specifically. Um, what are you working on? Yeah, I'm working on a kernel. Right now, actually, we are on the kernel. We wrote a bootloader the other day. We're booting it in a into a kernel. Now we're working on a virtual memory manager that will allow us to free and allocate arbitrary virtual memory while claiming back all of the pages if they got freed. Um, and then once this is ready, we... I mean, honestly, once this is ready, we've got like a pretty much full-blown environment set up to do... maybe start working on a hypervisor. We want to... Oh yeah, we're still benchmarking our allocator performance. So um, we made we made an optimization to our allocator, but we couldn't actually test whether or not it sped things up yet because we can't free anything. So we can't actually test uh, what happens once memory is warmed up because the cold memory is not fair in a virtual machine. So <laughs> once you see a dev and Vim, you know what time it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> Me as a, a .NET dev. <laughs> as a mobile dev, I'm intimidated. Hey, I can't, I can't do mobile dev. I'm intimidated by mobile dev. It is not a skill I have. I have no UI experience. I don't know how to make a usable UI or interface or anything. I only know how to make internal code. <laughs> But I do know how to do that quite well. Okay, so this is to com compute the virtual, the base virtual address of this page if the page exists. Um, so we have a mapping. Remember, this mapping doesn't have the virtual address, which is awesome. We don't want the virtual address. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to construct the virtual address, which is actually really cool. Uh, not that one. Uh, this one. We're basically going to do the opposite of this. Uh, if self.page is none, return none. Uh, page is not mapped. Okay, in that case, there's no page. Then we're going to create the address. Let adder 
let virtual address is equal to, we're going to do the inverse of that. I'm just keeping that for reference. We will do um, if let sum ent is equal to self.pml4e. The pml4e, we can mask that by FFF to get the offset into the PML4E. Okay. And now we can divide that by eight. Uh, uh, let ES entry size or const ES U size is equal to core, uh, we'll say U64, core mem size of U64. I try not to hard code things like eight, and I don't think I do anywhere in this code base. In fact, I don't think any code we've written so far makes that assumption. Um, so this is as a U64 size of a, uh, a page table entry. Okay, so we're gonna divide down the entry, the physical address of the entry, mask off the bottom uh, 12 bits, or mask the bottom 12 bits, giving us just the offset into the table. Divide that by the size of an entry. This now gives us the index of an entry, which is this value, this 1FF value here. And then we can shift this, else 0, shift 39. Fuck, how do I shorten this? How do I shorten this without ruining, without ruining it? I could do this. It's a little gross. Um, oh, we could just, uh, hmm. fuck, this is like right on the cusp of where I want to be. Ah, uh, I don't think I want to make a macro. I don't know, maybe I'll do this. Uh, this is uh, PDPE, PDE. And this is the PTE. Okay, and that is 30, 21, 12. So if for each of the different levels that could possibly exist, um, I might just do this, uh, sum adder it's a little gross but it's the only way we fit I think in a clean way oh entries up fizz adder mm, okay 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 now we're not gonna fit fuck oh I can do unwrap or probably here uh, map unwrap or let's try it um self.pml4e unwrap or zero uh, fizz adder zero dot zero and oxff divided by es shift by 39. So get the entry or zero and it with fff divided by es and shift that over. Uh, 30, 21, 12. That actually made it cleaner. And the, this is PDPE, PDE, PTE. And I think Rust might allow me to do this. It does. Okay. So unwrap it or physical address zero, dot zero. Get the uh, bits corresponding to the physical address divide it by the entry size, and then shift it into the place. So what is FFF divided by 8? It is 511. And thus, we don't overflow these fields, and we have constructed the base virtual address. TLDR. So that's what that does. Uh, managing my tibia makers. Okay. I've been dreading writing this free, man. It's just a little bit confusing. Oh, I lost my parcel too. I do that every day. Be right back. Gotta grab this parcel. 
Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is uh, pub fn size option. Uh, yeah, we might as well return a page type. This will uh, size. Uh, get the high parcel, yes. Hi, drop, yes. Okay. Um, get the size of this page. So here we'll say the size of the page will be uh, page is not mapped, return none. Otherwise, the size is equal to match. Oop. If let sum, uh, ooh. If self.pdpe is none, um, well, that's not going to happen. One, two. If the PDE is none, then this is a page type page one gig. I'll return sum this. If the PTE is none, then we do that. And then this is final. Uh, and we can do if this. I think this is actually cleaner than doing a weird if else here. So I'm going to do this uh, to make. And then this is 4K. So uh, determine the level which was the end of the mapping. And that uh, reflects the page size. So if the page is not mapped, then we return out none. Otherwise, the page is mapped, which means that the PDE, if that is where it ended, then it's a one gig page. If the PTE is where it ended, then it's a two meg page. And if it's neither of those, then it's a 4K page. OK. Um, seems like a hacker stream. I follow. Hell yeah. Thank you for the follow, man. This code syntax looks so wild. Can't even compare it to my PHP. Uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting, but I love it. <laughs> I love this language, man. Okay, so in this case, we made a one gig thing. PDE is none. That means we would say, uh, yeah, actually, let's try this. Uh, we have a test. We can do a test. Fucking crazy, man. Let TL is equal to pay is equal to page table dot translate mute pmem vert vert adder o o x three 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 seven one 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 uh unwrap okay so we translate that and then I'm gonna print the translation and then I'm gonna print the uh as hexadecimal uh, for both of these I'm gonna print the TL dot page size and the TL dot oops the TL dot vert adder uh, vert base I actually like that quite a bit vert base and then TL dot size okay and that one we're gonna pretty print as debug and private associated function now it's not bye bye okay uh debug not implemented for this okay now it is uh lower hex not implemented for um yeah we'll do uh a question mark okay so this will now tell me what it thinks the base and all the information about these allocations are. So I do have to set up my tibia character in one second. Done. OK, and then this, that, this. We did it. 
I'm now training again. Kind of. Gotta eat this food. This. This. Uh, then I gotta do this. Eat this. Open this. Okay, cool. So this is saying that we have a virtual address based here, which is true. We asked it to translate at the like 111 offset. And it's a one gig page. Uh, this offset actually seems wrong. Oh, because we call translate again. Ugh, you dolt. Uh, TL. Okay. I was about to say, that seemed wrong. Ah, fuck. Alright, reset. Alright, uh, here we have the mapping. This is the base. That is actually the base. It is a one gig page. That is correct. This was the physical address. This was the offset into the page. So now we have a way to go from a mapping into the base and its um, and the size of that page. Were you able to run it on ARM? Uh, is that in reference to something in particular? This this kernel is not designed for ARM, um, but it wouldn't be too hard to take some of the ideas. Uh, actually, honestly, if you re-implemented page table and serial, I think it would just kind of work on ARM. But th there's not much we do beyond that anyways. But we're going to be using like XED6-specific hypervisors and stuff. Um, I just have no interest in supporting ARM because it's not a platform that I really need to run anything on right now. Okay. So now we can go to free and translate the initial page. Okay, while cur page dot, while the current page, um, x86 was a mistake. I mean, it's, it's got some, it's got some flaws. <laughs> it's got some flaws. <laughs> While the vert base is less than or equal to the end. That way, if we, if the end is the start of a page, so we're going to say, um, while the while the virtual base of the page is less than or equal to end, is that correct? Uh, we're gonna go through all the pages. If it is greater than end, so for example, if we had if we had um, vatter was ox fffff, and it was a one k page, then the vert base for this would be uh, base of this would be actually all zeros. And then this would say while OXOO is less than or equal to, and then if this, if the length is one, then the end is OXFFF. So while this is less than this, which is true, and then we'll go to the next page, and the next page uh, will be um, 1000 because we'll add the page size and it's no longer there, so we stop. Unless the length was two, in which case the end would be a thousand, and then this would be this, and we would correctly do one more iteration on that page. Okay, perfect, this is correct then. So this is, um, fucking cool, man. Fucking cool. Fucking cool. So we're going to, um, so this is going to normalize the base because this could be any offset and any size. So this could just be anywhere in memory. This will normalize it to a known address. And while we're within the bounds of what we want to be operating on, uh, we will keep doing this stuff. And here we're gonna free. And then in this case, we are going to, at the end, we will do um, cur page is equal to self.translate fizzmem. And then we'll take the vert at uh ooh cur page dot vert base which is a virtual address um 
uh, we'll get the base plus cur page dot size as u64. So this will be go to the next page. Um, yeah, and we don't want to do cur page because I don't want to retranslate it if I'm, uh, I think we're going to change the logic to this. We're guaranteed to be doing something. So we're going to loop, we're going to free some stuff, and then uh, compute the address of the next page. And this will be let next page is equal to vert adder, uh, this logic, cur page vert base zero plus uh, cur page size as u64. So that's the virtual address of the next page. Um, Yeah, and this doesn't overflow. Well, this could this could potentially overflow here in a really weird condition. So, yeah, that's fucking wild. Uh, I think my new morning routine could be to watch you code while drinking my morning coffee. Yeah, good morning, Napalm. Hope you're doing well. Earlier you said that Rust is faster than C. Well, it's not faster than C, but it's basically equivalent in all cases. Um... Because you can write you can write unsafe code in Rust. You can you can literally write something that is identical to LLVM Clang compiled C because you can do exactly the same things and end up having LLVM optimize and generate the same things. Um, with safety, yeah, you might lose some performance on bounce checks on arrays. You might lose some performance on reference counting or obtaining locks on things like globals because the compiler cannot prove that they're exclusive to a given thread. Um, but the thing is, there's really no performant environment where you're doing those things frequently. If you want to quickly access an array, Rust will actually figure out the largest size that you're going to access in a function, and it'll do one length check. If you're doing dynamic lookups, then you need to do bounce checking in C anyways, otherwise it's unsafe, right? So. If you compare C to Rust, yes, C will perform faster by like 5% in the generic case, but that's because the C code is wrong. <laughs> so it's not really fair, I would say, in a lot of the, a lot of the comparisons. Your source resolution is so slow. Uh, your source resolution is 1080p, and my internet is so slow it can handle 720p. Could you segment it into a different resolution? Unfortunately, I cannot. Uh, it's kind of something you'll get when we get Twitch partnered. And I'm really close to getting Twitch partner, I think. Uh, let's see. I, I probably, let me, let me pull up the right page before browsing to it, just in case. Because um, I think there's somewhere, I don't know. Where, I don't, fuck, how do I navigate all this shit? Settings? Oh, mute this. Fuck. Uh, Twitch. I'll just Google it. See? Achievements. What is this? Um, achievements page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Where are my achievements? Oh shit, this is fancy. Uh Oh, I found it. I found achievements. <laughs> I did it. So, this is what's required. You must complete this before you apply to partner. Uh, you have to stream for 25 hours. Well, that's about one stream for me, so no problem. Uh, you got to stream on 12 different days. We're at 10 to 12 right now, and we got to average 75 years. This was what it was prior to this stream, so I'm pretty sure that we'll cross over this, like, by the time we get to 12 streams, because we've been averaging these sort of things. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, like... This week, we're probably going to be eligible for partner, and then we could apply for partner, and then we do that, and I'll probably hire someone to make emotes and hire someone to make uh, um, 
make sub icons and stuff. Uh, have some like really cool art made that's unique and, and whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's probably gonna happen. And then once we are partner, I think we get stream quality. Like all partners, I think, get stream quality. Um, you got more emotes, you have more ways to monetize your stream. Uh, heads up, I will never monetize this stream in any way. <laughs> I'm never going to, other than subs and bits, which are on you, I'm never going to run ads. I'm never, I'm never going to get a sponsor. I'm never going to have a banner that has a sponsor for some shit. Fuck that. There's no reason. I do programming streaming. I will never make a significant enough, a significant amount of money from streaming to make it worthwhile to ruin the content for other people. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's just only so much of a market for, uh, programming and streaming. Like, I could see maybe, maybe, like, Kit Boga can pull in, like, 2,000 viewers or 3,000 viewers when making, like, scam websites. That's basically the pinnacle of programming streaming. And, like, I'm not gonna make money off ads or sponsorships with that shit. So, <laughs> fuck that. I have all the ads turn off, turned off. I know that Twitch might force some specific ads through, and I can't. Maybe there are some ads I can't turn off, but I've I've turned off all the shit that I could. <laughs> You're not quitting your day job to stream full time. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> your, uh, your stream quality is already high. Speaking of stream quality, uh, there's a really weird thing. Your vods on Twitch are full of OXFF. What? So it's trivial to trim the stream. Uh, oh, like dead space or something. Uh, can we talk about what the hell is with those 24 hour streams? Uh, they're obviously view botted that have been running for years. I mean, some, someone's got to make money. <laughs> they're all fucked, man. Twitch is usually pretty generous for educational stuff and stuff like this in terms of accepting partners. That's fantastic. I do swear a lot. <laughs> I am opinionated. Um, but yeah, I think I would likely be able to get that. Guys, is the OS uh, Debian or is Debian based on another distro? Debian is the distro. Debian is kind of like the root of a lot of Linux uh, operating systems. You can look at like trees that show kind of the fork path. For example, Ubuntu is actually based on Debian. So Debian's kind of like the parent and Ubuntu is the child. Um, Debian, is, Debian is like the, the gold standard of Linux distros. It's super stable. It's super sto solid. It's not bleeding edge at all. The packages are often one or two years old because they're proven to work well in the environment. Uh, and that's all I care about. If I need to run a specific tool on the latest version, I'll download it and build it or run the binary of the latest tool. I don't need my entire OS to be bleeding edge. <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, okay. So. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the view base or the vert base. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was talking through a theoretical uh, integer overflow here. And the integer overflow can occur if someone requests a page. So if someone if someone requested, uh, let's say let's say the address space is just those. Well, fuck it. We'll type out the whole thing just so it's more obvious. If someone requested to free this memory for one byte, check sub that passes. One minus one becomes zero. Uh, we can add zero to this, so the end would be this which is, oops, <laughs> the end would be this, which is valid. Um, then, in that case, uh, let's see. In that case, it could translate a page. Yeah, this would then translate into a page. Let's say this page is valid, in which case... Uh, we would get this. This would be, be the address of the page, this vert base, and then the size would be 4096. Um, and then if we add those two together, that is an overflow. So we want to support this. We want the ability of allocating and freeing the last page in memory. 
And to do that, we need to have everything in here. That's why you use the end as inclusive rather than exclusive. Um, but to express this, we can actually do this. And this is really interesting. Um, compute the address of the next page. If let sum cur page dot vert base dot zero. So if there's a base uh, zero dot plus cur page dot uh, if let sum x is equal to this checked add cur page dot size. Um, so if if there is if it's possible that there's a next page then cur page is equal to x. Otherwise, return sum. Uh, we made it to the end of all virtual memory. Return out. Uh, return out. Yeah. So it's kind of like the question mark syntax, but the inverse. I think it's invalid to do check sub one, since if the size is zero, no pages should be freed. If the size is zero here, um, this will return none, indicating failure. Uh, I want it to I want it to fail very close. So freeing zero, in my opinion, should be an error. I think it should be on you to uh, to not do that. I don't think there's any legitimate case where you should be freeing zero. Um, I think that's only going to be an erroneous case, so I want to be able to catch that. Anyways, translate the initial page. Now we have this cur page. Then here, Desu, do you, do you have a better way of describing this potentially? Um, for, basically I want to re return success. Yeah, it's kind of the inverse of a question mark. I want to say, like, if this fails, return success. Um, but there's really no good way to do that. So compute the address of the next page, vert base. Um, and these unwraps are fine. And yeah, I could I could go a little heavier on the asserts, but I, I kind of want it to fail so you uh, crash above. Um, if I assert in here, yeah, I could make a useful assert here. We'll probably go through and add a bunch of asserts uh, later on. We haven't been very good with error messages. Um, size. Oh, as U64. Okay, so take the base of the current page. And X, expected mapping. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of a good way to do this. Um, trying to think of a clean way of doing this. So I want to add these together. If that is above the end, then we want to return out. Or if it's none, we want to return out. So uh, let next page is equal to this. So we're going to compute, compute the address of the next page. Uh, this can overflow on the final page. Um, and that's fine because we're storing it as the option. And then we're going to say if next page is none or um, if we made it to the end of all virtual memory or next page dot unwrap is less than uh, is greater than end or we made it to the end of the free request. 
return some uh, success. Right? So if the next page, uh, if the next page is none, which means we made it to the end of virtual memory because we had an overflow, or the next page is greater than the end, so it's beyond what we want to um, free, then we're at the end. We're done. Return success. OK. Uh, otherwise, we've got more to do. And here we can do cur page is equal to self.translate fizzmem. And then here we can do next page unwrap. And this is vert adder. And put a question mark on that. So translate will only fail if it's non canonical. Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this failing if you ask for a non canonical thing. If you're trying to free, if you try to free spanning a non canonical space, I think I want it to fail. Maybe. Completely irrelevant piece of knowledge. Your Twitch handle, Gamozo, if we read it in Greek, uh, you recognize the gamma and the mu, I suspect. <laughs> it sounds like. Huh. Gamuzo or something like that, and then which translates to "I fuck, I live." Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. Um, okay, compute the address to the next page. This can overflow on the final page. If we made it to the end of all virtual memory, or if we made it to the end of the free request, so these translates will only fail if it's non-canonical, which will make sense. If we span over into a non-canonical space, I want it to fail because I want you to know that you're trying to free across a like memory gap. I could maybe have it silently eat that, potentially. Otherwise, next page is none, end of memory, or next page is greater than end, end of our thing. Otherwise, we have more to do. Cur page is equal to self.translate, the physical memory, and then the virtual address. Seems about right. Seems about right. Uh, vert adder. Next page unwrap. Yeah. Yeah, that's the address of the next page. And then we'll translate that, and we'll, we'll see if that's a thing. And if it is a thing, then we'll go here. And here we'll say, if cur page dot page is sum, uh, we have a page to free. Uh, oops, page. Otherwise, we have nothing to do, so we just continue and go to the next one. So we're gonna let this. Uh, we're gonna let this. Um, if you free memory that's not mapped, I think. Uh, I might actually want free to fail if it's not mapped. Uh, what is this language? It's something like an evolution offshoot of straight C with elements from other languages. It tries to be a high quality general purpose systems language focusing uh, mostly on safety and security. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. It's a great way to describe it. It's memory safe and thread safe. Yep. Essentially C with uh, fringe benefits. Yeah, that sounds about right. OK, so there are a couple difficult things that I need to figure out uh, idea-wise. Do I want free to fail if you try to free memory, which is not mapped? Or do I want it to silently uh, ignore pages, such that you can give it a wide range, and it will free things if they exist, and it will do nothing? Uh, if they do not exist. I could also make it a flag that I can pass to it so I can use it in different modes. Um, 
but I think I'll never really have a situation where... I don't think I'm ever going to have a situation where I will... I'm trying to think. Will there ever be a point where I would want to free something that I don't already know is valid? And I don't think so. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, panic here. Or not panic, but we're going to say if cur page is none, return none. So here's where it gets really fucking annoying, though, because we just made a decision to make this kind of simpler. And we're going to say if the page, uh, if the page is not mapped, uh, return failure. Okay, so this is where it gets really fucking hard, though. Do we want this to free things? <laughs> if any of it can fail. So, <laughs> I might have to, you want to fail if someone tries to unmap non-map memory, but I'm thinking for like myself personally, for CPU research, there might be situations where I just want to like blow a hole in memory somewhere, or like set up a playground where I'm doing a bunch of allocations in a region and then just blow the whole fucking thing away. But I can add that when I need that. Totally. So, here's the problem. We just made that easier, but now we need to make it so that we probably don't want to free anything if any of the freeing fails. Does that make sense? So, like, if the freeing can fail, we probably don't want to free anything. So, if you tell it to free one meg of memory, and there are 32k allocated there, do you want it to free the 32k and then return a failure? or not do anything. If it's the case of not do anything, then I need to prove that I can free everything prior, which basically means I need a copy of this fucking loop. Yeah, loop validate, build a page list, yeah. So that's what, that's what we're gonna do. And our allocations right now, and I think I have an item for it, uh, an issue, a little ticket. I love how we're still working on this ticket. Well, we actually fixed that. Uh, this. Make page table mappings undo during failures. So, um, when I'm, now that we're implementing free, what we'll do is we'll have free get called in the failure path of map. So, we don't want map to see if it can succeed, because checking if a map can succeed is nearly impossible. <laughs> like, checking that we can map something is really difficult because we'd have to pre-compute everything about all of the sizes and all of the pages and everything that would need to be created. We'd need to do a bulk allocation to make sure we can get all of those pages in one fill swoop with, with or without failing. So I think what we're going to do is, and that's going to be an edge case. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to implement map, we'll call map init, and then map init we'll call map internal. So we'll put this in one big function that will take an option. On failure, or it'll actually probably take a result, and on failure, it will return the number of bytes that were allocated from the virtual address that was requested, and then on failure, we'll call free, and we'll free everything that we allocated up to that point. So this is going to be actually how we're going to undo allocation failures. Um... So free has to be bulletproof. Okay. Hell yeah. Whatever the callie does, the, the caller has to be able to undo it. Yeah, I agree. Can't you just make the fa uh, failure state a stored variable? Um, kind of, but I, I, I do want to undo it because it would be very burdensome on the caller to manage this. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this loop twice. Um, and I can do this. Ah, uh, fuck, what can I do here? Uh, this is gonna be first, make sure all of the pages in the range requested are present. 
Uh, if the page is not mapped, return failure. Great. Then at this stage, compute the address of the next page. Uh, this is going to overflow on the final page. Um, yep. And then here, uh, this will break. We made it to the end. Success. Um, and then otherwise, we have more to do. Go here, go to cur page, and we might be able to just do this uh, sum that success, and then this is going to be for validate in true false. Hehe, <laughs> bye bye code duplication. The final page. Uh, okay. Otherwise, we have more to do. So that's going to translate the initial page. Uh, and then this is going to, if validate and this, uh, we'll say this, if validate, um, uh, check to see if we're on the validate pass. So um, uh, we go through the memory range twice. The first time we, uh, the first time we go through the memory range twice. The first time we validate that uh, that all virtual memory in the range requested is present and uh, and valid. The second time we actually perform the freeze. Okay. Woof. Okay. Check to see if we're on the validate pass. If we're on the validate pass, uh, check to see if this page is present. All right. If the page is present, then uh, return none. If it's if it's not present, if it's not present, uh, return failure. If the uh, if the page is not present. Okay. So if this fails, we return out. If this fails, we return out. Otherwise, at this stage, we're in the uh, free the page. Otherwise, we compute this. If anything fails, these should not fail. These are infallible in this case. Uh, this checked add, if that fails, then that's fine. That overflow is actually OK in this condition. If we're at the end, then we break. Otherwise, we go and we translate the next level. So if any of them are non-canonical or any of them are not mapped, that will fail. Beautiful. Hi, Gamoso. For dynamic binary instrumentation, uh, for inserting mutation loop in a hooked function, for example, is there a need to develop customized debugger or is it overkill? I personally use a customized debugger in those environments and it works really, really well. Um, I have a high performance uh, debugger. Actually, Mesos is uh, open source. Um, uh, Gamoso Labs, GitHub, IO, or GitHub. Uh, Mesos. So Mesos is actually a debugger for Windows written in Rust. Um, but doing something similar to this on Linux is relatively easy. And it allows you to really hook into something uh, in a pretty fast manner. So most debugging APIs, APIs are actually relatively fast. Uh, in terms of like Windows, I have like perf numbers here. Um, I can create, uh, I can allocate 6 million breakpoints a second. I can apply 3 million breakpoints a second. I can clear 15 million breakpoints a second, and I can handle 10,000 breakpoints a second. And using a normal debugger like GDB or something scripted or pretty much anything in Python, it's going to be really hard to hit numbers like this, 10,000 breakpoints a second. But it turns out 10,000 breakpoints a second gives you a lot of room to 
track and hook and analyze a, a program under test. So it's pretty neat. Um, I miss what happened after setting up multi-core. Is the kernel going to be mapped into all cores? Uh, yes. So all the cores share the same virtual memory space. Now that's my bootloader allows expressing different models. So yesterday we actually had all different cores booting into their own virtual address spaces, uh, which is something that I will likely use uh, personally for a couple research projects that I do. Um, but currently, all of them will come and use the same page table such that shared memory and globals uh, can be used to pass that along. Uh, if so, uh, isn't the kernel multi-thread uh, core entrant meaning uh, you need a memory management lock? Uh, just in case two threads call these functions and overlap. Yep, all of these things are locked. Um, it is impossible to call these functions. So Rust, the way uh, the way locks work in Rust, and we had to implement these with spin locks. Uh, so we implement these lock cells. So in Rust, race conditions are impossible. Uh, just fundamentally, it is impossible to have a race condition in Rust. Uh, everything is exclusive if it can be shared. And that means that it is impossible to have a global that is mutable. It's illegal to have a, a mutable global. So, to be fair and safe for us, yes, of course. Um, so what we do is we implement a lock cell, which is a spin lock, and the spin lock holds a gener generic value T, which is held inside of this. And this allows us to create a new lock, which holds a value. And then we can use that, we can pass around a reference to that, and someone can call lock with a reference, a non-mutable reference, and this will make sure it has exclusive access. And then this will return a lock cell guard, which is another, struct uh, another structure that then allows, via implementing deref and deref mute, allows that structure, this lock cell guard, to appear as if it is the underlying type that is held. But since we put it in this guard structure, this new structure, that means that when that structure gets dropped, or when it goes out of scope, when it's no longer physically possible to access that structure anymore, drop will get invoked, which is like a destructor, which is scope-based, which will then cause the lock to get released. And at that point, this drop is... You can no longer access the variable once this drop occurs. So this guarantees that when it goes out of scope, the, the lock gets dropped. And if it is still in scope, which means it's possible to access that variable, it is locked. So it's really cool. It's a, a very simple model of ensuring that. And that means that my entire kernel <laughs> cannot have anything shared in a global. If anything is in a global, it has to be in a lock cell or an atomic number. Uh, whoa, and that should not be const. That should be static. I make that mistake a lot. Uh, but I'm glad I fixed that. Anyways. So yeah, any statics that I have... Um, cannot be mutable, or they have to be an atomic, which is fundamentally safe to share, or a lock cell, which contains the type. And that means that I can't be in these functions without having mutable access to a, um, without having mutable access to a page table. And I can't have mutable access to a page table unless I have exclusive access to a page table because mutable is exclusive in Rust. And thus, if the table is shared, then it's required that it was in a lock cell somewhere, which means I have the lock. It's, it's really weird, but it, it basically, everything is guaranteed. If you ever have a mutable reference to anything in Rust, it is guaranteed exclusive ownership. It's really cool. It's really cool. So, I love it. So, anywhere you have a mutable reference to something, you know that you have full access to that thing, and no one else can possibly be operating on that in parallel. Really, really cool. It's one of the reasons why I like Rust, because it's, to me, it's very intuitive, and it's easy to understand the scoping and all these things of the um, locks. Uh, whereas in other language, things, things can get really wishy-washy, and they're not very concrete. You know, variable went out of scope, lock is now released. Okay. So, we are implementing free. We have the validate pass. I think everything was good here, right? Here we translate to the next level. If anything is not canonical or not mapped, we will bail. We have the lock access, so we have exclusive access. The page table will not be changing, which now means we can free these pages. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're pretty much ready to do this. 
Uh, and this is ref. And the compiler will be smart enough to make these like two different things. It probably won't actually make a loop here. It'll just make two copies of the code, depending on if it thinks it's better to do that or not. Uh, so that's my way of making two copies. In the free pass, we will call free. So we'll call uh, pmem free. And we'll free a page. Uh, in this case, the um, cur page dot page unwrap dot zero. Uh, so the, the the page is a tuple of the physical address of the base of the page and the offset into it. So we're going to free the page here. We'll call free, and then the size is uh, ooh, it's not 4K. It is cur page dot size. Okay, uh, fizzmem. Did you just make a free operation atomic? Uh, what do you mean by that? So the, the free is up to you to implement because it's part of this trait. So we take a mutable reference to something that implements fizzmem and we're going to call free on that. And then it's up to that to give an API that allows me to free memory. And in this case, our free, uh, well, it doesn't actually do anything yet. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I guess that's where we are now. Uh, it either completely fails or completely, completely succeeds. Correct. It does not change the memory mapping if it fails. Absolutely. Yep. OK. Uh, 233. Um, oh, as U64. All right, so that's going to call free fizz. And this we're going to say uh, print trying to free this for this bytes. And that hex, uh, we'll just do this, fizz.0 size. We're not actually freeing anything yet, but this will let us see. Nothing will be hitting free. OK. Um, and that's going to translate. That's going to free. So we want the map to actually fail and like undo everything that it did. Um, so this one could potentially create intermediary tables, uh, but that's fine. Ooh. Mm. So if I want to free the tables that I created, I can keep a list of the tables that I created, I think. So when I go to, so translate doesn't actually um, allocate anything. It, it translates, but it doesn't actually allocate anything. Here it allocates things. So this could change the page table. Um, so in this case, we're going to translate, blah, blah, blah. And then this could actually fail while we're creating tables. And I probably want to log what I created and then free those if we failed. So we'll probably wrap this whole function in a um, in like a map raw int, so we can use the question mark but still return uh, a result, which is the pages that we intermedi intermediarily created. Because we can't free, we can't f we can't call our free routine uh, on a on something that isn't a mapped page. So if this fails while treating the tables during making the mapping. Uh, we need to actually make sure that we um, can undo that operation. And then in these, which actually map multiple pages, that these can then undo all the things that they did. So why iterate the memory range twice instead of failing the first time you encounter a gap? Uh, because then I wouldn't be able to, um, because I would have freed memory that uh, I said I failed to free. Uh, but I like partially freed some of it. So it's just a little con uh, confusing to a user. And it also means I would potentially like leak memory. 
So, okay. Okay. So I think this makes sense. So this is going to call free fizz. Uh, if we do free, and free is unsafe. Alec is not actually unsafe, but free is uh, mapping. So here, we're going to print all these statistics about this. And then we're going to say page table free using pmem. We're going to free the memory at 3337. Uh, and we'll free one byte. Expect failed, failed to free. So we'll free one byte. That should free all of it. Um, trying to free this for this many bytes. Beautiful. OK, so if we change this uh, by just changing this to a 4K, we're now going to use 4K paging. Great, and that's going to try to free that. And let's see, this is going to allocate, let's allocate at least, we're gonna map four, four megs. And we can simply change the underlying page size. And then here we're gonna free, uh, we're gonna free uh, 8192. So this will free two pages. Trying to free this, trying to free this. Perfect, for 4K bytes each. Now, if I were to change this entire thing to 1 meg pages, this should only need to perform, uh, or 2 meg pages, this should only have to perform 1 free. Um, there we go. Now the question is, should I require that when you're freeing something that you specify the entire range? Should I allow freeing one byte and it would free the entire page that is held there? And I think that is what I want, actually. Um, I think I do want that. I, I think I do want that ability. It is already an unsafe function, so it's on you to understand the semantics of that, that it will free uh, all pages in that range. It shouldn't be required to free the entire range. Yeah, um, basically, I could make this say, hey, you requested to free 8K, but we're actually going to free a meg here. But I think that should be on you to understand that. Making gaps or cut off memory. Well, the problem is here, it, it might free things that you don't expect it to. If you didn't know these were uh, 2 meg pages, and you freed this, um, this would free the whole 2 meg page, which is what it's doing. It's saying this whole 2 megs is back up for use. So we could require the caller to understand the alignments and basically align all of the stuff to the boundaries so it understands that and then fail to free unless we are freeing exactly the amount that it's requesting. Or, or, um, we can have it free that and it's on the caller, since free is an unsafe function, the caller has to understand the ramifications of trying to free one byte in a page. It'll free the whole page. Um, that's something that we can actually change later. It doesn't matter uh, how we want to implement those semantics, uh, but we will want to document it. I think it's difficult because it would require the I don't know. Yeah, I think we might require the explicit size, but but it is unsafe, so it's kind of hard to say. Uh, pretty much in every circumstance where I'm going to be using free, I'm going to understand that, and I'm going to be passing in the sizes exactly as I expect. So I might, I might make it require exact sizes. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. Actually, let's just let's just do that. Um, uh, this is going to accumulate uh, let me to free uh, number of bytes that will be freed by this operation. And then here, this we don't actually need to uh, do checked ads on uh, because it cannot overflow. It's impossible to have the whole 64-bit address space mapped. So then here, invalidate, we'll just say uh, to free plus equals Per page uh, size as uh, U64. Accumulate the amounts of memory were 
uh, going to free. And this is going to be the number of bytes, the number of virtual bytes that are going to be freed. Because we're going to free more physical bytes, potentially. The amount of virtual memory we're going to free. And we'll say that here. Uh, amount of virtual memory that will be freed in this operation in bytes. And then at the end, after the first iteration, here we can say uh, if size is not equal to to free, return none. Uh, and we can say validate here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if we're going to free more virtual memory space than the user requested, we're going to have problems. Uh, okay. So it should be identical. So this should now fail. Failed to free. Perfect. And this will handle alignment and stuff for us automatically, right? Because this is going to add up all the sizes of all the memory that it touches. So even if we give it an unaligned address, so if we did this, um, and we're using two meg pages, if I did two minus one, uh, this would actually fail. It's actually impossible to make an unaligned one succeed because if we change this uh, into two megs, it's not actually gonna free two megs. Well. This will allow alignment because I can say I want to free four megs here. Oh, that'll fail as well. Oh, yeah, it will. It will. Yep. Yeah, it requires strict alignment. Okay, perfect. So this should work. Yep, it's going to free those. We're going to free four megs. Okay, it'll only free exactly as much as you tell it to. Love it. Make the color track the page size seems better uh, downstream. Yeah. Is it possible to work around that if you allocate touching regions and free both? Um, let's see. Are you talking about in the virtual free case or in this case? If you allocate touching regions and free both. In this case, this will be fine. This will, this will allow freeing touching regions because I don't maintain, I don't know what regions are. I don't maintain any knowledge of uh, virtual regions. I don't like that. I don't like that that's a thing that things like um, Windows and Linux do, but they do that. They do track the regions of virtual memory, and that allows them to uh, free if you don't give it a size, because it'll know the size. Uh, but Rust doesn't really do that. You allow freeing individual pages. Absolutely, yeah. So this will basically require that you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly how many bytes are going to be affected, so you understand the page size and all of that. And other than that, it'll just free arbitrary things. It's unsafe, so it'll just punch holes wherever you want in memory, as long as they're mapped, and as long as it does exactly as many bytes as the user expected. So, yeah, and I do like that about Rust. Rust typically has uh, caller held lengths rather than callee held lengths. For example, allocate in or free in Rust, it actually gives you the length of what is being freed. And you don't get that. You don't get that in libc free. In libc free, you are forced to hold metadata of how big the thing is that you're freeing. And in Rust, we don't have to do that because we know the size of what we're freeing because sizes are a thing in Rust and things aren't just fucking pointers without associated lengths. <laughs> Um, and that also means that when we're freeing virtual memory, it's the same thing. We actually know the size of what we're going to free. We don't need the kernel, or in this case, the memory manager, because everything's the kernel. We don't need the memory manager to keep that metadata for us, which is fantastic. I love it. It's how I make all of my kernels. It's much different than a lot of people design their kernels, because a lot of people design their kernels to be very loose and floofy of just like, eh, fuck it. Like, the kernel will do all of the shit for you. Whereas I'm the other way. I'm like, the kernel will do literally what you tell it to do. Nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> and if you're wrong, it will tell you you're wrong. Fuck off. Come back later. Um, the, the whole like POSIX API subsystem is very loose. 
Uh, it allows for a lot of things to kind of partially, maybe, sort of happen. Uh, and I think that's bad juju. I really do. I don't like that. I write very strict uh, kernels, which then means that I can get more performance. I can uh, have more understanding of what's actually going on because things aren't loose, right? Seems like a very C mentality. You alloc these bytes, no more, no less. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so this free, now, it will free these. It'll, it'll try and add these to the free list. Um, perfect. Okay. So, but this is not done yet. And I'll, I'll show you why it's not done yet, because now we're at the hard part, unfortunately. We actually have to free the page table entries that hold them if we were to completely free something. So in this case, we're freeing this entire thing. This is probably the first time we've used this level in the page table. So unfortunately, this is relatively slow, but I don't think there's a better way to do this unless I held metadata or my own structure, which I don't think I want to do because I don't really care about the performance of freeze, uh, virtual freeze, uh, because I use object pools in my kernels. Uh, we haven't done that yet. I don't use generic allocators. That's not really something that I like to do. Um, I typically make object pools. Uh, in Rust, it works really well with templating, where I would allocate an object pool to hold a certain number of objects, and then I will allocate and free those objects uh, out of that pool of a fixed size. Um, but I might have like a dynamic like slab style allocator, um, potentially. Nevertheless, virtual allocs and freeze will only happen for like big swaths of memory. They'll either happen when I want to like create new stuff out of thin air, right? Virtual memory is like where I create new memory from. It's my source of new memory. And then at that point, I can manage it without having to go and modify these page tables. Because um, we're about to do some expensive stuff. So we have to, every time we delete an entry, so we free the page, uh, which is... Um, maybe questionable at this stage. Uh, we might want to free the entries first. Yeah. So this is going to be zero out the, uh, zero out the, um, last level page. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, tables is equal to this. This is going to be um, uh, cur page dot um, yeah I think we might do this on the size we might match the size there are a couple different ways I can do this um, I don't want to have unwrap, so I want these to be the actual fizz adders of the different levels of the tables. And these are going to be the entries in the tables, uh, table entries, in the order of which they were created, in which case we'll have like um, carpage.pml4e.unwrap, right, stuff like this. Uh, PDPE, PDE, PTE, right? But. Uh, this is not necessarily valid because, like, in this case, this would actually crash. Uh, we would hit an unwrap here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, panic. Oh, we do have panics working. I don't know why we didn't in the other spot. Maybe maybe the panics hit the code that was panicking and it was a recursive panic or something. But we got a beautiful message here because it's Rust. How fucking sweet is that? Page table source lib 243. Uh, panic here. And that's saying unwrap on an unvalue because we have large pages, in which case this is unused. Um, so, I think we're going to do kind of what I did before. I'm going to do page uh, fizz adder. I'm going to pre allocate it with empty. So these are the table entries, and then we're going to match and we're going to fill them based on the mode. Uh, cur page size, and our free is actually going to work across page sizes, which is really cool. So if you have intermixed touching page sizes, 
Uh, we'll make that work for you. Uh, page type, page 4K. God, this song's so good. I gotta restart it. One step closer, man. Lincoln, Lincoln Park is fucking fantastic. Rip Chester, man. Uh, table entries, zero, is equal to... Um, Uh, table entries is equal to per page PML for E dot unwrap. Oop, entries, entries. And then this will return let table entries is equal to this, right? Just like before. Takes me back to like playing playing some Dota one. PDPE, PDE, uh, PTE. Uh, semis. And in this case, we'll return a slice to table entries for um, all four are valid. So that's a four K page. This is a two meg page, just this, only three are valid. This page, uh, one gig, only the top two are valid, only two entries. Okay, and that's an exhaustive match, fuck yeah. So this is, uh, get the uh, physical addresses of the page table entries for the page table, uh, for the uh, page table uh, for the entry we're about to free. So we're going to free the page here. That's at the very end. So here I can um, I can go through each. I actually want to go in opposite order. Yeah. Um, uh, for entry in, we're going in reverse order. It's fu really fucking important. Uh, we're going to go into uh, table entries, iter.reverse. I think it's dot .rev. It is. Uh, go up the page table listing. And here, we're going to say, um, we're going to free the page at the end. And then here, we're going to do a core pointer right. And we got to translate that through uh, fizz. Whatever that is, I think it's um, let uh, uh, we're gonna say virtual address is equal to the this is unsafe. Oh, this whole function is unsafe. Thank God. Uh, fizz mem translate the virtual address uh, core pointer. Um, let the index is equal to the entry and OXFFF uh, divided by core mem size of U64. Fuck. Uh, get the index of the um, table entry for this level. Okay, so we're gonna get the index for that. We're then going to let table is equal to um, entry.0 and not OXFFF. This is gonna um, get the base for the entire 512 entry table for this level. And then we're going to translate the table, and this is a fizz adder. And we're going to translate for uh, 4,096 bytes. So this is going to be um, specifically, yeah, we'll say 4,096. But um, this is going to be, uh, let's see. I guess that could technically fail at this stage. Um, 
It really shouldn't be able to, but in theory it could. Uh, we're gonna expect this here. So everything we want to do at this stage uh, has to be failable, or has to panic because we validated everything and we want to panic if we can't succeed in whatever we're doing. So in this case, the uh, current page size, um, that will always succeed because we were able to do it before. Then at this stage, these iterators, everything here will not fail. This could potentially fail. So we're going to say, whoa, could not get access to uh, table. That will basically never happen, but that will panic if it does. That will guarantee that if we cannot free all this stuff, uh, will fail. We don't want to use question mark at any point in here except for like size here. And in fact, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to do this. Uh, unwrap. Um, convert the uh, table into a virtual address. And we're going to do unwrap here. And basically, during the free stage, um, we should not return failure anywhere inside of this stage. We must panic if we cannot do something we want. Otherwise, we violate the semantics of uh, all or none freeze. Okay. Damn, I haven't played Dota 2 in a long time either. Yeah, I've, I've played Dota 1 for about four or five years, and then Dota 2 came out. I played Dota 2 starting from beta, like, in 2011. I've got some old-ass screenshots when, like, all the icons are, are, like, question marks. Really fun. Really fun stuff. Okay. Now we're going to uh, convert the page table into a mutable uh, Rust slice, and we'll do this... Um, table is equal to core slice from raw parts mutable. This is going to be a mutable reference to uh, vad as mute u64 for 512 entries. So this is the whole table. Okay, so now, now that we've done that shit, <laughs> uh, overwrite the uh, mapping, overwrite the entry, to our, uh, overwrite the entry with a zero. Okay, so now we're gonna do table index is equal to zero. And we're gonna have to, we'll invul pig this when we get to the end. Free the page, we'll invul pig at the end. Please remind me to do this. I'm just gonna do it now, because I can't fuck this up. We're gonna invul pig the, um, uh, the vert adder, uh, the vert adder of this stage, which is, um, let page size is equal to curve page dot size, uh, let, uh, page vatter is equal to, uh, curve page dot base adder, unwrap both of those, okay, curve page, in this case, this will be page size. I think we used it down here. We did. Uh, oops. Oh, that is, yeah. Page size. Oh, one-liner. Fuck. <laughs> Barely. OK, we're going to invul pig the, uh, cur uh, the page vatter. And this is going to uh, invalidate the TLB for this page as we have um, uh, converted something from present to non-present. So basically, we need to tell the caches in the processor because they're lazy. Um, not lazy in term. Uh, that's not an insult. Like I'm just saying technically, the caches are lazy. Uh, so we have to tell the processor that any mapping that it previously used for this virtual address is no longer valid. Um, and I think that'll rewalk the table uh, for that. I'm pretty sure that'll invalidate at each level of the table as well. So we'll invul pig. Bye-bye. So overwrite this entry with a zero. 
Now, this is not correct right now, and this should triple fault, but let's make sure uh, 243 base adder. Ooh, mapping. Vert base. Ah, oh, vert base. Okay. I don't even know my own APIs. Uh, vert base. I actually do like that more. 274. Expected a U64. Find a U size. That's a U64 right there. So we'll divide that down to get the index. 288. Well, well, now it's going to be a U size. So we'll actually go the other way. We'll do as U size divided by the U size. We're ending with FF. It's fits, it fits in a fucking U size. Uh, 297. We have a virtual address here. Vert adder as U64. Done. And let me check if invilpig can crash. Uh, x 6 invilpig. I think you can invilpig on... Um, on invalid memory. GP if CPL not zero. If it's a register or if the lock prefix is used. Uh, yes, so it looks like this cannot fault. Um, invilpig cannot fault. Uh, seal flush is the one that can fault. But we're not doing seal flush. But this one will PF or GP um, in 64-bit. It can GP on non-canonical or page fault. Okay. So invilpig, uh, we're not doing it anywhere. This is the first place we invilpig. And we don't need to actually check if it's safe to invilpig because it is always safe to invilpig. Um, let's see. Uh, and that's as U64. Oh, page vatter. Oh, invilpig. Uh, oh, I see. Invilpig wants uh, U size. And we're fine to truncate here. If we end up running this code, uh, if we end up running this code in the 32 bit mode, it'll just invilpig some random shit. Uh, unless it crashes if paging is disabled. Let's see. CPL. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, perfect. So this is not going to work. This should triple fault pretty catastrophically because we're going to fuck up their page tables pretty bad. Um, 243. What? We can't get the vert base? You're lying to me. How would that succeed the first pass? If we're invalidate, first pass. Here we get vert base. And then when we restart, we retranslate cur page. Um. How is that possible? Maybe it's maybe it's that's just the way it's failing. Uh, I'm going to not do this, and we're going to see if it still fails. Okay. Cool. Wow, that is a really interesting uh, uh, failure uh, path. Interesting. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We go through, this is the page. We're always freeing the page. Here we're going through the page table entries in reverse order. So we're going upwards to the highest level. This level, we're going to zero out the entry. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, if... Uh, uh, table dot iter dot fold OU sixty four X accumulator X accumulator or X um table zeroed is equal to this. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, uh, false. Oh, start zeroed accumulator and X. 
is zero. Okay. Technically, we can go non-present, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna say uh, check to see if this entire table is no longer in use. Now you see where we're going, right? If the table is zeroed, we have to go through every single address in the table, which is going to be really slow. We could kind of optimize this to only do this on like boundaries and stuff, but we're going to do it naive and get it working first. Um, a working implementation is always better than an optimized broken implementation. Here we're going to say x starts out as true, so we're going to say it starts zeroed. And then we're going to, uh, we can probably get this up here. Yes, we can, just barely. Accumulator and x and page present. Uh, in use. So it starts out as true. We're going to and it with this uh, if and with page present is equal to, uh, not equal to zero. Oh, and it with equal to zero. So if the page is not present, then it's true, in which case we and 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 and. If at any stage in this uh, iterator we, ha we hit false, then we're going to stop. Uh, basically, that means we found a present page, which means uh, if in use break, um, in use, we cannot uh, do anything more. So if it's in use, correct. Table iter all. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, you told me about that last time, didn't you? Okay. In use, uh, table iter all. All of these have to be true. For it to be true, in this case, page present must be zero. So all pages in the entire table must be not present. We just zeroed out this one. If we didn't do that, then we know at least one's gonna be present. And then what we can do is, if anything is in use, uh, we're gonna break out of this loop. Uh, there we go. So this should now unwrap on a 243. Table entries. So we're on a one meg page or a two meg page right now. So on a two meg page, we have the PDE. Zero after uh, it's not in use. That is not. Um, um, I actually do want to zero at first because the very first iteration, we are on the last level. So let's say a 4K page. This is the page table entry. So the page table entry for the page we're about to free, we zero that out. Then we see if anyone else is using this page table. If someone is using this page table, then we cannot do anything else. But if someone else is, if no one else is using this page table, then we can free the table itself. Um, so we do want to zero that first. Um, how do you get the crown? Uh, you just need to have Twitch Prime. You need to link Twitch to your um, to your Amazon uh, account. <laughs> Are you professional? Yes, I am. Okay. So this will get the index into this level, and I think we might have an off by one because this this should not happen. Um, 
And that has to do with this. Table index is zero. That basically frees that, but why would that change the cur page? It shouldn't. That is nuts. Here, vert base is now failing. Okay, next page is this. Cur page is translated, otherwise we're breaking out. And this is on, yeah, we go in reverse order. So we start with the PTE, or in this case, the PDE. We know that it's a two meg page. Um, index is the offset divided by U64. Get the base of the table. In it with not FFF, translate that, convert that into a slice of U64s for 512. We zero out the index. See, I don't know how unmapping memory would cause this to fail. Oh, I think I know how this could happen. Um, the... Whatever we're resetting this to might be wrong. Next page. No, it is next page. Next page is the vert base plus the size. I have no idea uh, what I'm watching, but great job. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We're writing a, we're writing a memory manager, a virtual memory manager for a kernel right now. This is one of my best virtual memory managers I've ever written though. I've never I've never transparently supported both large and small pages through the same API set. I'm super excited for this. This is going to be incredibly powerful. Um Oh my god. I might be able to panic with a message. I don't think I can print here, but I can panic. I'm pretty sure I can panic here with a formatted message. Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, so I can't, I can't print, right? Because the print macro is part of the OS. But panicking, panicking, uh, oh, I had my like a uh, slipper on the, um, on the air vent and like I put my foot in it and it's like super toasty warm. Wow, that is a great feeling. Okay, here we're gonna say if cur page vert base is none, panic, whoa, on debug the shit out of that cur page. Okay. Yeah, so, oh, are we freeing this shit twice? Because... Because we got to the... F oh, whoa, 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 uh, um... No, we free the page. Then we end the pig. So we unlink the page from the table. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna assert... Yeah, because we're, fr we're, fr why would we have the same page twice? That would mean, that mean, that would mean this is wrong. Okay, we're going to hex print that. We're going to hex print this. We're going to hex print this. Cur page, cur page dot vert base, cur page dot size. Uh, if not in use, oh, cause it's, 
You're right. You're right. Thank you, chat. I think your in use is wrong. Yeah. Uh, in use is inverted. In use. Ah. And I do want that. I do want the inverse. Um, otherwise, it's an or, right? So all, if all of them are 0, then uh, table not in use. Yeah, I think not in use is good. If it's not in use, oh, if it's not Yeah, because that's the same meaning. If it's not not in use, should I or it together? No, I think I need to do this. I need to go through all entries and make sure they're all zero. Well, I could stop at the first one. What's the what's the opposite of all? Sum? Okay. If any one of them is non-zero, this is in use. Uh, check to see if this isn't uh, check to see if this check to see if anyone is still using this table. If it's in use, uh, so if any one of them is present, the present bit is not equal to zero, so the present bit is not zero, so it's present. If any of them, and this is actually more performant because that mac uh, the that can stop the second it hits the first one that is in use. It doesn't need to go through the whole table because the first one. Okay, if it's in use, we're done. Okay, well that. Thank you, chat. Uh, 291. Uh, oh, any. Any. If any of them are present. Whew! Okay, it doesn't work yet, but that's fine. So at this point, uh, nobody is using this table itself. We can free it. Fizz mem dot free fizz table dot zero. Uh, oh, yeah, just table. Uh, and then in this case, free fizz. What does that take? Cool, that takes a fizz adder. Okay, so we have a fizz adder, which is the table. Free the table. And then that will cause us to loop to the next level. We'll go through here. We'll then see if that level of the table has any other users. We're gonna zero out this uh, that entry. We're guaranteed to. So if we free that table, we're guaranteed to go up to the next level, which will then zero it out, right? I think. So we zero out this. This is the page table entry. If we, if it's only the the, if it's only the page that we're freeing, we break out of here and we free the page. We did zero out that entry. Otherwise, let's say that this page is unique on its entry. We will free. We will free the table itself, and then we'll go up to the next level, and we'll guarantee that we zero that out. If there is no level above us, well, we'll never get there. This will always stop early uh, once we get to the very top level. It, in theory, if we got to the very top level, would this crash? No, it would just do nothing else. It would free It would free the literal fucking CR3. Um, that's a problem, actually. <laughs> this could potentially get to the top level page table, which is the, literally the CR3, and it could be like, bye-bye. <laughs> no one's using this anymore. So we have to have one exception, which is if, um, we do want to zero it out, but then at this stage, instead of freeing it, we would say, if table is equal to self.table, uh, if it's not equal to the table, um, so this means that if we free an entire page table, it'll still keep it around the, the top level. So this will be, um, nobody is using this table itself, uh, prevent ourselves from freeing the, uh, CR3 
or the root level of the page table. Okay. 305, free fizz, table. Oh yeah, we shadowed that. P table. And then we'll say P table. And this will be P table, the physical address of the table. And if P table, if it's not equal to the actual fucking root page table, we will free it. So if somehow we could free the entire address space, which we won't be able to do in an address space that we're executing in, but we can do it on an address space that we're not executing in. And I do want to support that because I might use that to core out entire virtual memory address spaces uh, or VM address spaces. Wow, there we go. So this freed a page. Yeah, this is exactly what happened. So we told it, we allocated two pages, right? We allocated two pages, two, two meg pages for four megs total. We then want to free those two pages. And what this does is it first goes through that iteration. It then tries to free the first page. Um, it tries to free the table. Well, the table's still in use because there's another uh, two meg use right next to it, the other two megs to the four megs. So we free, we zero out that entry, we free that memory, and then we go to the next page. The next, uh, yeah, we go to the next page, which is the other two megs. In this case, we find out that we can actually free these bottom two levels of the page tables because they're no longer in use. And then we can free the page itself because we free the page last, and then we invul pig after um, after this free. So at this stage, all tables have been removed and zeroed out, and or zeroed out, and then we invul pig that, and that looks great. <laughs> now try to allocate and free all the available memory. Yeah, that's what we're probably gonna do. Okay, so next. We're gonna we're gonna get next level here. Check this out. We're gonna allocate some uh, we're gonna allocate some 4K pages at uh, this is two megs. This is four megs. No, this is four megs. Uh, that's a 64K. Yeah, uh, 64K uh, times 16. Yep, yeah, this is the meg marker. So we're gonna allocate. Um, we'll allocate. We'll allocate eight pages here. And then we're gonna free four megs plus eight pages. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So we free we free the two megs. We then free these pages, and you can tell they're the pages because they're sequential. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we free the page tables, and then we free the 209. Here's 208. This is the last page. That freed everything that we used. Everything that we used. Yes! <laughs> we get everything back. <laughs> everything back. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> well, that's amazing. <laughs> We're not actually freeing anything yet, just a heads up. Heads up. Okay, so that works. Now, we need to update. So now this will not do anything. This will panic. This will panic at any point during this free stage. There are no question marks in here, and there are no early returns. Yep, no question marks inside of this block and there's no early returns in that block. So, oops, uh, kernel page table, oops, shared page table source. Okay. Do me a favor, can you try to write, uh, write bytes to each, each of the pages? Um, like touch all of them, make sure they are, are like paged in or something or, or what? I mean, they are paged in because we don't have paging at all. But like uh, core pointer, write volatile, um, 
Uh, right bytes. Right. I think right bytes is a thing. Uh, we will write to um, this as mute u8 for this many bytes. Uh, oops, and that takes a zero. It's memset. That's memset. So we're memsetting this. Success. And now let's add one to that. Triple fault. And there we go. It's triple faulting. Yep. So those all work. And they're the different page types. So we have... We can intermix page types, and it will just fucking do its thing. Really nice, man. And quite frankly, the API isn't too bad. Um, I want to map this virtual address using this type for this size, RWX. <laughs> and we know RWX works. We did test that earlier. OK. So now we need to fix the guarantees that we have on the um, we need to fix the guarantees that we have on the, so free, um, all pages used to back the allocation will be freed and any inter intermediate page tables which no longer contain any mappings will be unlinked from the table and also freed. Uh, this is an all or none function. If either all memory is freed or the page tables are left unmodified. OK, cool. So we need to make that uh, also true for, um, we need to make that also true for map raw. So what we need is that if map raw fails to allocate uh, during the table operation, basically, if this function, if this function ever returns none, uh, and we only have one sum path in here, I think. Here. So, yeah, and this is where we create the tables. And, oh, yeah, we just wrote this code. Um, how's the readability and everything? How do people like the code style and commenting and everything? In terms of this is an open source project that I'm sure some people would like to at least understand or maybe use. Looks slick. Glad to hear. Thank you, uh, Columbus. I like that. I like that name. OK, so what we need to do is, at any stage that we can return early, uh, that we performed modifications to the page table, we have to undo those modifications. So here we're going to Um, so I'm going to need a small state machine in here, I think, verbose, and that is a compliment, not a dig. Thank you very much. I think this is the most, read most readable code I've seen in the fat last few months. Oh, my God, man. That means so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for all the follows. We're, like, two streams away from probably becoming a Twitch partner, which is fucking weird, man. <laughs> I'm sitting here narrating what I do. And I have been doing on like a daily basis for the past fucking 15 years of my life. And I'm just fucking around writing code. And apparently 126 people think this is what's fun right now. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, god damn. <laughs> now either you are all wrong and don't know what's fun in life. Or I actually do some cool stuff. <laughs> and I think it's the latter. <laughs> it's super fucking cool, man. It's just, it's kind of validation of a, a very substantial investment of my life. <laughs> I mean, jobs, jobs are one thing, right? Job, getting jobs, I've been, I've been able to be employed at cool companies that I like. But having... People think my work is cool, and not managers or bosses who think that they can turn it into money. It's very cool that the work itself is interesting, not the act of making money from the work is interesting, just the work itself. 
And that, that's what's beautiful to me. Okay. So basically, at any stage that we write, so um, we're going to say, if at any point the, if at any point the, um, uh, yeah, I need to figure out if I need to invil pig. Technically, I don't, based on the exclusivity. In theory, in theory, I could like map in a table and something could maybe get speculated. Uh, speculated TLB entries don't persist, so I shouldn't have to invil pig. I don't know. If I set up a, if I set up an entry, wait a minute. I have an idea and I think I can make this infallible. And thank you everyone for all of the follows. Hell yeah, we're definitely gonna get that fucking, that Twitch partner will be able to get emotes. I'll hire someone to make fancy, um, uh, I'm gonna hire someone to make fancy emotes and hire someone to make fancy, um, uh, uh, sub badges and stuff. I would invil pig. I'll get back to that napalm. But since I'm, since I'm only ever this function, this function does not loop. This only maps one entry, which means we actually can pre-compute how many tables and how many pages we need to allocate. So we can actually allocate everything, and then if the allocations fail, we can return out. Um. <laughs> we already have so many emotes <laughs> and an empty list. So I'll be right back. I'll explain what I'm going to do. And I might, I'm trying to think what food I can make that doesn't require me to go away. I'm, I don't know if I have any food. Um, I'll check my fridge. I'll be right back. Okay, so for the next bit of time... Oh, I don't have my headphones on. Holy shit, have I been talking this loud? So, I have my closed ear headphones on, unfortunately, which means I talk really fucking loud. I might change, like, my <laughs> voice intona in in intonation? Anyways, uh, I'm burning up some hamburger right now. I'm gonna make some um, bulgogi beef for 
dinner or whatever this meal is at this hour. Uh, so I'll be probably stepping away every few minutes here to just stir that, but it should be the easiest thing I can make. Hi all, just asking, is the previous stream recorded? Uh, this is my first time here. So the streams are recorded and they're put up on my YouTube. Um, the one from yesterday has not been uploaded yet and also YouTube's been really slow. It's been taking them like two to three days to have a video go up. So, and that's like not saying it's slow for me to upload, like it's uploaded and YouTube is just processing and holding it. So. There's not too much I can do. I'm gonna upload all the VODs tonight. So I'll upload this one and then I'll upload yesterday. So yesterday's I actually forgot to hit record. So last night I had it download the VOD from Twitch such that I could re-upload it to YouTube. Um, let's see, okay. So what we can do here is we actually know what tables we need to create. So this, nothing can fail in this function. Uh, with the exception of these translations can potentially fail. Uh, but we don't have to invalpig anything if we don't actually end up uh, writing anything into the page tables in the intermediate steps. So we're going to, um, uh, let's see. So we need to figure out all the tables that we need to allocate. And uh, this is basically that logic. So this is going to go through and this is going to tell us, this is going to allocate these tables. Um, so I think what I could do is, uh, I can do let mute new, let, doesn't need to be mute. Let new tables is equal to this. And this is going to be, um, if entries ii is none, uh, and this is zero. Yeah, that's the top level, right? PML4E, that's never gonna be none, but let's just say it could be, just so the code is like a little bit more consistent. If this is none, then uh, that's gonna be a new table. And I think we're gonna do this via um, this. Um, okay, so we're gonna create a new empty table and I think we're just gonna alloc, we're gonna call this alloc table and we'll just say um, this is a closure and this can fail. Uh, we don't want it to return out though. So I think what we'll do is, hmm. Um, so that's going to create the size line. We can unwrap the size line. That should never fail. Um, it just Rust validates that the size and the alignment are, uh, that the alignment is a, a power of two. It validates like the size plus the alignment don't end up with an overflow. It kind of just validates some basics about the, um, the basics about that structure. So I gotta manage my tibia makers one second here. So I might actually be out of runes. I might actually have to make a rune run quick to pick up some new blank runes. Do do do. Um. Damn, I have a lot of runes now. What happens when you train all day long? But how's everyone doing so far? Well, I'm gonna be a little bit slow here while cooking, trying to figure all this out. Um, do I not have an empty purple backpack? How do I not have an empty purple backpack? Um, well, that's a problem. Check out Heroic uh, Katora's comment. Uh, holy, I just realized you're the guy whose blog uh, posts about minimal noise research kernel I read months ago. Yeah, that's me. That is me. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Do we have to use small vec as a stack of allocated pages? We don't necessarily, uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to stir this food quick.
I have created a culinary masterpiece. Ah, my special bulgogi beef. I actually got a new garlic powder that I'm super excited to try out. All right. Let's see if this is good, though. Oh, y'all. Fuck, y'all. That's delicious. It's still not the best one I've ever made. All right. We're going to get a small intermission because I have to do... I have to pick up some runes quick. And I can't really code while eating anyways. So everyone tell me about your day. Show video food. I don't have a webcam plugged in right now. Oh, fuck. I gotta drop stuff off in my house first. Korean staple, always good. Yeah, it's super easy to make. Takes me, you know, a minute to make the, make the sauce. Absolutely delicious. Okay, we gotta pick up some... We had to go to Carlin to pick up some uh, backpacks of runes. <clears throat> Just starting mine. <laughs> Watching the stream while cooking and eating breakfast? Hell yeah. So, what's, what's everyone doing here? A lot of people here programming? Or are you just interested in programming? Are you programming professionally as a hobby? Are you a student? I buy giant jars of kimchi from the Korean supermarket. Uh, recommend it if you can find it. You know, I've never gotten too big into kimchi, but it's it's growing on me. I realize it's like what's kind of required. Um, Carlin, yes. Oh, I don't have enough gold. Mistakes were made. Professional. Hell yeah, Lord Dankington. Plan, uh... Playing the customized debugger uh, development and writing the lexical analyzer as an assignment. That's not super fun. What is this game? This is called Tibia. This is an old game that I used to play back when I was a wee young kid. And I kind of still play it to this day. This is on a private server. That's actually an older version of the game uh, than is out in retail now. Um... You know, I just, I like living in the past, so, so here I am. But yeah, off, off screen, I'm always, uh, off screen, I'm always training my characters. I'm having them fight each other so I can get skills, which are kind of pointless, but, uh, you know, it's about the high scores. I'm a Chromium developer. That is awesome. Hell yeah. Mm. Working on a project in Go professionally. That's awesome. Were you looking specifically for a job working with Go? Um, or did you kind of just end up in that role? That sounds pretty neat. I know Go is still a relatively rare uh, language for a lot of professionals. Uh, tried to start learning Swift earlier, and Apple's uh, REPL's uh, stack traces... <laughs> Every time I press tab, I don't think I've written too much Swift. Isn't, what is, Swift is their iOS dev thing. I guess that works on their native systems too. I don't, I don't need to go here. Um, it's very similar to Objective-C, right? You can write like Objective-C scopes in it or something. There's like a backwards compat layer or something weird. Or am I thinking of something else? Yes. Yes. Up uh, by four backpack. Yeah. Okay. Got a bunch of backpacks. That has some gold in it, and then I have to buy these runes. Because I use these runes, I make items pretty much all day long. All right. So I gotta buy these blank runes. A 
Yes. Three, four. That should fill up that backpack. And then this backpack. One, two, three, four. All right. Uh, how did you learn about virtualization technologies? Uh, any suggestion how to learn that? I read the Intel manual and that's about it. I just read the like Intel manual section about BTX and then eventually the AMD manual on it, on their version, which is called SVM. Um, I don't know, that's how I learn a lot of stuff. Uh, I had like a decent intuition just of like how they might do it. And it turns out a lot of it is quite similar to how they might do it. And it kind of made it easy to bridge the gap between the documentation and expectations. Um, all right. Uh, Swift has a lot of ideas similar to Rust, actually. Huh. So it's a probably a good language, then. <clears throat> Worked as a Java developer for 15 years and wanted to work with Go, so I sought out jobs uh, looking for it. That's amazing. How long did it take to find something that was uh, in Go? I'm guessing there are probably, like, communities where you can, like, look for Go um, development jobs or something. I know Rust has, like, a couple boards like that. I don't actually know how common Go is, to be honest in like a professional capacity. Okay, and then we'll drop these. Just some spare backpacks here. And then these are rune replacements. Okay. Doop. All right. So now I just have to uh, grab those runes on my other characters quick. And I will be good to go. I'm still eating, so. Hell yeah. You know Russ Dank, by the way? I don't know Russ Dank. I'm going to go hunt him down. I'm going to lure some tarantulas on him. He also streams programming on Twitch? Oh my god. I mean, Rust is a programming language, and that's what I'm using. So... I wouldn't be surprised. I did see his other character names are all references to programming languages. It's pretty interesting. But I don't know if he has what it takes to uh, to have real skills, though. He's still kind of uh, a noob when it comes to his skills. I don't know what's taken him so long. <laughs> Every large company has a uh, has Go cultists at least. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Although that's, I don't know of anyone at Microsoft who uses Go. I mean, I'm sure people have in their hobby times, but no one's really like pushing it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. Do you do uh, some exploitation as well, or highly focused on developing amazing fuzzers? I do a decent amount of exploitation, um, but. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm good at it. Like, I, I definitely have a lot of room to improve at exploitation. I mean, that's not necessarily true. I've written exploits for pretty much any target at this point. But it's not something I would say I specialize in. It might take me, like, two or three times the time as someone else who's more specialized in it. Um, but typically, it's good enough to get the job done. I don't know. It's actually kind of hard to say. Okay. Boop. All right. Um, have you ever heard of Objective C++? No, but it sounds awful. <laughs> that makes me wince. <laughs> that sounds... That sounds so... so like... What? What is even the point? That just sounds like the, the worst of both worlds. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it has some cool features and, and things. But I'm still skeptical. <laughs> um, 
I just like jargon. I can't physically see things when stuck on syntactical obfuscations. Jump out, man. <laughs> you, you and your shit. Look at the Wikipedia page. It sounds bad. It sounds fucking miserable. C++. Objective C++. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. You can just tell from the Google results that it's you when when the top things are like some random fucking web page. Not a good sign. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> So you have two different ways of doing lambdas. That's nice. <laughs> That's a great fucking feature. <laughs> ah, you have to be careful with how you do destructors because there are two different calling conventions being in use. That's, that's exactly what I like in my language. <laughs> I like everything to have two options. <laughs> Oh my god. It sounds miserable. <laughs> I actually really don't like languages that have ats. Because every time I see an at, I think of like shit like this. That at public, at private. I really don't like that style. Let's see, do I like this code language? I don't know. I mean, this is just C. I don't know what the caret syntax is. That's fucking weird. Is this how you do a closure? Are you... This is disgusting! <clears throat> so that's a closure... Oh, it's a pointer? Oh, so they just decided to change it? Oh my god. <laughs> Dollar sign PHP. Oh, PHP is... PHP might... Might objectively be one of the worst languages out there. It just does everything so poorly. It, it has all of the, like, limitations of a low-level language like C... And none of the benefits of a high-level language, but all of the, like, abstractions and confusion of a high-level language. It's fucking weird, man. Uh, what do you think about using C++ instead of C in low-level programming projects? I think it's fine. I don't know why it's always so, like, controversial to use C++ in low-level stuff, because it's, it's basically the same. The caret syntax is a is a standard Apple extension for C. Really? I do not know anything about Clash Lang. I can't speak to that. Speaking of weird, uh, I came across the language Rockstar. What is that? An energy drink? Uh oh, Clash Lang. What is this gonna be? That's a pointer to a block specifically, but it's just a code pointer? Huh. I don't like it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. I like this. The clash language? What's this? <clears throat> Strongly typed. Okay. Level access. Alright, it looks it looks like a math language. 
Doesn't look terrible, to be honest. What is this for? Oh, it's a hardware description language. That's actually pretty nice looking for a hardware description language. Hmm. Rockstar is the language mainly used for CTF tests. Yeah, that sounds pretty pretty much about right. Some contrived stuff. Met the creator of Rockstar in January? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Haskell based? Yeah. Verilog and Haskell. Yeah, pretty much. Weren't we having a VHDL versus Verilog argument today? When chat was misbehaving. System Verilog? What is System Verilog? How is that different? Oh my god, that logo. Oh! Oh, what a logo. Very, very 1995. Standardizes IEEE. Okay. Hmm. I love that logo. <laughs> Newer than now is new. An Ethernet frame. What are these? Colon slash 30? <clears throat> is that the, uh, is that like connecting 30 lines? <clears throat> like 30, 30 wire connections effectively? Is that like the bus syntax? Oh, yeah. Follow Flutter Europe. And you'll get a notification later on today for a video of Dylan, uh, the creator of Rockstar, showing off his language. Oh, sweet. All right, I'll, I'll follow Flutter Europe. Holy shit, I've got 18 notifications on Twitter. God damn. Uh, okay. Well, my food's pretty much done. I mean, it is done. I don't know why I said pretty much done. It is, my food has been, uh, uh, eaten. It's actually pretty good. I wish I made it spicier, though. But it was, it was good. I'm gonna give that an A+. Plus. Oh, that's the random distribution? Oh, I see. 30 and 50 are the weights. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Let's uh, let's write some code. What were we doing? Oh, shit. Uh, we were in hard... Oh, we're still doing hard stuff. When do we get to the easy code? Stuff all is, like, super sensitive. If you screw it up, you break the whole thing. Literally everything's wrong. Where were we? <laughs> I like that emote. That's a cool emote. AP Heli? Who's who's that? Who is that? Who is that strimmer? Okay, if this is none, then we're gonna alloc table that we can unwrap, and then this one. Um, I actually kind of do need drop syntax on this. Otherwise, I'm going to have to manually free this stuff. Which I can, I can do that. I'm going to kind of, I'm kind of going to write this like C. I don't think it's worth making a, uh, something that can drop these. 
I actually don't have a great way of having drop on these fields. Um, unless I have my physical memory allocator give out things that have a drop handler. I could do that. Seems mostly a game called Path of Excal. I've I've heard of Poe. Don't they do like uh? Don't people do role play in Poe? So I used to watch a lot of um. I used to watch a lot of Grand Theft Auto role play. And I think a lot of them are on Poe, and I don't know if they're actually doing role play or not. That's what I meant by having a small vec of allocated pages so you can drop them. Yeah. I mean, I don't need a small vec. I can I can use options. Um, for this case, because it's only four entries. Uh, but I would need to have my physical allocator return back something that could be dropped. And... Path of Exile is a Diablo-style game. Okay, that sounds pretty awesome, then. My murder monster for the loots. Um... Yeah, I could have Alec Fizz return an allocation, which then would get dropped, and then it would call free. Um, it's really not too difficult to do. Now, that means that anywhere that I move it into a table... We'd have to refactor a decent amount of things because if we're, um, um, that returns a fizz adder. We would have to have like an allocate and allocator structure, alloc fizz on physical memory, read, write fizz. Okay. How do we alloc fizz in our stuff? We, anywhere that we use, um, Free memory. What is slash? Uh, 3A B. Uh, get, commit. Uh, I don't want to commit right now. Um, I kind of want to stash this, but I don't want to. Okay, cargo run. So, yeah, um, basically anywhere that I use free memory is somewhere that I'm potentially creating allocations. It looks like in the kernel I'm not really doing that, which is great. So this doesn't count. That's the definition. And we use it early on. C style deallocation is going to be annoying since uh, there's no go to. Ah. Ultima Online had great group combat, syncing your spells in voice, voice chat. Really? I've never played Ultima. I don't know. I love those old school games. Okay, so I think we're going to implement a... Uh, the problem is... I don't think we're going to do it for the bootloader. Uh, the bootloader, we have Alec and Free... Oh, actually, the bootloader... We do pmem. Yeah, the problem is this expects a physical address. Yeah, this is really tough. Um, I, I just... I don't know how often I'm going to want physical allocations that... I don't manually free. I kind of like the manual aspect of physical allocations, but am I just saying that because I'm being lazy? And I think the answer is yes. But since this is a trait, this needs to be able to get a something that returns. I would have to return a structure that implements like fizz info or something like that. But the nice thing is that at the Allocate time is when I could actually uh, validate that. <sighs> I don't know, man. This is tough. Hello there. I'm new. To, uh, I'm new in the stream. I'm 
interested in system programming, and Rust is a readable language. It's very cool. Yeah, I love Rust. It's fantastic. It's a great language. Um, so the so here's the problem. If I want to make alecviz return something that is lifetime scoped, uh, then I need to make alecviz. This would have to return a T, and this would be whatever the fuck we want. We would have a specific type here, and then this would implement the um, like a fizz alloc type or trait, and fizz alloc would be required by page table. Um. Do I want this? Alec Fizz, that takes a layout. I mean, at that point, I'm gonna make a, a fully templated thing where this doesn't take a layout, this takes a type, and the type implies the alignment. And I, basically, I'm writing up, I, I would write box, but for uh, physical memory. If it's like global allocator, it shouldn't be bonded by a lifetime, yeah. Um, in this case, we're, it's this doesn't need to be anything like global allocator, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's uh, let's see how much this is gonna suck, because we're about to never allocate physical memory again. Um, and since we're about to never allocate physical memory again, I I I don't know. Um, I could lifetime it, but it would have to be, it would have to be a different type. Page table needs the type, so it would have to be templated. But then I could implement free for it, where it would drop it. Um, but if I do that, I want to do it in the bootloader too, but I think I do want to do it. Like, I think that's the correct thing to do. I really do. Guys. I think I have to do it because it is correct. I... Uh, It's just correct. So this should build and run and work. <sighs> I have to do it because it's correct. God damn it. <sighs> it's just right. It's the right thing to do. Okay, we gotta go right into the boot letter then. Is it correct to have a physical memory box? Uh, in this case, it's not actually box, but it's going to be memory that will be scoped. We won't implement like DREF such that you can use the memory. That being said, this is translate. This we make sure it fits in. Uh, Should have a deref mute pointer. I'm probably not gonna have that. I'm probably gonna have like a get get fizz and get vert on it, um, just so it's like super 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 explicit. All I'm doing is I, I just want a drop handler right now. That's the only thing I want. But this also means I I can actually uh, this, this is good. This is just good. This is just objectively the right thing to do, uh, because this means that the translate I can get rid of translate. Because the type that I'll return from alloc fizz will be guaranteed to have a virtual mapping equivalent. If that makes sense. So, 
I will do an allocation. I will give a physical a thing. Um, so I just have to template some of this shit, which is going to get a little bit weird. It's going to get a little bit weird for, for a while. So uh, we're going to have to make another trait. So this is going to be a pub trait. We really call that fizzmem? Uh, we'll call it uh, fizz. Physical allocation is going to be the trait. Although that's kind of what I want to use as the structure name. Can I have a structure name and a trait name as the same? I think I can. But I kind of, I think fizzalic sounds pretty good. So I can, you cannot? Okay. Um, shit. I can't, really? Even if they're in different modules? Like I would have in the bootloader, I implement fizzalic and then I impl page table colon colon fizzalic on fizzalic. I think I can do that, right? In different modules we can. Okay, cool. We're in different modules. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a trait that allows uh, access to the physical and virtual uh, mappings for a trait that allows access to the physical and virtual mappings for an allocation. And this will have uh, will have fizz, and this gives a fizz adder, uh, and this will take a self, um, and then vert, uh, I'm going to make m both of these mute. Uh, this is going to be get the physical address of the allocation. And this will be uh, get the virtual address to um, a representation of the uh, virtual, virtual address to the uh, get the virtual address to the allocation. Um, it is required that an allocation in uh, that implements fizz alloc always has a valid virtual pointer to the physical memory. Uh, valid virtual pointers pointer to the contiguous virtual uh, physical memory. Okay. So I think I might have that return a pointer to the type. You'd have to import them with different names. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll actually uh, use the, the full um, path syntax for it. Sound is broken. Uh, I think it should be fine. Is Rust used in company? Uh, yeah, it is. I actually do... All of my work in Rust, actually. Okay. Um. If I give that T, oh, I can give it T. That's easy. So that's going to be the type of the allocation. Okay. This should still build. Yep. Okay. So a trait that allows access to to physical and virtual mappings of an allocation. Now, fizzmem no longer will have translate. And fuck me, this is going to break so much code. <laughs> it's going to be probably like 30 minutes before this builds again. Um, but it's, it's the right thing to do. Um... This is going to allocate physical memory. Um, allocate physical memory for a given type. This will take a T. Uh, and this will return, uh, we'll say a P, where P implements fizz alloc T. 
And do I want to do this on the functions? No, I think I just want to do it on this trait. So T is the type of... No, it does need to be on the um, on that. Free physical memory just won't exist. So allocate physical memory. We're going to say, I would like a something that implements physalloc on a T, and T is the type that we want. And then this is going to alloc phys, and then it's going to zero that out. Um, I'm not going to have that as a thing. That will just not exist. So we'll see. Okay. So phys physmem just gives us access to something that can create allocations of type Ts. And we don't need to be relaxed on sizes on these. And then physalloc will give us a virtual... Uh, virtual address to the allocation. Actually, uh, that should be able to give us a mute T. Uh, what do you think of the Zen hypervisor? I'm pretty impartial to it. I think it's acceptable. I don't think it has really anything too good or too bad about it. It's pretty much middle of the road. I get the physical address, that gets the phys adder. This will get the mutable reference to a T. And that's fine, because these share their lifetimes. Okay. So... Okay. So the way that this is going to work, then, is... I do want a way to allocate zeroed memory... Uh, I can I can allocate 4K on the stack. I think my stacks are large enough that I can do 4K on the stack. So when you initialize a structure in Rust, you need to actually create it on the stack first. Um, and that means that when I want to make a page, I'm going to have to actually pass a page. Um, yeah. Phys alloc, that's a physical allocation. Okay. Let's see what we can get going here. Let's, I don't know if this is going to break more or less. Uh, I think Vim's just confused. No translate on, what's this? Bootloader. That's making the trait. No alloc fizz. None of this shit, okay. Uh, do you have a lot of bindings to see? Things you're working on projects with the exi existing operating systems? Not really. Um, I'll have that if I'm like fuzzing things, but typically I have full control over the entire chain. I don't really use third-party libraries ever, so it's not much of an issue for me. Um, I'll do FFI every once in a while if I'm like fuzzing something typically and I want to interact with something on the system. Uh, but often, just pure Rust is is good enough for me. Um, yeah, zero zero seeing this project makes sense because it's ground up thing. Yeah, pretty much everything I do is 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 ground up. Obviously, in a existing operating system, uh, you're relying on the operating system. But typically, I can get away with just using the Rust APIs. Uh, pretty. There's pretty much nothing I can't do with the Rust standard library that I need a C library for, unless I'm fuzzing something, uh, which is kind of weird. But I don't know. I just I just write all my code myself, I guess. Okay. So we just want to get the shit to work, and uh, it looks like page table is now building, which is great. Um, the table on the page table, this is actually going to be a, a fizz. Oh, fuck me. Um, we're not going to be able to get that. We're going to have to use fizz adder here. Uh, we're not going to be able to. Well, we could technically rep or see that. 
Well, we're not gonna have the same trait on the bootloader and kernel side. So yeah, we'll just say this as a physical address. And what we'll do is we'll do a physical allocation. We'll set that up and then we'll leak that physical allocation. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, okay, so we care about uh, bootloader mm. So in this case, uh, there's no translate routine. Uh, that is correct. There is not. And there's no free fizz, and that is correct. There's an alloc fizz. And alloc fizz, let's check out our trait. So to implement fizzmem on physical memory, we have to, this will take a type, uh, and fizzmem t for physical memory. Okay. Oh, wait, that doesn't have the, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. This just has the uh, type here, alloc fizz, and then the P, I think we can get by with just, um, so currently that's returning a fizz adder. And then let's see, I don't think I need to specify this this trait because we will have it. So, okay, we're gonna make a um, pub struct uh, fizz alloc t. And this is a, um, uh, fizz. So this is the uh, physical address of the allocation. And then here we'll have a um, vert mute t. And this will be a pointer to the physical memory, uh, a pointer to virtual memory, which uh, maps the uh, fizz memory. Okay, so this is a uh, allocation of physical memory. Chat, what WM am I using? I'm using uh, DWM. I think I have this. Ha ha, I do. Okay, uh, Fizz Alec, uh, we got a physical address here and we have the virtual thing here. Okay, cool. So now we wanna return an option to a Fizz Alec of t, and we'll just comment this out for now and return none and see if this is happy. This probably isn't gonna be happy because it'd be like, what is that type? Uh, so we're gonna go into our bootloader source main.rs, and we're going to comment out uh, effectively everything. Um, ha, huh. mm. yeah, it's gonna be tough, man. Um, uh, actually, we can do we can do this, we can do a uh, CPU halt, and then can comment out basically all this shit. And then comment out all this shit. And then do uh, CPU halt. That might get mad because it doesn't know the types of some of these things. No, it looks like we're good here. Okay, so we have the MM. This is a physical allocation, an allocation of physical memory. In this case, now the problem is we already we already pretty much effectively have that uh, with our global allocator. So this is going to free and allocate memory. I think we might we can just do this. This is just the um, this is just the allocation, and this is the elk because we're in the bootloader. We can just say box T and use alloc box 
boxed box. It like we're just wrapping it. Uh, we can't impl on box, so this is the um, uh, the physical allocation. We can't actually. Um, Yeah, so this means we have alloc and free here. So here we're going to lock the free memory. We're going to allocate using size and alignment as requested, uh, unwrap or zero, um, and that will cause an allocation failure. And then here we'll free it. Uh, we'll make sure that, I guess in that case, expect cannot free memory, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the chance of these things failing if they like overflow, which will never happen. But if they do, we'll get a panic. Uh, and then here we just insert it back in. So we have alloc and free here, and then we have, that means box automatically works, and our allocations are out of physical memory for the system. So I'm gonna move some of this code around. So this is going to be an allocation of uh, physical memory, and here we're just gonna say uh, box t, um, and we're just gonna say uh, since, all allocations in the bootloader are directly out of physical memory. This is just a wrapper on box. OK. So then uh, wrapper on the range sets to allow implementing of the fizzmem trait. And then we implement the fizzmem trait on that. Great. So this we have a fizz alloc, of, uh, alloc fizz of t expected two type parameters. Really? Uh, can I say this? Where I concretize it. Yes, I can. Uh, Oh, can we? No, we can't. Can't impl on box. Thought they relaxed that. Uh, let me see if I can. Impl uh, page table fizz alloc for box t. Uh, impl t fizz alloc t for box t. Must be used as the type parameter for some local type. Yeah, I think, I, I don't think I can, but I can do it on this. Yes, we can. So, so that's what we're going to go with. And then here, this is saying... Uh, missing alloc fizz in implementation. Yeah, and that's failing because of this. Uh, and what's going on here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I expected that. So I'm surprised it won't be able to figure out that type. Your yeah, alloc fizz... Is not generic over P, and the trait is. Oh. Um, yeah, in this case, we have just a P that implements fizz alloc for T. I can't, can I make this concrete? It's required to be generic. But that's the return value then. What? There's gotta be a, a different way to express that then. You can write P colon colon new. to make it generic with the return value. So here, right, 
And this is uh, uh, this one. Expected, yeah. So then this has to be a P. Uh, and then, uh, yep, this. That works. Oh, yeah, in this case, it works. So then... Yeah, I, I think I'm expressing this wrong. To use an associated type. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's why associated types exist. I always forget about associated types. And this is going to be the, um, this is going to be the, uh, fizz wrapper, I guess. Right? And, the, oh, can I do that? Because I need a type here. I can't. Because I need the T to be here, and I can't make an associated type in this case. I need a, yeah, I need a. Is what I'm trying to do possible? So here, can I return a fizz alloc box new? Or is it going to be upset? Uh, box new, let's just put a five in there. Uh, and then sum. It'll be fine with this, right? No. So you're saying you need to access it from the trait? So I would have to... <laughs> Is this the only way to do this? There's not a better way of expressing this? Yeah, I think I think I am as well. I agree. Um, typically, when I get to situations like this, it means that I like do or don't need a trait. I want to allocate a T. I want to be able to allocate a T, and this is going to give me back something. Um. Oh, I think I just do this. I'm pretty sure I just do this. Maybe. Oh, no. No, I can't. Um, Fizzman Fizz Wrapper. Yeah, but then I can't have a type on that. Either you need to pass the Fizz Alec struct. Either you need to pass the Fizz Alec struct to Alec Fizz, or you need to make a constructor in the Fizz Alec trait. Um, yeah, so I can't, I can't use an associated type because I'd have to make uh, a trait here. I have an idea. Okay. Because I'm not going to be able to have a constructor, I don't think. You can make fizz alloc generic over P. Impl fizz alloc. Uh, you can make page table fizz alloc generic over P. That way, alloc fizz implements uh, returns a concrete type. Oh, you mean like here? So fizz alloc implement for physical memory. So like up here. Oh, this way alloc fizz returns a concrete type. Yeah, but alloc, uh, like. K 
Can you do an associated generic type? Is that a thing? Fizz mem. No, because that's... Uh, no. You can't. Not yet. Yeah, you'd need the type constructor in the implementer. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Doing a lot of these like super generic things starts to get really confusing in Rust. Um, okay, so basically, I need a way of supplying something that allows me to allocate things. Um, I can do... Where P is the type that holds it. Like, if I... I should be able to do a fizzmem where fizzmem has a type that is the type that is used to hold allocations which is fixed for all fizzmem, which is true. And then for this, right? Right? Or in this case, P is something that can hold. Uh, where P. So, like, but yeah, it needs to be generic at the function level, right? And I think that's what's fucking killing me here. What I really want is like this, right? I want something that's like this. <laughs> Where P holds something. Can I do this? Can I actually do this? And P needs to implement fizz alloc. <sighs> yeah, and I can't do that, can I? Fuck. Is that true? P needs to implement fizz alloc. Is there, is there no way to express this? I know I can do it with unsafe, that's, that's not a problem. I... Uh, fuck. <laughs> Beer bag torturing Rust Playground. I feel like there has to be a way to do this, and it's something that... I, normally when I get into situations like this, it means that I should be using like a structure when I should be using a trait or vice versa. Like it usually means like fundamentally I'm just thinking about the problem in an incorrect way. Fizzmem. That being said, uh, we do need, we do need to make arbitrary allocations here. I'm also concerned that I won't be able to initialize these structures. I might need an alloc fizz zeroed. It'd 
Because how would I initialize a one gig page? to zeros without creating it on the stack. I guess I'd do it on a knit. I'd do a maybe on a knit and I'd, I'd switch it. I think, I think that's the way that I'd have to do it. So I think that's possible. Okay. So Alec Fizz. We have Fizzmem. Can you require the return type for fizzmem to be concrete? This Can you uh can you require the return type for fizzmem? I don't think so. Uh no, I can't. 